Am I the a-hole for not giving my sister her wedding dress because she didn't invite my underage son? I, 40, male, have a sister, 30, female, who was getting married in a week. The groom proposed to her a year ago at a family dinner that left everyone speechless, but very happy for them as they are longtime companions. During this dinner, my sister asked my son, 17 male, to make her wedding dress. My son has always loved design and fashion. He took technical courses in these areas and sewing, and even his friends keep asking for his clothes because they are so beautiful. He agreed, but said that he needed time and that he would need her opinion constantly. At first, my sister was very annoying. My son drew about 50 dress designs in a month, and she only liked one, which he continued with. He sewed it with great quality fabric, which I paid for as I wanted to get involved in a certain way. For five months, he made several adjustments to suit her wishes, as she always complained about something. After a while, he arrived at the final model, and it was just amazing. My mother cried seeing my sister in the dress, and I could confess that I almost got emotional too. The problem was that last week my son came to talk to me about the wedding invitation that had not arrived for him but for other family members. I thought maybe he didn't need one but it still felt weird. I messaged my sister raising this issue and she replied that she didn't want any underage people at her wedding because there would be alcohol. I asked if she was going to make an exception for my son but she cut me off and said no. There are no children in our family. My son is the only minor so I didn't see any sense in this rule for family members. And to make matters worse, my son was very sad and cried because he spent months on this dress and couldn't go to the wedding. I was very upset and told my sister that she should look for another dress as soon as possible, and she would no longer wear the one my son made. She called and yelled at me, saying I was being unreasonable and that I couldn't do this. My mother called me saying I should deliver the dress and follow the rules, but I didn't and hung up on her. Because of this, the family is divided. Many agree with me and condemn my sister's actions saying she could only make an exception, but another part says I'm unreasonable and I'm spoiling her big day. I don't think I'm being wrong, but just rational and paying her back in kind. So am I the a-hole? Yeah, no, open and shut case. Your sister asked him to make the dress. He is allowed to be at the wedding. You are not the a-hole. Your sister is crazy. Not the a-hole. He should go and wear the dress. Better yet, show up at the wedding and burn it. So your sister can't have children at her wedding, but but use your son as child labor to make her wedding dress? She's the a-hole. Well, if he's not invited, he doesn't need to give a gift. She should pay for the dress, and if she doesn't, you're not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for barring my husband from the bedroom tonight? So, here's the situation. Me, nurse, working 50-ish hours a week in pediatric ICU. Cry at least once a week because that shit is hard. My salary pays our bills. All of them. Husband, 25, male. Has a degree, but isn't looking for a job. Works two days a week at the grocery store. Spends most of his time playing League of Legends. By the way, all events here are in accordance with COVID legislation. Today was supposed to be a good day. I had been begging my husband to swap his Saturday shift to literally anything else so that we could have days off together. We haven't had a weekend together since our wedding 18 months ago. Today was supposed to be our first Saturday off together. We were going to go to an animal sanctuary. He starts the day by going to breakfast with his best mate, leaving before I even wake up. I wake up around 9 and realize he is not home. Call. He says he's helping his mate set up some lights and that the weather is too rainy for the animal sanctuary anyway. He gets home at one-ish, lies around, plays some video games, promising we would cook dinner together tonight, leaves again at five to help the same mate with something else. I go grocery shopping. I don't drive because of medical issues, but I walk there and back in the rain. I get home, realize I've left my keys inside, call husband, knowing he's five minutes away. He says he will leave in a minute. I sit in the rain and the car cold, southern hemisphere. 45 minutes later, I call again. He hasn't left yet. He finally agrees to come and let me in the house, so he drives up, presses the clicker to let me in the garage, and leaves again. At 10, I, I called to see where he is. His friend answers, says he is driving out to do something an hour away. It's 10.30. I am going to bed. I have sent him a text that I am upset and don't want to speak to him tonight and would rather he left me alone. As far as I'm concerned, if he can't value me more than his best mate on the first day off he and I have shared in a year and a half, he can go sleep in his bed instead. By the way, his friend doesn't work, so they hang out all the time when I'm at work. He is going to be upset, and he is going to tell his mate, and his mate is going to tell him I'm being a b- <laughs> 
Am I the a-hole? Once again, what can I say other than you're not the a-hole? Clearly, your husband is a massive loser. If he can't spare one day of his five-day weekend to spend with his wife, who is currently being a frontline hero, he can go live with his friend, in my opinion. You don't need Reddit. You need marriage counseling. I feel like that can apply to a lot of these. Not the a-hole. You deserve a better husband. Am I the a-hole for not waking up my girlfriend for her exam after I overheard her calling me a little bit. My girlfriend has online summer courses and she had an exam for one of them this morning. I usually wake her up for pretty much everything because she sleeps through her phone alarm no matter how long it buzzes or how many she sets. She has joked that I'm her butler before and within the context of a relationship, it's okay, so I don't mind. Obviously, I want to love my partner and try to make her life easy. However, last night she was chatting with her friends and she thought I couldn't hear. She was bragging that I'm her little bit and I do everything for her when she tells me to, etc. It really hurt my feelings because they were making comments like, good, put him in his place, and she was agreeing. She specifically said, yeah, I'm not worried about tomorrow because the b will make sure I'm up and he'll probably have breakfast ready for me too. I went to bed pretty hurt by it, and come morning, I didn't bother to wake her up when her alarm started to go. She usually only gets up when someone physically shakes her, but I let her turn off her alarm and she slipped back into sleep and I turned around and went back to sleep too. When she woke up, she was yelling at me, saying I'm an a-hole and I've cost her her exam and I'm a piece of crap for what I did. Not the a-hole. Your girlfriend sounds incredibly abusive. You shouldn't have put up with that. Don't wait for any more red flags. Get out of this now. You deserve better. Not the a-hole, but you should just leave without notice. <laughs> Not the a-hole. She didn't respect you. Why would you do anything helpful for her? Also, get out of that relationship. Am I the a-hole for literally showing Showing my dad how he behaves every day when he gets home from work. My, female 16, father, male 46, is the breadwinner while mom is a stay-at-home mom. She handles everything around the house like cooking, mopping, washing, laundry, etc. I'm the oldest and I try to help, but really there's only so much I can do while my dad just gets home at the end of the day and literally complains about everything. Like how the carpet isn't clean or how the food is cold. As a result, I'd have to listen to a huge argument daily between him and mom. It's exhausting, but honestly, I think that my dad is in the wrong here. I tried talking to him to get him to see how his behavior is, but to no avail. So, what I did was pick a day off for him and pretend to act like him. I put together an outfit that looked like a suit and put black tape over my lips to look like a mustache. At 6pm, I went inside the house, shouted, I'm home! Then sat next to him in the living room and started kicking my shoes while complaining about the state of the house at the top of my lungs. He glanced at me confused, asking what I was doing. I ignored him, then started yelling about the carpet being dirty, shower not ready, the kids needing to be quiet, and so on. He kept staring while mom and my siblings laughed. My youngest brother kept pointing towards me, saying, This is daddy! I then proceeded to yell about dinner, then berated my mom for not preparing it before time. My dad stopped me, and in a serious tone, asked what I was doing. I turned to him and said, What? Can't a man effing rest after working long? long hours in the most macho voice I could muster. My dad got the hint because this was the common phrase he uses daily. He went quiet and avoided looking at me. I stopped the act and told him I was trying to show him what he's like every day when he comes home from work. He said nothing, just went outside and refused to speak to me. Later, he went on about how I mocked and invalidated him. That he does work hard and me doing this was disrespectful and invalidating. Mom said it was funny, but also thought I hurt my dad's feelings and I could have gotten the message across some other way instead. Am I the a-hole? Ooh, this is, this, is, this is a bit of a thinker, huh? I will say, not the a-hole. I don't think how you went about it is the most tactful way, though it is hilarious. Not the a-hole. You held up a mirror to his behavior, and he didn't like what he saw. That's on him. I hope he gets the message. This is absolutely hilarious and well-deserved, and sometimes people need to see how they're behaving reflected back at them to truly understand.
hand. Good job. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Also, you're a delightful human. 10 out of 10. Am I the a-hole for getting upset with my husband after he told me nothing will change while I am pregnant? Throwaway account. So me, 26, female, and my husband, 28, male, who I'll call Jake for this story, have been together for five years and married for three. We've recently started trying for a baby as we both felt like that was the next step in our life together. And three weeks ago, I got a positive test back. We were really, really happy and told our families. And now my mom and mother-in-law want to throw a big baby shower for us. It was just super good news all around. Well, two nights ago, me and Jake were getting ready for bed when he reminds me to go through the house and make sure all the lights are off. Now, he can be a little lazy at times, and it has become a nightly routine for me to make sure all the lights are off that he leaves on before we go to bed. I wasn't feeling very well and asked if he could just do it since he wasn't doing anything and was literally standing by the door. He then tells me, No, this is what is expected of you every night. I was a little hurt, but I didn't want to fight with him, so I just did it. When I came back, Jake goes on this very long and unprovoked rant saying things like, Just because you are pregnant does not mean anything will change. And, You are still expected to cook, clean, and do all the chores every day because how can you be expected to be a mother if you can't handle a little work? He wasn't yelling or anything. He was talking to me quietly like I was two inches tall. I was shocked because I had never heard him say anything like this. The rant went on for about 30 minutes before I interjected and asked, well, what do you plan on doing to help me with all of this? He then got extremely defensive, saying he works his butt off at his job to provide for me and what is going to be our future children. For context, I don't work at the moment. My job was not paying enough to justify me going, so I am a full-time college student. He ended up saying that it doesn't matter how I feel physically or mentally, it is a mother's job to push through, and if he helped and babied me, I wouldn't be a good mother. I got extremely upset and started yelling, and I said that, I wish I would have known this is how you felt before I got pregnant with your baby. There was a moment of silence before he started crying, and he left for the night to stay at his mother's house. He hasn't been back yet, and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have called me, berating me, and saying I broke Jake's heart with what I said, and I need to apologize immediately, and until I do, he isn't coming home. I don't know how to feel. So, am I the a-hole for yelling at my husband after he said he isn't helping me with anything during the pregnancy because it's a mother's job to deal with it? Once again, I must say, not the a-hole. Uh, marriage counseling? Good, maybe. Or divorce? That's always an option. Girl, get an abortion and a divorce ASAP. This man just told you who he really is, and things are about to get a whole lot worse. Run. Not the a-hole, but why TF did he start crying? Is he mentally stable? After this whole exchange, I'm gonna say probably not. Would I be the a-hole if I asked my pregnant wife to move out because she and her best friend decided to test my loyalty? Oh god, what does this even mean? My wife is pregnant with our daughter. Initially, we were really happy and excited about it, but then she started acting like a nut job. She gets angry and irritated for small things, insults me when she doesn't like the food I make, starts acting insecure and accuses me of losing attraction for her. For example, she wanted to eat chicken sandwiches for dinner last week. Well, I made chicken sandwiches. So she eats all the sandwiches, leaves me nothing, and told me that they tasted like crap. I wasn't pissed because she left me nothing, but if she didn't like them, why did she have to eat everything? When I asked her this, she told me that she was hungry. Okay, fine. She does this every time. Eats everything I make and calls it crap. I don't argue with her because I work for more than 80 hours a week and I really want to have some peace when I'm home. So, yesterday, a random girl starts at flirting with me after the gym and asked me if I wanted to meet up with her for some drinks. I rejected her and told her that I was married. And when I got home, my wife started to hug me and apologize. When I asked her what happened, she told me that her best friend suggested a test for my loyalty. So they asked a mutual friend to flirt with me and asked me out. And I passed. Yay! I'm really pissed. I'm done with her antics. Would I be the a-hole if I asked her to move out? Oh, geez. Okay, I don't really know about this one. Uh, yes, you would be the a-hole if you kick her out during the pregnancy. I think the best course of action is, you know, fully communicate with her, and if she can't handle it, then, you know, maybe the problem solves itself. She'll leave. Yikes. Might I suggest some couples therapy first? What she did was clearly an A move. Though, I don't think you'd be in the right to have her move out while pregnant. Not the a-hole. That is highly manipulative behavior. I hope this is just a side effect of pregnancy hormones, but but if she does things like this all the time, your marriage will be in trouble. 
a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife's friend she is too old and ugly after she repeatedly asked my 19-year-old son to take off his shirt? He was getting uncomfortable. My family had a small get-together at my house. One of my wife's friends was over. She is unmarried. I think she is 45 to 47? We aren't too close to her since she lives pretty far away. She was over our house and she started complimenting my son. My son is 19. It starts off innocent, but as time goes on, it gets more and more crossing the line. When we were out on my deck, she starts telling my son to take his shirt off. What's the point of going to the gym if no one will see it? My son is visibly uncomfortable and tries to shut her down. She repeatedly is asking and is getting more aggressive with it. I interject and I am like, hey, Kathy, I think you are a bit too old and ugly for my son. This got her upset really quickly and she excuses herself to the bathroom and starts crying. My wife goes to comfort her and then later she leaves. At the end of it, my wife is super angry with me for saying that. That I should have said, hey, Kathy, looks like you had too much to drink or something else. I told my wife that Kathy, by the way, this is not her real name, works a corporate job. She has had training on this and that she knows better. And our son was uncomfortable. He is 18 plus, but he doesn't know how to deal with an adult. Adult, let alone someone saying that in our house. I told my wife flat out that if I was to invite a guy friend and he was to ask to see our daughter in a bikini, my wife would have called the police. She says it's different. I tell her that I was way kinder to Kathy than I would have been had a guy said something like that to our daughter. And I told my wife that Kathy needs to apologize to my son before she can ever come into our house again. Overall, I think I was fair. If Kathy said it once and I said that, I think I would be the a-hole. But the fact she kept repeating it, that's why I said it. And I wanted her to get the message that yes, I am upset. That's why I included the ugly part. Alright boys, pack it up. We got another easy one. Not the a-hole. Kathy is a creep and I mean maybe you could have not called her ugly, but eh, whatever. Not the a-hole. Double standard no more. I wouldn't let her around my boy anymore. I would be livid if a husband's friend was telling my daughter the same type of things. Everyone sucks here except the son. Your friend for sexually harassing your son, you for bringing her age and appearance into the picture, and your wife for saying it's different because it's your son and not your daughter. Yeah, that is kind of a weird thing for the mom to say is, oh, it's different. Like, no, it isn't. It's still your child. Doesn't matter, male or female, they can be harassed. Not the a-hole. She should know better. You could have probably said you're acting ugly, RN, but eh, creeps feelings don't matter. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend her parents bought her house, not her? Backstory. I, female 28, have a friend, female 28, who purchased a house late last year. It's an awesome two-story house, and I've been over there plenty of times to help out with moving slash decorating and for hanging out. As mentioned in the title, her parents purchased the house for her and her partner. I truly have no issue with this as the housing market is terrible for buyers, so more power to them for being homeowners. I recently, unfortunately, inherited my parents' house, which is three bedroom, out in the sticks. The issue, we went appliance shopping because most of that stuff in the house was 10 to 15 years old. We were standing with an employee who I had asked to recommend some smaller items like toasters and kettles when the employee asked if I was moving out as general chit chat. I told him I was moving and he asked whether I bought or rented. I told him bought because it was just easier and less awkward than telling him I inherited the house. He told me that was cool and began talking about the toasters again when my friend cut in that I had inherited my house, not purchased it. The employee went quiet and I gave her a what was that face. I was taken aback. She continued on saying, yeah, I purchased my house. I asked, does it really matter? I'm here to buy some kitchen appliances, not tell this guy my personal issues. She grinned and said, it's just for the record, which made me more confused and annoyed. You can probably see where this is going. I replied, oh, okay, then if it's just for the record, your parents purchased your house for you. The employee quickly retreated and she walked outside of the shop. I caught up with her and she said I was a massive a-hole for pointing out she couldn't afford to own without her parents' help. I returned with a very similar, my parents also helped me with getting a house too, just in a really terrible way. My partner agrees with me, saying that she's the one that opened that door. But our other friends are split almost 50-50. If you don't want the smoke, get, get, get out of the kitchen. I don't know if that's the phrase. Uh, what a, not the a-hole, your friend is crazy, because like, why, why? Why try and do that to a random employee? Not the a-hole. She doesn't get to be catty and look down on you for how you each got your homes. It seems like an 
odd disconnect that she feels superior about it all. Not the a-hole. Your friend started the let's tell the truth game. Not your fault if you've played along. That poor retail employee. LOL. Honestly, they're the true victim in all of this. Am I the a-hole for calling the cops on my neighbors after they took a package off my porch? I, 38F, live alone in the house I grew up in. It was left to me by my mother after she passed away 10 years ago. About four years ago, a couple about my age moved in next door and we've pretty much been at odds since day one. There have been numerous times and issues that we've disagreed on. I have three cats that I sometimes let out into my backyard. My neighbors have a dog that would jump the five foot chain link fence separating our yards to chase my cats. I told my neighbors if I caught their dog doing it again, I would call the cops. They actually had the audacity to ask if I would be willing to split the cost of a taller privacy fence instead of, you know, training your dog not to jump the fence. Obviously, I refused as I wasn't the one causing the problem and the fence is technically on their property anyway. They ended up putting in a taller fence. Then they asked me to split the cost of taking down an ash tree that was on their property. It'd become infested with some bug that killed the tree and dead limbs were falling on their driveway. They had the city come out and the survey guy said the tree was actually about 10% on my property. I told them the tree was theirs and if they want it down, they'll have to pay for it because I don't have a problem with it. Needless to say, we're not friends. They've also thrown some loud, late night parties that include bonfires and loud music that I had to call the cops for as well. I'm currently out of town visiting family for a couple weeks. I have a friend who comes over to my house every day to check on my cats and check for mail and packages. I have medication for my cats that are delivered regularly. I got a notification the other day that some packages were delivered, so I texted my friend to let them know. But before my friend could get there, I got a notification from my ring doorbell, pulled up the live feed, and saw my neighbor on my patio. I asked him what he was doing, and he said a package of theirs got delivered to my house by mistake, so he was just grabbing it. I told him to leave, and that my friend would bring over his package when she comes over. He said he's not waiting for that and tried to leave. I told him that if he takes my package from my porch, I'm calling the cops. He shoved the package in front of the camera and said, that's my name and address, OP. I'm taking my package. Then he walked away. So I called the police and told them that he stole a package from me and I have video proof. They said they would investigate. When my friends got there a little later, the police were talking to my neighbors. The police must have left while she was checking on my cats because when she went to leave, it was just my neighbors outside. The husband yelled at her to tell me that I'm a huge a-hole and that I need to take the police off speed dial and let them deal with more important stuff instead of using them as my own personal problem solving service. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna be ugly. You're the a-hole. I get the fence thing. You could have pitched in on a tree just to chill things out. Calling the police about the parties without talking to them about it first is very a-hole. If it was his package and it had their name and address on it, calling the cops on them was also an a-hole move. You're officially an a-hole neighbor now. You're the a-hole, sure. You don't get along, but stop calling the cops for trivial matters. Do you actually think they were stealing a package? Or were you just trying to continue this grudge and be petty? You're the a-hole. They sound like absolutely awful neighbors, and under any circumstances I'd side with you in a second, but you called the cops and accused them of stealing their own package. They didn't steal from you. They fetched something that belonged to them off your porch. And while yes, I suppose they were trespassing, if you get medication delivered, then you know that sometimes packages can't wait. And perhaps this was a situation like that. And it doesn't sound like you cared to listen to anything they had to explain. If you want to be seen as the better person than your a-hole neighbors, then you have to actually be the better person. You're the a-hole. You sound like the miserable neighbor in this scenario, not them. Yep, yeah, there we go. Get on, neighbor. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom that my brother didn't invite my son over for a slumber party? I have a 10-year-old son, Julian, who is pretty close with my nephew and his cousin, Parker. You can't separate them when they ate together. I live two blocks away from my brother and his wife and Parker. I asked my brother on Friday if Parker wanted Julian to spend the weekend at his house, since it was a long weekend. My brother said that they had already made plans, and I asked what plans, and maybe Parker would like to have Julian to tag along, so he has a playmate. He said it was something for his wife. On Saturday, I found out that my brother lied. Parker actually had a slumber party, and I found out because I saw them all walking to Denny's yesterday morning. I called my brother out, and he said he didn't want my son to feel left out, so he lied. He said it didn't feel right to have an innocent 10-year-old around a bunch of 12-year-old boys because they'd eat him alive. I said that was bullshit, and he needs to text Julius right now and ask if he'd like to join this weekend slumber party because he'll be crushed if he finds out that he was left out. He said no. So I ended up calling our mom, who lives with my brother, and explained the situation. That caused a lot of drama between her and my brother and my sister-in-law, but my son got invited and declined because he is holding out to go to the aquarium. My brother was livid, and I said that if he had asked in the first place, then none of this would have happened and there would be no drama. You're the a-hole. Your son is not entitled to an invite, and no one likes someone trying to force someone to invite you. Info. Why do you think your 10-year-old son should be invited to a 12-year-old slumber party? Why do you think your son should spend three-day weekend at your brother's house? Why did you run to your mommy about an issue that did not involve her? You're the a-hole. Your son acts more mature than you do. You're the a-hole. There's a huge maturity difference between 10 and 12, so your brother's decision to exclude Julian was reasonable. You were wildly out of line to call your mother and start drama. You're the a-hole. Your nephew was allowed to have his own friend group. Stop micromanaging your brother. You're the a-hole. You wanted a weekend free from Julian and got mad that your brother didn't want to go along with it. You are not entitled to push your kid off on other people.
people, nor is your brother obligated to include your son in everything he does with his kid. Don't hold your breath for that aquarium invitation. Am I the a-hole for swearing at a co-worker for contacting me while on Do Not Disturb? I have a co-worker who comes to me for assistance. That's fine. However, when I'm on Do Not Disturb in Teams, he will send multiple emails or call me on my phone. It's never anything important, just minor stuff that can wait until my meetings are over. I've talked to him three or four times, telling him that he needs to either wait, or if he must email me, it has to stop at one, and I'll reply to him when I can. He's sent emails every few minutes asking for an answer, and if I decline his call, he'll call right back. He's been talked to by management about this. Last week, I sent him a terse email when he emailed me several times during an important meeting. Stop. I've told you I'll get back to you when I can. If I'm on Do Not Disturb, that doesn't mean unless your name is Joe. This is the last time I'll be polite. Finally, he emailed me again on Monday multiple times. So I replied with something along the lines of, do you know how to f***ing read? Have you listened to a goddamn thing I've said? Do Not Disturb means leave me the f*** alone. We've had polite conversations about this, but I'm gonna be more blunt. Off. You're actively hindering my work. Note, he's not trying to bait me. He just thinks he should be able to get an answer right away from a person. He and a few co-workers claim I was an a**hole and out of line for swearing at him and being demeaning. Am I the a-hole? Everybody sucks here. Your correct course of action should have been to CC his manager on one of the multiple emails you get from him, explaining that you've asked him to stop calling you on your phone and sending you multiple emails demanding an answer when you're in meetings. If you cuss out your co-workers, expect a call from HR or talking to yourself about professional conduct in the workplace. A-hole plus a-hole equals two a-holes, not one a-hole and the one guy in the right when it comes to a professional setting. Everybody sucks here. A colleague is annoying, so rather than take it to their supervisor, I started swearing at them and sent them an incredibly aggressive email. Both of you are in the wrong here. He's guilty of not being patient, but you're being abusive and hostile over a comparatively petty annoyance. Your response is wildly disproportionate to the offense, and if he's sending you multiple emails while you're on D&D, take it to his supervisor and let them deal with it. That's literally their job. Now you've just made yourself look like an aggressive a-hole and potentially created more problems for yourself. It might have been satisfying to blow up at him, but it wasn't helpful and could very easily bite you in the ass. Everybody sucks here. Your coworker sounds like a nightmare, honestly. But you're the a-hole because you responded in a way that turned an inconvenience into a hostile work environment. What are you doing checking your emails during a meeting anyway? That's on you. If you're annoyed by the notification sound, then turn off your notifications. You can prevent calls by taking your landline off the hook or setting up D&D on your mobile phone. Am I the a-hole for neutering a cat that was clearly owned? I run a TNR program for feral cats. Nonprofit. I catch all cats and get them the medical attention they need myself out of my own pocket. I love helping them. A lot of the cats are not able to be rehomed Homes, so I fix them and release them, get them their shots and hope for the best. I'm not a large scale operation. Recently, I was called to an area overrun with orange cats. They were everywhere and I mostly ended up handing it over to the professionals. I did, however, manage to grab three very sweet cats. Two were terrified, skinny, a little beaten up, but overall friendly, and the third one was a little gent. He was tubby, well-groomed, fish pattern collar, the works. My plan was to find his parents and drop him off with the warning to keep him in due to the large amounts of traps being set. Then the little bastard sprayed the inside of my car to the freaking max. So apparently he wasn't fixed. I couldn't really tell, long hair, and assumed he was, so left my covers off. Big mistake. I debated taking him home or taking him to get neutered with the rest. He was an indoor-outdoor cat, indicated by his collar tag, and with so many strays, I'm certain some were carrying his genetics. Ultimately, I took him in with me and got him neutered. No chip, so I called the number on his tag and informed them where their cat was and gave them time slots to pick him up or have him dropped off. The owners went ballistic. They were cursing at me and came to collect their cat not 20 minutes later, called me a kidnapper, blamed me for their child having nightmares, scared over their cat going missing. I tried to explain that he needed to be fixed if he was going to be outside, but they didn't want to know. They said I should have called immediately regardless. I spoke to my rescue friend who said I was in the wrong, even though we know we are technically in the right. We didn't have the legal ground to do it, and it wasn't my decision to make. I did apologize, but it blocked their numbers. The mom is flaming me on Facebook and DMing people I know. I have a duty to care for stray cats. Me knowing an unneutered male was roaming free and not doing anything about it was a concern for said stray cats. Things are still tense between my rescue buddy and I, and I don't completely disagree. I know I crossed the line, even if it was for the greater good, people are finding out and taking sides, so I'm not sure who to really believe was right here. So am I the a-hole? Holy. You are the a-hole. You did kidnap their cat and made a superbly arrogant decision to have him neutered without the owner's permission. You can judge them all they want for letting their cat outside. The first thing you have done was to call the cat's people and ask, hey, I found your cat. Did you know he was outside? That's basic due diligence right there. Translated, what decent people who are not assholes regularly do. How a vet decided to neuter the cat means you have taken off the collar and obscured the owner's information, or they would not have done it 
without their permission. You just made yourself hella actionable, legally. You don't know if they were planning to breed the cat and he just happened to get out. Everybody sucks here. The owners for letting an intact pet outside unsupervised to breed, and you for having a surgical medical procedure done to an animal that you knew had owners without the owner's consent. Regardless of the morality of allowing pets to contribute to the stray population, for which the owner is an a-hole, making medical decisions for someone else's pet makes you a massive a-hole. Everyone sucks. Info, you said, the third one was a little gent and he was tubby, well-groomed, fish pattern collar, the works. My plan was to find his parents and drop him off with a warning to keep him in due to the large amounts of traps being set. Then the little bastard sprayed the inside of my car to the freaking max. This really makes it sound like you changed your mind out of spite. Can you be absolutely sure you didn't? Everybody sucks here. You should have taken the cat back when you knew it had an owner, and ultimately it wasn't your decision to have it neutered. But that should have had their cat neutered and not let it outside in an area with feral strays. As someone who works in cat rescue, I do find their ranting about the fear of the possibility of the cat not coming back for one night a bit rich, given all the other awful things that can happen to indoor outdoor cats outside in North America. I do know in the UK this practice is less risky and more common. That fear about their cat not coming back for one night probably won't change their behavior and they will keep letting them out. Not the a-hole. They are irresponsible pet owners and are endangering the community by having an unneutered male cat about. It's unethical and should be illegal. Am I the a-hole for not hosting a party my wife planned earlier this week when I had planned long ago to only play video games this weekend? So Zelda Tears of the Kingdom came out today on the Switch and I had been looking forward to and planning for this game for years. Zelda has always had a place in my heart where I can escape the mundane of daily life, especially as an adult who works a full-time job, pays the bills, etc. No kids in the household, just me and my wife. Starting six or so months ago, I told my wife that when this game came out, I would essentially become a hermit and go into a hole for the entire weekend of its release. I would eat, sleep, and breathe Zelda. I continued to reiterate to her my plans every time the topic came up, and even more so as the game got closer to the release. I took time off of work as to put this on my work calendar as soon as she knew the launch date. Fast forward to earlier this week, and I reminded her again that I would essentially disappear this weekend to do what I want to do, which is to play the new game all weekend. She then plans a movie night with a bunch of neighbors for tonight on launch day. I made sure to clean up the house, do the dishes, and even did like four loads of laundry and reorganized the linen closet in preparation for this weekend. The time for the party rolled around and I took a break from playing, made all the popcorn and set everything up in our home theater for her and then went back to play my game. As guests showed up, I welcomed them in and showed them the way to the theater room and continued to play my game. When the movie was over, I greeted them again as they left and then I helped clean up the kitchen on another short break. Fast forward to now, my wife is mad at me for playing my game downstairs while she hosted the movie night alone. She said it was weird and stupid that I couldn't carve out a couple hours for this movie night. It's just a stupid video game, she is saying. I reminded her that I had my plans for this weekend months ago and that what I did doesn't contradict what I've been telling her I would do for months now. So am I the a-hole for playing my new game while she hosted the movie night? Not the a-hole. She arranged this when she had known for months what your plans were and you did a lot of preparation for her event, took breaks to speak to her guests, and even helped clean up after her event. She's being utterly unreasonable. She said this was weird and stupid that I couldn't carve out a couple hours for this movie night. I'm afraid that this was done deliberately. It's just a stupid video game she is saying. Yes, deliberately. Not the a-hole. I'll be the minority by saying regardless of what you were doing, you already planned it and told her said plans. You also did help with the party, so it's not like you didn't do anything. It's just the stupid video game she's saying. Tell her the alternative was just the stupid movie. She openly disrespected your wishes and your hobby. Then have the audacity to be mad at you? I would have a long talk with her. This does not sound good and maybe something else is happening. Not the a-hole. Your wife trying to pull some shit. You did your part and gave ample warning. Am I the a-hole for not letting my girlfriend wear a bikini in front of my family? So me, 26M, and my girlfriend, 22F, have been dating for around two years now. We've had our ups and downs, but overall we have a great relationship and I definitely see a future together. We really love and respect each other and connect well, but the thing is we come from different backgrounds. I come from a Muslim background. I'm not that religious though, and she is white. However, we have still made it work and our similarities are much more than our differences. Now my GF does like wearing a bit short clothing when out and about, which used to bother me at first, and made me uncomfortable, and we did have a few minor fights over it, but eventually I came to terms with it. However, recently an embarrassing situation happened. There was a pool party at my cousin's house, and my parents were there too. I had recently introduced my GF to my parents as well, so this was a good time to meet the family and relatives. I specifically told her to please pack something more on the modest side as my family would be there, and most women usually don't wear such revealing stuff in our culture. She didn't give much of a response and just nodded. But what did I see in the pool? Her wearing a two-piece bikini. It's kind of cheeky bottoms too. Even one piece would have been better, but nah. She went all in this time. She was probably the one dressed most immodestly. No one said anything, but afterwards I was so embarrassed I couldn't show my face to my parents at all. I did talk to her about it and scolded her a bit, and she told me she can wear whatever the hell she wants whenever she wants. I couldn't say anything afterwards. We've been quiet to each other for a while now, but slowly making up now. Am I the a-hole? You are the a-hole. She can indeed wear whatever she wants, and it's inappropriate for you to dictate otherwise or scold her about it. I'm not that religious, though. Then proceeds to act like someone that religious. This doesn't sound religious to me, though it is cultural. My family isn't religious at all. 
all and we don't wear cheeky bikinis around each other. Those bikinis are for romantic vacations. Info! Why did you start dating someone who you wanted to change? You are the a-hole. You scolded her. What the frick? She's a grown woman, not your child, and she's a thousand percent correct. She can wear whatever the hell she wants to. It's her body, not yours. Let her. You can't let her do anything, as again, she's a grown woman. Everybody sucks here. Not true. Contrary to what you posted, it does not sound like either of you respect the other. She should have been more conservative out of respect for you, and you should not be embarrassed by her. Cross-cultural relationships are hard. Wishing you luck. No, this guy just sucks. He is the asshole <laughs> for sure. Am I the a-hole for dropping out of my cousin's wedding party after a prank? Throw away. My F26 cousin, F29, got engaged a few months ago and asked me to be a bridesmaid. I was so excited to accept. Her sister, F32, is the maid of honor, and there are three other bridesmaids, and the date is set for April 2024. On April 1st of this year, she sent a PDF to the bridesmaid group chat that made me really angry. It was a list of wedding party responsibilities, rules, and regulations. It included a picture of the bridesmaid dresses that we'd be wearing. They were hideous, and she told us that we have to pay $800 for them, and they only went up to a size 8, so anyone bigger than that would need to lose weight before the wedding. That made me so angry because I wear a size 10, but also she's like a size 12, so even fatter than me. Other ridiculous things she added, none of us were allowed to be tanner than her for the wedding, so she told us that none of us could spend significant time in the sun for the next year. She wanted to have longer hair than all of her bridesmaids, so she said we'd all have to cut our hair to our shoulders or shorter. She wanted to do a choreographed dance with all of us and insisted that we go to three-hour dance classes with her every Sunday until the wedding a year away. She said that she wanted her bachelorette party to be in Paris and that we would all need to chip in 3k. There were more, but I was so angry I stopped reading and muted the group chat for a few hours. I was so livid and hurt that I decided to drop out of the wedding party, but I didn't say anything right away. The next day, I checked the group chat again, and everyone else had been chatting about how funny the bride's prank was. Apparently, at the bottom of the PDF, it said April Fool's, but I hadn't read that far because I was so mad. Everyone else thought it was hilarious, but it still really rubbed me the wrong way. I reached out to the bride to tell her how much this hurt my feelings, and she did apologize, but even though it's been almost two months, I'm still really angry. I decided this week that I no longer want to be a bridesmaid because of the mean-spirited prank and told my cousin. Now she's really hurt and angry, and the maid of honor and other bridesmaids and some of the family members are blowing up my phone saying that I'm overreacting to an innocent prank. But I don't believe the pranks are only funny if the recipients find them funny, and I definitely didn't. So am I the a-hole? You are the a-hole. Even if it wasn't the best prank in the world, it was still a harmless prank done on April Fool's Day. With the mention that this is a prank in the document itself, no one specifically targeted, it was a group prank. You didn't like the prank, and that happens to be fine by itself, but the whole two months after a grudge big enough, you are dropping out of the wedding out of spite? That is some serious overreaction here, especially for a group prank where you were not specifically targeted. Yeah, I'm going with you're the a-hole here. You didn't read it properly and leapt to righteous anger. A prank requires a trick is played on someone, or it's not a prank. You didn't read to the end and therefore missed the part making it clear it was a prank. I would suggest you're pissed at yourself for falling for something with April Fools written on it. Perhaps speak to someone about your anger issues. Something so ridiculous is something to laugh at and not get angry at. I was twitching when I read the word prank because usually on here, pranks are code for bullying, but this one, honestly that's pretty good. I was actually chuckling and it said April Fools right on the PDF? She didn't let it go on for a while? Come on. You're ridiculous. You are the a-hole. You are the a-hole. It was so outrageous that it was obviously a joke. Am I the a-hole for being embarrassed of my girlfriend's cosplay? My 25 male girlfriend, 24, had a double mastectomy five years ago. She had breast cancer and thankfully made a full recovery. Unlike a lot of women, she didn't have any reconstructive surgery. This was before I met her. I'm a big anime nerd and last week weekend, I invited her to a small anime con with me. She's seen a few episodes of my favorite shows, but she's not into anime. She does like cosplay, though, and she works seasonally as an SFX artist at a haunted house near us. So when I asked her to go to the con with me, she asked if she could cosplay, and I said sure. She got very excited and said I was going to love her costume. So I'll admit, I thought she was going to do something sexy for me. Well, not exactly. The day of the convention comes and she shows up at my house cosplaying Dobby from MHA specifically a look he has later in the manga. It's a long white coat over white pants, no shirt. Her entire chest was exposed and she'd obviously spent hours applying burn makeup. She has short hair that she dyes constantly. This time she bleached it white and dyed a few red streaks. I wasn't expecting her to show up without a shirt. Her burn scar makeup only covered half her chest, so you could clearly see her mastectomy scar. It wasn't a very attractive costume, especially since she'd gone all out with the scars and made them look red and kind of realistic. We went to the con, and while a lot of people came up to take photos with her, I noticed several others looking at her chest. That evening, she said I'd been quiet all day, and I honestly told her I was a little embarrassed that she was flaunting her mastectomy scar like that. She got mad and said she was making the best of her situation and said I was being insensitive, and she's been distant ever since. I'm starting to feel guilty. Am I the a-hole? I'm gonna say
say, yes, you are the a-hole, but because you do feel a little bit guilty about how you acted, you're not a complete a-hole. Still weird, though, that you're getting embarrassed because your girlfriend is trying to have fun. Oh, how dare your girlfriend not have a pretty little cosplay outfit. Obviously, she has not gotten the message that her only worth is if she caters to the male gaze. Yeah, you're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. Jesus, she went through cancer and a double mastectomy and you're crying about being embarrassed? Please break up with her so she can find someone that's not an a-hole. This is why women have such a hard time being cosplayers. Guys are always assuming they're doing it to be sexy for them. Your girlfriend did something scary and brave for herself. Your reaction is disgusting. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole. You wanted a sexy cosplay girl and you didn't get it. So now you're all upset. You're embarrassed of her scars that saved her life. She deserves better. Would I be the a-hole for spraying some kid with my garden hose daily after he walks all over our lawn? I, 37 male, live with my wife, 37 female, and son and daughter, 9 and 11, respect. Recently, there has been this kid who comes by our house after playing soccer and either rides his bike or walks over the lawn with his cleats on his way home. It started out as me giving him stern looks whenever I saw him, then it slowly progressed to me asking him to just go around. The last time I asked him to stop, he made a point to stomp extra hard and twist his feet into the grass to piss me off. Since then, I've just been hosing him. The first time I sprayed him with the hose, he ran off, but then for some reason he just started standing there while I hose him, like he enjoys it. It's now progressed to me sitting on my lawn chair, pointing my hose at him, and him just staring at me while he does so. Sometimes we even make small talk. I'm not gonna lie. It started off as a really bitter relationship, but I've actually gotten to know the kid quite well. We talk for maybe 15 to 20 minutes every day, and he doesn't seem to mind being hosed down after sweating hard playing soccer. He comes by daily and we just shoot the sh while I hose him and he stands there for a bit. Wife told me I need to stop. Even after I explained it to her, she said I'm making us look like childish idiots. I guess I could stop, but honestly, it's really funny waiting for him to come by and I see no harm in it. Would I be the a-hole? Ooh, I'm not entirely sure. It's like kind of a rogue element that the kid just stands there and lets you hose him down, so I don't really know. Okay, this is hilarious. I was going to say you were the a-hole and get a fence, but I see nothing wrong with what's going on now. Not a-hole. I mean, the kid sounds like kind of an a-hole, but I guess not an a-hole. <laughs> Kid is obviously deprived of attention and is weirdly getting something bizarrely meaningful from this incredibly strange relationship. <laughs> Has he stopped trying to damage your lawn? Get another chair. Ask the kid to sit with you. That kid rather gets hosed down by a stranger than go home. Something's up. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. He's stopped stomping on your lawn, but is still seeking you out as someone who will genuinely listen to him whilst you cool him off after training. The kid is showing his gratitude and you're feeding that gratitude. It's a sweet relationship relationship, and your wife should stop worrying about what everyone else is thinking and see it for what it is. Alright, so in conclusion, it's just weird all around. Am I the a-hole for banning my sister-in-law from my house over tomato sauce? I, 28 female, have an older brother, 32 male. He is married to sister-in-law, 33 female. I get along with her well, except for this one point. If you don't keep an eye on her, she will get into the kitchen and add seasonings to whatever is cooking. She thinks she is fixing stuff, but not all foods need turmeric in it. This Saturday, I received 40 pounds of tomatoes. It took me the whole weekend to turn it into a sauce that I was planning to can. I can it plain, then add whatever seasonings and herbs it needs, depending on the recipe. They came to take a bag of spare clothes for one of their kids, and in the five minutes it took me to get it, she managed to get into the kitchen, add salt, pepper, turmeric, olive oil, garlic powder, and Italian herbs to all five of the pots that were simmering on the stove. And when I told asked her what she was doing, she had the audacity to say, this sauce needed some taste. I added it for you. Like I've never told her to not touch what I was cooking before. I was so angry that I knew I couldn't be calm talking with her. So I simply walked to my brother, told him to take the clothes and his wife, and that she is no longer welcome in my house. She had followed me, was shocked, started apologizing, but I just ignored her. I added that he should come by tomorrow to take the sauce his wife ruined, because otherwise it would be thrown away, and that I expected 40 pounds of replacement tomatoes. They they left. He came back with the tomatoes, an apology letter from her, and apology carrot cake, my fave. But I told him that I stand by my decision. Now my parents got involved. Since I am the one that usually hosts, and since she is not allowed in my house, I told them to make alternate plans for Memorial Day. My husband says that I am in the right, but my parents say that my reaction is way overblown. So am I the a-hole? 
edit. Since there seems to be some confusion, I am not planning to host for Memorial Day and not invite her. I said I am not hosting. My parents or my brother should host, and I will attend as a guest. I might be angry, but I don't want her excluded. Mm, I'm gonna say you're sort of an a-hole just for the reaction, but overall not. Just because you're not trying to exclude her, you just don't want her coming over and ruining your stuff like she just did. If you don't keep an eye on her, she will get into the kitchen and add seasonings to whatever is cooking. She managed to get into the kitchen, add salt, pepper, turmeric, olive oil, garlic powder, and Italian herbs to all five of the pots that were simmering on the stove. Like WTF? This is so boundary disrespecting, disrespectful, and insulting to what you're cooking. And it wasn't even for her! Not the a-hole for being furious. I do think she learned her lesson though. Not the a-hole. It is never okay to add something to someone's food without their consent or knowledge. Who the heck walks into someone else's house and seasons five different pots? Not the a-hole. Yeah, the fact that it was five separate pots and she did it to all five is kind of insane. Not the a-hole. I'm so glad you discovered that she ruined a day's work before you canned that mess. Who does that? I don't know that I'd invite her back into my house again either. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my boyfriend's food after he ruined my food photos? I have an Instagram account dedicated to photos and short videos of food from local restaurants in my city. I don't turn meals into a whole photo shoot production when I go out, but I like to snap a few photos of everything as it comes out. I've got about a thousand followers. It's just a hobby for me, but I have made friends with some other bloggers and we like to go out and get pics together and try new restaurants. I prefer doing this with my foodie girls because my boyfriend hates it and will go out of his way to take a big bite of food or mess up his plate with his fork before I can snap any pics. And he rolls his eyes when I take pics of my own food, so I pretty much stopped bothering when we went out together. Money has been tight lately because of some medical bills, so I haven't been able to go out to eat with my foodie girls, and the infrequent date with my boyfriend is the only chance I get to eat out. I had to sit him down and have a, look, just let me enjoy things, conversation with him and told him I was going to take pics of my own food when we went out, and could he please just not be immature about it? And since we alternate who pays for dates, I told him I would appreciate it if he could spare the 30 seconds for me to snap a pic of the appetizer plus his meal on nights that I was paying, and I got sort of a half-hearted, do-whatever-you-want confirmation. Sunday was my turn to pay, and he let me take a pic of the appetizer with minimal fussing. But then, when the entrees came out, I went to snap a pic of his, and he messed it up with his fork. Then he reached over and stirred up my pasta to also ruin the photo of my own meal. I was so pissed off by that that I refused to pay his half at the end of the meal, which pissed him off because he said he wouldn't have ordered a cocktail if he knew that I was gonna skip my turn. He says I owe him one because I don't get to just decide not to pay according to our agreement after we've already ordered. Oh my god, what a baby! Like, first of all, no, you don't get to play the we had an agreement game after you purposefully ruin the thing she wanted to do. Uh, you're not an a-hole, but your boyfriend is a piece of work. Not the a-hole. Why are you even dating someone who clearly has no respect for you or your hobbies? Dump this a-hole. Not the a-hole. I don't get people who go out of their way to actively ruin other people's fun. He totally could have just started eating his food, but to mess with yours is just not acceptable. I'm in a relationship where my boyfriend goes out of his way to make my sorry butt happy, drives to a special store to get just me ice cream, lactose intolerant, starts cooking at 8 p.m. on a Sunday because I'm hungry, etc. I, of course, do stuff for him too, but he is just the effing best. To me, a relationship has to beat being alone. Someone ruining my fun and peace doesn't cut it. You are not the a-hole. Your BF is an a-hole. Not only for deliberately messing up your meals, but also for ordering a cocktail just because he thought he wouldn't be the one paying for it. I would be reconsidering my relationship with someone so selfish and childish. Not the a-hole. It blows my mind that he is so utterly unwilling to do this one small thing that takes less than a minute, yet makes you very happy. He doesn't have to want to do it himself, but it is such a minor and easy thing to do. I can't imagine wanting to ruin my partner's enjoyment to make some kind of vague and useless point. At least we're all in agreement here that, um, your boyfriend sucks. Am I the a-hole for standing up during a Beyonce concert? So, I'm a huge Beyonce fan and have been my whole life, especially being a Houston, Texas native. This was my first time being able to afford a ticket to her show, and I'm currently living back and forth between Sweden and the States. I've never been to a concert in Sweden and was very shocked by how unlikely the crowd was. No dancing, 
playing or singing, really, from most people in my section. Closest non-GA to the stage. But I was out of my seat, singing and having a blast as soon as the show started, and a woman and her partner behind me asked me if I could sit down so they could be able to see. I assumed since she was starting the show with ballads, I was doing a bit much and apologized and sat. But once the energy picked back up, I was back up on my feet dancing. There were like two other people on my row doing the same. I honestly had the time of my life and even cried a bit. Ridiculous, I know. When the show was over and I turned to leave, the lady said, You're not the only one who paid for this, you know. Is that how you act in your village? And I was too stunned to say anything back. I could understand if this were an orchestra concert or something, but her latest album is focused on house music and the ballroom scene, which is very lively. This happened weeks back, but I can't even enjoy my memories of the experience because I keep getting this pit in my stomach, feeling like I ruined someone else's experience. Am I the a-hole? Ooh, I am not entirely sure, because this could be like a slight cultural divide, especially if this was a show in Sweden. I'd say not really the a-hole, because you're supposed to be having fun at a concert, uh, but it it's very dependent on culture, I suppose. You are the a-hole. You sang and danced to the concert as you do when in the States. That's fine when you're in the States, but you weren't in the States. You were in another country where it was clear to you from the start that people were sitting in their seats to watch. As soon as you keyed in on that everyone remained seated to watch, and you were the only one up and about, and someone asked you to sit early on, you should have sat your dance happy self down and stayed seated to watch until such time as you saw everyone stand. If they never do, you stay seated. There are countries who watch concerts and sporting events in near complete silence. When in Rome... I see what you're saying here, but you could, like, be a little nicer, you know? Because, I, I don't know, especially a Beyonce concert, you don't want to, you know, get up and move a little. You're the a-hole. By your own admission, it was obvious that other people were not behaving like you wanted to. The fact that it might be acceptable someplace else 8,000 miles away is irrelevant. You are the a-hole. I'm not from the U.S., but where I'm from, it's seen as extremely rude and selfish to stand up during a concert in front of people who are seated behind you. In my country, if you stand up in front of rows of seated people, a steward will often come and ask you to sit back down. If you refuse, security could remove you. Many younger people who attend concerts accompanied by their parents slash guardians, shorter people, and disabled people who have their entire concert experience destroyed if you were to stand up in front of them. There are situations where people with limited mobility who cannot stand for long periods are seated at concerts too. If you make the choice to stand up, you are blocking the views of multiple people who also paid money to be there. You're free to sing and move around and have a good time, but actually getting to your feet and blocking the performance is extremely inconsiderate. Okay, interesting. So this is more of a cultural divide than I thought. I, I was very unaware. Read the room. You're not in Houston. You're in Sweden. I don't know their cultural norms, so you'll have to tell us. If it's the cultural norm to sit, then you should sit. However, if many people were also standing and dancing, then stand and dance. Am I the a-hole for going to a concert over my mother's wedding? My mom is getting remarried. My birth father passed away a while ago. A few weeks ago, I won Taylor Swift tickets on the radio for the same day as her wedding. I made the decision to go to the concert over the wedding, and I told her this, and she is very upset. She has not spoken to me since. I love my mother and feel bad missing her wedding, but I thought she would understand due to the circumstances. I do not like my soon-to-be stepfather, and I feel like seeing Taylor Swift is a once-in-a-lifetime experience that I do not want to miss. Also, I have made it very clear to my mom over the past few months that I am not okay with the marriage, but still plan to be at the wedding. But then I won the tickets, and things changed. So, am I the a-hole for choosing the concert over the wedding? I'm gonna say you're kind of the a-hole because, like, Taylor Swift? Really? Like, you can get tickets sometime down the line, but your mom's wedding is, like, only one time that you can experience that. Unless, you know, things don't work out. You're the a-hole. You chose Taylor Swift over your mom? Weird. You're the a-hole. Even Taylor Swift wouldn't want you to miss your mother's wedding wedding to go to her concert. Sure, but I doubt OP is going to the concert because Taylor wants her there, LMAO. You're the a-hole and very selfish. TS is not once in a lifetime, but your mother finding happiness again, regardless of your like for the groom, is very rare. Not the a-hole if you aren't okay with the marriage and have made that clear to your mom. But you are the a-hole if you are skipping the wedding and using that as an excuse. Taylor Swift is not once in a lifetime. Your mom's wedding just might be, though. If you committed to coming, you shouldn't have even been in that giveaway. You're the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for evicting my roommates after they threw a party without my consent? I, 29 female, have three kids.
months, and last year my husband slash children's father passed away during open heart surgery complications. I was a stay-at-home mom and always had been, so I had no idea where to start. I'd never had a job, and admittedly, I didn't even have my license. It was tough from every single angle, but in short, I needed help, so I decided to let my best friend, Jesse, 30, male, and his wife, Kim, 29, female, move into a spare room to help pay rent. I immediately went for my license, passed first try, and quickly got a job. During this time, my parents were helping with babysitting my kids, and thankfully, within six months, I had become comfortable with the adulting lifestyle. But we were all still grieving heavily, as I never really gave myself time to process the loss of my husband, nor did my babies really grasp that daddy wasn't coming home, which made things much more difficult. So anyways, my roommates have been fine for the most part, but have recently started attempting to get me to party more, let loose, and have fun. Things I'm still not even remotely comfortable with, and I've expressed this multiple times. That and I have some unresolved trauma involving men from my childhood and don't really feel comfortable being around any guy while drinking. I'm working through that in therapy, started recently, but there's a long road ahead. Well, I picked my girls up from soccer practice yesterday and brought them out for ice cream. We got home around 6 p.m. and there were four or five unknown cars in my driveway and I could hear the music blared. I walked inside to find easily 10 plus people, mostly men, drinking, dancing, and partying with my roommates. I immediately turned off the music and told everyone to leave. My roommates called me a poor sport and said I need to let go. Between them having strange drunk men in me and my husband's home around my girls and not respecting my boundaries on no partying in general, I decided to evict them this morning, where I had a lease already drawn up stating I could evict them at any time with a week notice. I only gave them seven days to be out, and I was within my rights to do so. They're saying I'm an a-hole for blindsiding them after all they've done for me, but then having drunk guys in my house around my daughters without even asking, knowing what I went through was not a situation I will ever forgive. Am I the a-hole? No, absolutely not the a-hole. These people purposefully disrespected your boundary that you had told them previously and have a perfectly valid reason as to why you wouldn't want that to happen. Those people are awful. You're totally fine. You're not the a-hole. You expressed your feelings about parties more than once, when one should be enough. They threw a party at a house with children. You are 100% not the a-hole. I'm very sorry for loss and really proud of the way you've managed your life after such a tragedy. Not the a-hole. Ignoring everything else, they threw a party with alcohol in your house where your children currently were without your consent. Disgustingly entitled. No, they deserved it. Plus, when you confront them, they still show no remorse. What a bunch of dumb ass. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Drunk strangers are not safe around children. End of story. Am I the a-hole for telling my daughter that I'm disappointed in her? Hello all. It's been rough with my only daughter as of late. My husband and I, both of us are 55, have one daughter, 30, female. We've been married coming up on 32 years soon. My daughter was in a long relationship and married for approximately nine years, and for a long time I thought it was a good relationship. When out of nowhere, around three years ago, she decided to divorce her ex-husband. We were told it was a mutual decision, but that ultimately he wasn't the greatest partner and there were many things that she was not satisfied with in their relationship. So she wanted to leave. We supported her decision. About a year after the divorce, she introduced us to her new boyfriend. And while my husband and I thought it may be a bit early to date, we decided to continue to support her and meet him. He was and is a very charming man who treats our daughter wonderfully. And you can tell she is extremely happy. Now to the argument. Recently, we were talking with one of our daughter's friends who was visiting our town and were discussing our daughter's job and her wonderful boyfriend. Her friend in the conversation made a comment about how they were lucky to be in the same orientation together when they started work. As soon as she saw our confused faces, she gave us the full story, as she realized we hadn't been given it. Our daughter had told us while her and her boyfriend worked for the same employer, they didn't meet until after the divorce. We pressed the friend for more information and she begrudgingly told us that our daughter and her boyfriend had met during orientation at work while our daughter was going through her marital issues. This led to them becoming closer and her filing for divorce from her ex-husband about a year later. So later that day, I asked to have a conversation with my daughter and brought up what her friend had told us. She turned white as snow and basically confirmed her friend's story, but reiterated that there was no physical cheating. I told her that physical cheating was not the only way you could hurt someone and that it appeared that she had emotionally cheated on her ex-husband 
happen. He may not have been the greatest person, but it didn't excuse her actions. I told her that I was disappointed in her, and while I supported her leaving a bad marriage, that I couldn't look at her and her boyfriend the same in this new light in regards to cheating. I still love her and will treat her boyfriend with respect, but it is definitely something I have a hard time looking past. She got angry with me for not continuing to support her in her journey beyond divorce. Am I the a-hole? Gonna go ahead and say you're not the a-hole because as their parent, you have the right to feel disappointed in them, especially if your daughter technically cheated on somebody even if they weren't the best person. Like, it's still not a good precedent to allow cheating as a morally okay thing to do. You're the a-hole. It's not your business. She isn't 20 years old. I'm 42 and I don't really give a damn about my mother's opinion. Keep heading in that direction, won't you? You know, just based on this response, I have a sneaky feeling that you like to cheat on people and you don't like being told you're bad. You're the a-hole. She divorced him for a reason. It's not like she strung her ex along. She left him. And then a whole year later, she got with her current boyfriend. You're the a-hole. It is extraordinarily inappropriate and rude for you to think you have the right to decide whether or not your daughter's divorce was justified. The reactions here are a little interesting because I feel like, I don't know, as the mom, you have the right to at least say it. It's not like she's saying you have to break up with your new husband. People are being weird right now. Am I the a-hole for eating someone else's birthday cake? So this happened the other week when myself and my friends, males and females ranging from 27 to 32, were celebrating my friend's birthday, Tim, at a restaurant. Next to us was another table. Similar ages, no kids. Judging from balloons and presents, who was also celebrating a birthday. The dinner went by normally, and when it came for dessert, some waiters came out with cake for Tim and sang happy birthday. We divided up the cake and began eating. Turns out, the cake wasn't for Tim and was meant for the table next to ours. The waiter came over and asked us to stop eating the cake as it wasn't for us. We laughed as we thought it was a joke and we were halfway through at this point. We noticed the other table staring daggers at us. We stopped eating and didn't outright apologize but said to the other table we didn't know. Who checks to make sure someone organized this cake specifically for Tim? You're at a birthday and you see cake so you eat it. After dinner the other table yelled at us in the car park calling us a-holes for eating their cake and for laughing when asked to give it back. I assume if anyone are a-holes it's the restaurant. But what does Reddit think? Am I the a-hole? Edit to add things addressed in comments. The cake was a regular chocolate cake so maybe why the other table didn't notice it is theirs straight away. The waiter took about five minutes after serving us the cake to come back. We did give the cake back after we realized it wasn't a joke and wasn't organized by someone at our table. If anything I'd probably say the other table is kind of a-holes for blaming you guys specifically for seemingly a restaurant mix-up. Like the restaurant messed up and let you take the fall. Not the a-hole. The restaurant effed up by delivering the cake to your group. And once people were eating it, it was too late to just stop and give it back. Not a-hole. You didn't know. The restaurant made an honest mistake and other party was upset because you sort of stole from them. They shouldn't have yelled at you, but it's understandable. Not the a-hole. This is the restaurant's problem, not yours. The other group's anger was misplaced. You obviously didn't know the cake wasn't yours, so what exactly is it they expected you to do? Am I the a-hole for leaving my number on the bill? So I, 26, male, went out for dinner last night with a few friends. We were at this pretty nice restaurant and our waitress, female, early 20s, caught my eye as soon as we sat down. I thought she was really cute and had a great sense of style. Her outfit was really unique and just seemed to suit her perfectly. Anyway, throughout the night, she was really friendly and attentive, and I couldn't help but keep noticing her. After a while, I decided to go for it and compliment her on her outfit. I said something like, hey, I just wanted to say that you look really cute tonight and your outfit is amazing. It suits you so well. She seemed to take the compliment well, smiling and thanking me. Later on, as we were finishing up our meal, I decided to write my number on the receipt and leave it for her, just in case she was interested in talking more or even going on a date. When I handed her the receipt, I told her, I hope this isn't too forward, but I've really enjoyed talking to you tonight and thought you might like to get in touch if you're interested. She took the receipt and thanked me, but I noticed her smile seemed a bit forced this time. I I figured maybe she wasn't interested and that was fine. I didn't want to push her or make her feel uncomfortable. After we left the restaurant, my friends told me that what I did was inappropriate and that I shouldn't have put her on the spot like that at her workplace. They said it's not okay to hit on service workers who are just trying to do their job. I genuinely didn't mean any harm and I thought I was being polite and respectful.
respectful about it. God, this one's tough also. Uh, I'm gonna say unintentionally the a-hole. I understand we're all out there looking for love, but at a restaurant, they're more than likely just doing their job to, like, get a better tip, you know? Throughout the night, she was really friendly and attentive. It is her job to be friendly and attentive. She seemed to take the compliment well, smiling and thanking me. You are a customer. What's she supposed to do? Throw a drink in your face? You're the a-hole, whether you meant to be or not. Please do not go back to apologize or otherwise contact her. You've already put her in a really uncomfortable spot. Oh my god, people still do that? After all the talk and the awareness campaigns? The waitress is at her place of work. Her literal income depends on her being nice to customers. Even if they are drooling, hounding, self-unaware specimens. Repeat after me. She doesn't like you. She is trying to make a living. You're the a-hole. Sheesh. You're the a-hole. Don't hit on the workers at restaurants. They are just trying to get through their day. Soft, you're the a-hole. Don't hit on or ask out service workers. They're a captive audience, and customers can make their lives difficult if the employee turns them down. You put her in a difficult position. Also, don't discuss religion or politics with service workers. Am I the a-hole for going back on an offer to adopt my cousin? I was visiting family in South America 13 years ago. I met one of my cousin's kids for the first time. The young woman had just had her third kid and had been left by her boyfriend. He was the father of only the latest kid. She looked so worn down and sad. When I got back home, I spoke with my wife and she agreed that if his family was okay with it, we would adopt her youngest kid. It was an offer, not a demand, and we made sure to explain that we would help her out monetarily with the other two as well. I was adopted in a similar manner, so I've always felt a desire to pay it forward. My adoptive parents are also related to my biological parents, and they helped them with money too. Well, it became a huge deal. I was trying to steal a kid just because I had money and blah blah blah. So I said no problem and walked away from the offer. Well, that baby is 13 now, and his mother has had two more kids. She is being supported by her mother, but not doing great. Her two eldest kids are working and are going to school, but the 13-year-old is a bit of a jerk, I guess? Skipping school and hanging out with the wrong people. My family contacted me to see if I were still willing to help him out by bringing him up here. I passed. This is a big difference between a baby and a 13-year-old troublemaker. Plus, I'm 50 now, and I don't really have the energy to deal with that stuff. So I declined. My family down there are crapping on me for going back on my offer. So I offered to pay all of his expenses down there if any of them would take him in. Nobody thought that was a good deal. I feel bad for the kid. I have a fairly good idea how his life is going to go. I just don't think that I'm the person to fix this problem. Am I the a-hole? Based on the timeline of events here, you're not the a-hole. You offered to take the kid in 13 years ago, and they all thought you were trying to steal the child. But now that it's convenient for them, they want you to do it, even though the offer has been off the table for a while. Not the a-hole. They declined, and now that the kid is problematic, they want you to take their child? At 13 years old? Away from his family? Wow, they are honestly some messed up parents. You didn't go back on your offer. They rejected your offer. That was the end of the offer, by their child choice. Offering to pay expenses is far more that most people would do in this situation. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. The mental gymnastics your family plays when convenient is astounding. Stay firm. Nope, not the a-hole. No offer lasts 13 years, and adopting a baby is very different compared to adopting a teen, even a well-behaved teen. Am I the a-hole for telling my 12-year-old niece to not make life any harder for her mom? Throwaway account. I, 40, female, have a 12-year-old neurotypical niece and an 8 year old high needs neurodivergent nephew. Eight years old. Male. They are my sister's kids. 37. Female. My niece's birthday was yesterday and she has cupcakes ready to bring to her class. My nephew doesn't sleep well at all and both his parents are up with him a lot of the night and very sleep deprived. Nephew snuck downstairs yesterday morning before everyone was up and ate most of the cupcakes. Parents forgot to lock the cabinet. Like I said, they're very sleep deprived. Brother-in-law works about 60 hours a week as a physician and sister is a stay-at-home mom. My niece called me from her cell. We're very close, and I only live five miles away. And with her being hysterical, I could also hear nephew having a meltdown in the background and his parents trying to calm him down. She was understandably upset because it was her birthday and she was bringing cupcakes to the class. Neither of her parents would be able to replace the cupcakes on time as sister had to take nephew to a doctor's appointment. They would have been there a number of hours. And her dad had several surgeries lined up that day and couldn't get out of work. We live in a rural area 
area that doesn't have Uber Eats or DoorDash. My partner, 42 female, owns the local bakery and was able to go in early to make impromptu cupcakes for my niece, and my partner would deliver it to her school. I too couldn't get out of work, so I told my niece not to worry that I would take care of it, but to please lay off her parents that their lives are hard enough with her brother that she shouldn't make things any more difficult for them because they're so burnt out and overwhelmed. She got angry with me because she said her parents were careless in forgetting to lock the cabinet. I told her it was an honest mistake that anyone could make. My partner thinks I shouldn't have said that because she's just a child. This is true, but her parents are literally hanging by a thread and I'm trying to help the only way I know how. Her parents thanked us profusely for coming to the rescue with her cupcakes and offered to pay, but we declined, saying it was on the house. Am I the a-hole? I think this is a soft you're the a-hole, just since you probably shouldn't have said that to your 12-year-old niece because they're a child and they also want their parents to pay attention to them and their needs. But you're not fully an a-hole just since you did come through with the cupcakes to kind of salvage the birthday. You're the a-hole. My experience is that when a high-needs child eats up all of the energy and time and attention, the other child is told to stuff their feelings down at that age and it emerges somewhere else in life. For a couple of my students, it ended very, very badly. Her feelings are valid. She's too young to get over it for her parents like an adult. I agree with your partner. I don't know what the high needs are, but you might cover for the parents sometimes so they can sleep. Help them find a respite caregiver. Take the niece out away from the chaos. You're the a-hole. This girl has not been her parents' priority for eight years now, and likely won't ever be again. She's lost so much of her childhood as the sibling of a high-needs neurodivergent kid, and now you, too, are expecting her to parent her parents? I feel for her parents. I do. But it's not their preteen's job to soothe their egos when she has to suffer in silence. You're the a-hole. She is 12. A child. She is reacting as a child would. She was not trying to make anyone's life more difficult, and that's not an appropriate thing to say. Children's brains are not as developed as ours. This was not her fault. You need to speak to her in a way appropriate for her age. Her parents being burnt out is on them, not the child. She's 12. 12. Not an adult, but a child. She has a right to be upset. It was her birthday for crying out loud. You're the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for how I suggested my niece deal with homophobia? I'm 35 and I've been out as queer for at least 15 years. My sister's Jess's daughter, Renee, just came out as a lesbian. She's 16 and while her family and friends are accepting, she's had some issues with other people. Jess asked me if I could give her advice on it and I gave her this advice. Sometimes people will try to debate you on your sexuality. I'd never engage. Even if you win, debating your personhood will eat you up inside. Instead, know this about bigots. Their hate isn't about you. When someone shames another person, they are often coming from a place of deep internal shame, self-restriction, isolation, etc. They see self-denial as a virtue to justify their own self-imposed restriction and resent the person who's in true accord with themselves. They're deeply lonely, in a fearful place, having been indoctrinated to fear their fellow man. They're part of churches or organizations that maintain power and control through fear of others, and you are unfortunately being othered as a propaganda tool. If someone tries to argue with you about your sexuality, ask them to reflect on themselves instead. Don't let them debate you. Just keep reminding them that they only have to answer to themselves and to God. I gave her all that advice and she listened and felt better hearing that the stuff people are saying about her is 100% not about her. But stuff got kind of rough when she went back to church next. Apparently, one of her dad's friends was giving her the whole love the sinner, hate the sin crap and she went off on him, asking him in front of everyone why he was getting so red in the face, saying that she didn't want to debate her own sexuality. But she was concerned about him, that he was so clearly sad and afraid and ashamed that he was putting that pain out into the world. And she hoped he'd go home that day and reflect on whether he wanted to go through life letting fear and shame control and isolate him. It apparently made things really awkward and and made the guy matter. He got at her saying she didn't know him, and she was like, I don't have to know you to see that. I'll pray for you. Which, damn, Gen Z is gutsy, and honestly, I was proud of her. But my sister was upset. She asked me if I told her daughter to call this guy sad and angry, and I said, yeah, though just generally, not about that specific guy. My sister told me she thought I was setting her daughter up for trouble, that the stuff I suggested she say was gonna make a lot of people angry. I said those people were already angry. She said that advice wasn't age appropriate at all and that I should have said more of the love yourself slash self-confidence stuff. She wanted her daughter to be safe and 
being worried about her saying that kind of thing. Am I the a-hole for the advice I gave? It was honestly the best advice I had, but I can see where my sister is coming from saying it's not the best advice for a teenager. Maybe a case of unintentionally the a-hole because the advice was good, I think. It was just the way the daughter interpreted it and how she used it, which made it a lot worse. Not the a-hole. What she told that idiot definitely struck some truth within. You did fine. Your sister isn't as open-minded as she wants you to think. She worries about what her church family will think of her. She needs to be more concerned with standing up for her daughter and standing by her. Not the a-hole. You gave your niece solid advice and guidance. My question is, why is your sister angry with you instead of the grown man at church who felt the need to concern himself with her 16-year-old daughter's sexuality? That is downright creepy. What kind of grown man debates with a child about their own romantic orientation and yells, you don't know me, when it doesn't work? I don't think your niece was in the wrong for defending herself in a church full of people who won't respect her, so not the a-hole. She needs support in a time like this, which is something you definitely gave her. Of course, people will get mad at her for defending herself, but it's way better to stand up for yourself than to keep quiet. Because if you defend yourself, that shows they have no power over you. If you don't, they'll keep pushing you and think it's okay to. Am I the a-hole for not giving up my seat for an elderly woman on the tram? I, 26, female, am currently five and a half months pregnant. Even though I'm in my second trimester, I don't look very pregnant. Additionally, I wear baggy clothes, so it would be tough to see my bump either way. In terms of fitness and health, I'm really active, but recently I've been struggling with fatigue from the pregnancy. After a full day of work, I'm a uni lecturer. On my feet, I'm exhausted. Today, I was on the tram headed home from work, and most of the seats were taken. I decided to sit in the seats reserved for those who need it, i.e. disabled, elderly, pregnant, with children. I usually don't do this unless I absolutely have to, like today. I was minding my business while listening to my podcast when this older lady, I'd guess late 60s, early 70s, tapped me on the shoulder. I removed my headphones and asked how I could help her. She said to me that it's rude of me to sit in these seats and asked if I could stand instead. The way in which she said that was pretty rude. I'm a shy person and hate conflict, so I was a bit taken aback by her attitude. As I began to try to explain to her how I'm pregnant, another passenger came over and repeated the sentiment of the older lady. Once they stopped talking, I managed to quickly say, actually, I'm pregnant, to which the older lady scoffed. She said I couldn't possibly be pregnant and told me to give her the seat. I refused to move and explained to her I needed the seat as much as she did. At this statement, she lost her mind at me. By this point, we had reached the next stop and the tram conductor came to see what the yelling was about. The older lady told him what was happening and he looked at me and said, are you really pregnant? To which I obviously said yes. He then said to the lady that there was a free seat near the front that she could have, which she begrudgingly agreed to take. The other passengers then said to me that even if I am pregnant, I should always give up a seat to an elderly person as they actually need it more. After this, I actually felt pretty guilty. Maybe she did actually need it more than me, but how can you tell? So am I the a-hole for not giving up my seat to an elderly woman on the tram? Personally, I don't use public transit that often, so I don't know the rules about how seating works. I don't think you're the a-hole, though. If anything, it's the older woman for just kind of being rude and accusing you of just faking being pregnant, I guess. Not the a-hole. If the other passenger was so concerned, they can give up their seat. Not the a-hole. The seats are for the elderly, disabled, and pregnant for a reason. Pregnancy causes the human body to exist at the limits of, like, high-endurance athletes for months at a time. That comes with aches, pains, instability, fatigue, etc. There's also the safety concern. Many pregnant people have low blood pressure, making them dizzier and more prone to falling. You're also off balance because your weight distribution isn't what you're used to. And falling while pregnant can be anything from minorly sore to very, very serious, depending on how you land, lucky, etc. Sorry, but I'm not risking my baby's life for etiquette. You did nothing wrong, and I'm sorry they made you feel like you did. I love how bystanders always think other people should sacrifice, but oh no, not themselves. Mine is mine, and yours is the community's. Not the a-hole. I know someone who fell badly while standing on a bus and several months pregnant, miscarried. Swollen ankles and pregnancy can F with balance in a bad way. You might not notice it normally, but while standing on mass transit, 
Oh boy. There was other seats available, not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for eating salad in front of my girlfriend and then making a joke about it? I, 28 male, grew up in a family that put a lot of emphasis on healthy eating. As a kid, we always started dinner with a salad, and I've continued that practice as an adult. I don't take my salad with any dressing, and the only toppings I add are mushrooms and tomatoes. Since I don't put dressing on my salad, I often eat it with my hands, since it's easier than trying to spear the dry mixed greens with a fork. I've been eating my salads like this basically since I was a teenager, and it was never an issue, even when having dinner with my parents. My girlfriend, 27, female, eats salads occasionally, but doesn't love them the way I do, which is fine. She's currently pregnant, and pretty much all she wants to eat right now is meat and potato type meals, which is also fine. She's had some severe morning sickness in the first trimester, and it's been a struggle to find food that she can consistently keep down. So we'll make something she wants for dinner, and then I will pair it with a side salad for myself, so I'm still getting my greens. Lately, I've noticed she's been a little distant during dinner, so I asked her about it. She said that my side salads are unappetizing to her, and she requested I stop eating them in front of her because it makes her nauseous to watch. I told her that everything makes her nauseous right now, and that it's not fair to me that I have to change my lifelong diet because of her pregnancy symptoms. She told me that the issue isn't with the salad, it's the way I shove it down my throat like a caveman. Apparently that makes her gag, and then she doesn't want to finish her own food. I told her that I've been eating my side salads like that for over a decade, and no one has ever commented on it, so I think she's being overdramatic. I told her that her caveman comment was rude and unnecessary, and that I would continue the conversation with her when she's ready to talk about it in a more reasonable way. She immediately got up and went into the nursery and shut the door behind her. When I walked by later, I could hear her crying, but I didn't go in and say anything because I feel like she should be the one to apologize to me for the crass comments she made about how I eat. She ended up sleeping on the glider in the nursery while I slept in our bed alone. We sat down for breakfast this morning in silence, so I attempted to diffuse the tension by asking if the way I was eating my toast was acceptable or if it was also making her nauseous. She immediately started crying again, calling me an a-hole and accusing me of not caring about her feelings or how hard the pregnancy has been on her. All I was trying to do was make a joke, and I know pregnancy is hard, but women go through it just fine all the time, so I don't understand why she's making such a big deal about it. So, am I the a-hole for eating my salads in front of her and then making a joke about it the next morning? I want us to sit down and resolve this when she gets home from work tonight, so I guess if I need to apologize, I will. Okay, you kinda had me there in the first half, I was on your side, but he <laughs> kinda fell off the rails there, bud. It's not like she told you you can't eat the salad anymore, she just doesn't like watching you eat the salad, so like bring it to the kitchen and eat it there if you really need it? The biggest problem is you kind of blaming her for being a baby about being pregnant. Like, come on, dude. You're the a-hole. You're the a-hole for the joke you made. Easy solution for the salad. You can eat it before eating with your girlfriend and have a few bites of potatoes with her. Is it that hard to find a compromise? And you're two times an a-hole for your comment about how women are just fine with pregnancy. All my pregnancies and birth went perfectly. Still, I was nauseous with cravings during first semester. Still, I was more sensitive and less patient. Still, I had to deal with my body changing forever, etc, etc. You're just at the beginning of it. Step up, man. You're the a-hole. You have no idea what pregnancy nausea is. You literally eat salad with your hands. The toast comment was unnecessary and you know it. You're the a-hole. Your joke was passive-aggressive. If you thought it would diffuse the tension, you seriously lack any self-awareness. Also, use a fork. You're an adult. We all know he didn't say it to defuse the situation. He was being petty. Ugh, these kind of hurt my brain, so I'm gonna go take a break now. Am I in the wrong for jumping out of a bathroom window to avoid my mom's attempt at forcing a reunion between me and my ex-fiance? Some backstory. I had been dating my ex-fiance, Sarah, for four years. We had been planning to get married in November 2020, but I found out at the start of the month that she cheated on me. She begged me to give her another chance, but I broke it off. The problem was that being cheated on is, in my mind, completely emasculating and humiliating, so I never told anyone that was the reason we broke up for obvious reasons. Sarah also didn't tell people we broke up because she cheated. So people have blamed me for the breakup, including my mom. They just see that I dumped her out of the blue. I've gone very strict no contact with Sarah after I discovered she was cheating on me. Sarah has been talking with my mom and has convinced her that if we could talk one more time, we would be able to reconcile. My mom has been applying hardcore pressure on me to talk with Sarah, but I've explained that there's no chance we will ever get back together. So tonight, I go over to my mom's place because she's hosting family for Christmas Eve. I'm there for a bit talking with my aunts and uncles and cousins when the doorbell rings, and I can see it's Sarah. I ask what the frick is going on, and my mom says she invited Sarah so we can work this out in the spirit of the holidays. I'm 
pissed now because the only way to explain my side of the story is to tell everyone I was cheated on. Complete humiliation in front of my whole family. So as my mom goes to the front door, I go into the bathroom. My mom starts knocking on the door saying that I need to come out and talk to my ex like an adult. I say F it, kick out the window screen, and get in my car and go home. My mom called a short while ago saying she's cutting ties with me over my behavior. She's really fixated on me jumping out of a window and that Sarah will always be like a child to her. My sister called me after to read me out for ruining Christmas. I broke down and told her that Sarah cheated on me, which is why I dumped her and didn't want to see her under any circumstances. She called me a big a-hole who was lying to cover for myself. Am I really in the wrong? Not the a-hole, but dude, you gotta tell them why you're acting like this. People will certainly feel a bit sorry for you, but they'll realize why you don't want to be in the same room with this girl. Not the a-hole. Your family has some serious issues with boundaries and Sarah needs to get the hint and go away. I don't think it's, it's emasculating and humiliating to say that you got cheated on. None of that's your fault. That's not humiliating. That is depressing. If, if my best friend came up to me and told me that their girlfriend cheated on them while they were engaged, I wouldn't think that's humiliating. I would be in shambles for him. You know, it's just messed up. You gotta be, you gotta be front and tell people why you're feeling this way. I know as a man, it's really hard to communicate your feelings, but you gotta, I learned that the hard way. So you, you gotta do it, man. Am I the a-hole for refusing to tell my husband the gender of our baby after he skipped going to the doctor's appointment with me? My husband and I are expecting. This is our first baby and we're excited. Thing is, he barely attends any doctor's appointments with me and his excuses aren't even valid. He's willing to miss the doctor appointment over soccer or a drink or board game with friends. His response is always, I'm not the one carrying the baby. Why do I have to go see the doctor with you? Last week was my final straw. He was supposed to come with me for the baby's gender reveal appointment, but he chose not to come last minute because his friend invited him to fish and chips meal. I was pretty livid, but didn't make a fuss about it. My mom went with me instead. He texted asking me to tell him the results, boy or girl, but I refused to tell him. He kept spam calling me, but I hung up each time. He came home fuming, demanding I tell him the results, but I refused and bluntly told him, since he refused to attend the appointment, then he gets no results till after the baby's born and said I was willing to die on this hill. He went off, calling me spiteful and immature for doing this and punishing him. He said he's the father and has the right to know. He then called me dramatic since I wasn't alone and mom was with me. I said he gets no results, period. He's been fuming about it and told his family and they're now pressuring me to stop playing mind games with him and tell him, but I declined. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Already a deadbeat dad before the baby's even born. He's literally prioritizing fish and chips over his unborn baby. Is this really who you want to raise a child with? Seriously. <laughs> like, what gives? I'm not I'm not a kid's guy, but hey, if you're going to have a baby with someone, you need to be supportive, all right? Step up. Am I wrong for using flashcards to explain to my brother and his wife why they can't bring the rainbow baby to my wedding? Oh my God. Okay. My fiance F and I, M, are getting married. We've decided wedding's going to be child free. No hate towards children, just keep it more organized and contained. My brother Chris, M, and his wife, F, have a three-year-old son who everyone calls a miracle or rainbow baby. He came after several failed pregnancies that lasted for years. When they found out my nephew was included in the no children rule, they tried to convince me to make an exception for him. Chris told me his son is a miracle baby and his presence at the wedding will bring blessings for me and my fiance. I refused and said no. The wedding is child free. His wife kept sending my fiance pics of my nephew when he was months old. What that mean? I told him no and to stop. My brother told me this might cause a rift in our relationship. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child free. He asked again and pointed out how his baby is different since he's a rainbow. A miracle baby. I again said no and explained that the wedding is child free. They brought it up when they visited at my home and I knew they weren't going to stop. So I made flashcards in advance with the phrase, the wedding is child free, period, and pulled them out and started slowly showing them the flashcards one by one in this order. The wedding with a sticker of the bride and the groom is child with a sticker of a baby, free, with a sticker of a crossed out sign, period, with a huge black dot sticker. They were both stunned. I asked if they get it now and Chris had lost his crap. His wife had already grabbed her stuff and walked out. Chris called me an a-hole for doing this and said that I disrespected him, his wife, and their son, who's my one and only nephew. He rushed out after we argued. My fiance saw the whole thing and thought it was funny, but my parents and Chris are livid beyond measure. They're telling everyone about the amount of disrespect and mockery I had displayed towards them, and I'm being told to fix it now. Not the a-hole. That is goddamn hilarious. They kept pushing the boundary, and you held it firm in probably the funniest way possible. Should have told them all babies are miracles, but that you were having a miracle-free wedding. They're gonna bring the child to the wedding. Not if they're not invited, they're not. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for suing my parents for my college money? My great aunt set up savings accounts for all of her female relatives. In our culture, education for women is not really valued and she thought that was BS. She lived with her father in London where she was educated. She went on to attend university and became a doctor. She married a British man, they moved to America and had a great life. She funded the education of as many of her nieces and grandnieces as she could. When she passed away, she left money for every girl relative she could. My parents managed to access the accounts that were set up for my sister and I. They used it to pay for my brother's wedding. My 
sister didn't care because she got married two years out of high school and had no intention of going to college. When I graduated, I went to the bank to get money for school and it was almost all gone. There was like $13,000 left. I asked my parents about it and they said they needed the money. I finally found out where the money went. I got furious, I got student loans, and moved out. I'm a great source of shame to them and I don't give two fricks. I'm currently suing them for the money that was left for me. My entire family is against me and they all think I'm a complete a-hole for airing private family business in public and that I'm putting money ahead of family. My friends are all on my side, but they are all Americans, so don't really get my culture. Neither do I, to be honest. My brother called me up and offered to pay for my university if I dropped the lawsuit. I agreed as long as we had a legally binding contract. He said I was being an a-hole for not trusting him. I said he should not have accepted my money for his wedding. It's causing all kinds of embarrassment in our community. I'm somewhat ashamed to be doing this, but I don't want to have this debt I should not have. Not the a-hole. Your parents stole from you. They're in the wrong no matter how uncomfortable that makes your family. I'm not a lawyer, but if you're in the middle of a lawsuit, it's probably not wise to discuss it on the internet. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Sue their greedy ass into the ground and good luck getting what you deserve. Spoken true. I really don't have anything else to add to that. How could you possibly think you're the a-hole trying to get money back that your parents stole from you that wasn't theirs? Am I in the wrong for throwing them out of the house that we own? Son and future in-laws decided to exclude his family from wedding. They thought son owned the house, not us. My wife and I bought a four-bedroom house in PA that my son lives in. Our son went to college in PA and wanted to stay in the area, so we bought the house as a second home. We live in New Jersey and commute to Manhattan for work. We figured that we would have a place to live and we could visit every so often and spend some quality time together. We pay the taxes and services slash maintenance on the house. Our son pays for his groceries and the house utilities. All was going well for a few years. Our son meets a girl and they get serious. We meet her and she seems nice enough. They announce their engagement and she moves into the house with our son. Now for the problem, the wedding. We hold a little get to know you barbecue at the PA house. My son and daughter are there and our son's fiance and her parents are, and sisters are there. We all seem to be getting along well. My wife, daughter, and the fiance go into the house along with her mother and sisters and my son. A few minutes later, my wife and daughter come out and are really upset. They come over and tell me that we're leaving and we're driving back to New Jersey. I try to find out what happened and once we get back to New Jersey and they calm down, they tell me that our son and his fiance, along with her family, don't want us at the wedding. According to what I was told, we're not their kind of people. I was livid. I called my son and asked him WTH this was about. He tells me that her family feel that we are not good enough and will embarrass them at a family wedding, that we are all uninvited from the wedding. I let a week go by to calm myself down and drive back to the PA house. The new future in-laws are in the house along with the fiance. It appears they are all moved into the house. They ask me why I'm there. I tell them that since we aren't invited to the wedding, I was coming over to talk to my son. They tell me to leave their house. I lost it and told them that they had 30 days to get out. Tell my son I'm selling the house and he could find somewhere else to live with all of you. I go to a realtor in town and list the house for sale. They call my son at work and tell him what I said. Apparently, they thought that he owned the house. He calls me and asks why I'm selling his house. I tell him I paid for it along with the taxes on it and it's mine. He was living there rent free, but since he doesn't want us in his new life, he has to get out. I tell him the same as I told his future in-laws that they have 30 days to get out and then I'll get a lawyer and get them evicted. Am I the a-hole for taking a hard stance on this? He is my son, but the in-laws seem to take over and we no longer count. Not the a-hole. They all moved into the house? That's so bizarre. Tell them they're not your kind of people, aka squatters. NTA. I actually find it hilarious. He's so entitled to the house he didn't even expect you to take it back after his actions. I believe this is exactly the reality check he needed. Not in the wrong. They're too good for you, but you're good enough to leech off of. They just lost a cushy situation. Am I the a-hole for telling cashier that wasn't the girl's credit card? Throw away because husband told me I was the a-hole and want to know before I get home and argue. On phone format is bad. I was in a higher end department store today, rhymes with looming tales, and happened to end up next to two teenage age girls while shopping. One of the girls had picked out a pair of very expensive boots and they were both fawning over them. Second girl must have looked at the price tag and asked Boots girl if she's really going to spend that much on boots. Girl with boots says something along the lines of, it's fine, I have my dad's credit card, I'm not paying, which instantly caught my attention because that's not her card. I've told my son multiple times that he's never allowed to use my card, so I'm interested to see how this girl thinks she's going to get away with fraud, but had to split up from the girl at this point because they had found something else. We end up at the same register, me behind, and I see her total hit well over four digits. The girl is about to swipe her card when I decide that I can't let her get away with something like this and someone has to parent this kid if no one else will. I tell the cashier that that isn't her card, but her father's, and I'm not sure she has permission. Girl and friend turn and glare at me, giving me possibly the dirtiest look I've ever seen. I swear this girl was going to throw a tantrum right there. I don't think she was ever told no. Girl tells cashier her father gave her the card to shop with because it's the store's credit card and it gives them points. Now that I pointed out it wasn't hers, cashier tells her she can't use that card. Girl tries to show ID to prove they have the same last name. Yeah, that'll help. And I tell her it's still fraud. Girl says it's not fraud because she has permission and tells me to mind my own business. I tell her that it is my business, that she's doing something illegal. She needs to pay with her own card or I call the cops. Girl's pissed now and people are glaring at me. She uses her own card and leaves crying. Cashier looks mad at me and I tell my husband when I get home, only for him to agree I was in 
in the wrong. So Reddit, am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. Do you usually make a habit of sticking your nose into other people's business? You are the a-hole. You have no idea what agreement she has with her dad and you had no reason to interject yourself. You're the a-hole, but I get a feeling you're still gonna go home and argue with your husband about it and ignore everything you've learned here. Wow, finally, <laughs> someone's the a-hole. Jesus Christ, that was terrible. Nosy Nelly Karen ass lady, get a job. Am I the a-hole for shouting at my ex in front of my daughters? I, 37M, have three girls, eight, 10, and 12. Their mother walked out on us for another man when our youngest was around four. My ex still stays in contact though and pays child support. A few weeks ago while doing laundry, I saw red spots on my oldest's underwear. I asked her if she knew about it and she cried and told me she tried to call her mom, but my ex didn't call back. She'd been stuffing toilet paper in her underwear, hoping that would work. I explained to her that periods are nothing to be ashamed of and found some great resources online for us to review together. I took her to the store to pick out brands of feminine products she wanted to use. She picked Playtex Sport because she's a gymnast. After we were done, I decided I should do the same thing with my other two. My 12 year old volunteered to be a part of preparing them and we made a whole night of it. It was wonderful and I learned a lot. I even learned what a menstrual cup is and how they benefit the environment. The other day, my ex called back and I'll usually arrange a video chat and leave the room so they can have some alone time and when they're done chatting, I'll come back in to talk boring co-parenting stuff like school, bills, etc. This last time, my ex was furious with me for talking about periods with the girls. She shouted at me that I was sick and perverted. Why didn't I call her myself if I knew it was so urgent? I could have called one of their grandmas and aunts, but my mom has dementia. While her mom and sisters call me a loser because I teach kindergarten, so I'm not fond of them. My ex told me I was being immature and should have just toughed it out for the girls. This really pissed me off, so I shouted back that maybe if she wasn't such a deadbeat and answered her goddamn phone once in a while, she could have handled this. I brought up everything she does that hurts them. She hasn't been to a single soccer game, piano recital, or gymnastics meet in two years. Every other weekend when they come home from her house, they go straight to their rooms only to emerge hours later asking me why she loves her new husband more than them. And what do they do to make her leave? My ex responded by saying I should tell them it's not their fault, I couldn't satisfy her, and I screamed, frick you, and she just smirked and pointed behind me saying, look what you did. When I turned around, my eight-year-old and 10-year-old were standing in the doorway crying. It broke my heart and I never shout, so I know I scared them. My 12-year-old stormed in and started screaming at her mom, and while I appreciate her sticking up for me, this is not a battle I want her fighting. My ex hung up before I could fully de-escalate the situation, and let's just say the girls have been given free reign of the ice cream and limitless hours of video games because I feel so bad. I haven't watched all the Twilight movies with them, so don't say I don't love them, but in this instance, am I the a-hole for shouting? Not the a-hole. And loads of single dads have to have the period talk. You rock for getting through all the Twilight movies with them, I couldn't even watch one. Not the a-hole. Your ex clearly doesn't give a frick about her kids, and if I were you, I would ask these kids how are things in mom's house. Sounds like a textbook case of neglect. Not the a-hole. It wasn't deliberate. Your ex is a terrible mother, and you sound like an exceptionally wonderful dad. I will never understand how some people can call single dads who give the period talk to their kids sick and perverted. If the mom's not going to be there to talk about the stuff that happens to her with the daughters, what do you expect to do? You're not a sick, perverted person for making sure that your daughters are, are okay when they have their period. It's not... <laughs> what? Mm, we're fine. It's fine. It's chill. It's chill. I'm not. I'm mad, but it's fine. Am I in the wrong for saying my babysitting rates are $35 an hour? I'm a software engineer with a full-time job and a side hustle of doing freelance coding work in my own time. I've always been the type to have a side hustle I put a lot of my free time into. I get really bored sitting idle. My freelance hourly rates are 60 an hour, and at my full-time job, my hourly pay works out to about 40. So that's how I value my time. Anyway, over Christmas vacation, I was staying at my parents' house, and my cousin was also staying over with her three young kids for Christmas to New Year's. I've been planning on doing some work on my freelance projects when I had free time, and in the morning, when my family had no plans. I wasn't in any rush, and I was already ahead of schedule on them all, but I didn't really have anything else to do. It was in a really rural area, and it's like an hour drive to the nearest anything. Then my cousin and her husband asked if I could babysit all day for three days so they could visit some friends in the area and hang out with just adults. I said I had planned on doing freelance work at the library, and she offered to pay me to babysit. I said if they could get close to my freelance rates, she wanted a number, and although my freelance rates are 60, I didn't feel like that was right. It was high, but I didn't want to go too low, and honestly, babysitting three kids would be harder for me than the routine coding work I had for my freelance project. I don't know a lot about kids, and I've never babysat for long, and I had a feeling it would be stressful and difficult. So I said 35, which is below what I make hourly at work. What is the bare minimum I'd value my time for, if that time is spent doing difficult work? And she went crazy at me, saying that's a ridiculous rate for babysitting and that I was entitled and being selfish, that I'm trying to take advantage of how she didn't have other options, etc. I said that's way below what I'd be making if I had time to do my own work, and I'd be putting off my own work to babysit. Her husband then got mad at me, saying that I was a 24-year-old girl, that I'm damn near a child myself and that my time is not worth that much and it's childish to say that it was and that I was a stupid girl for not knowing that babysitting costs like 15 an hour when I grew up and have kids of my own I will see how stupid I was being I was kind of done with being called stupid so I just told them I hope they could find someone else my mom thinks that I asked for something offensive and my cousin and her husband obviously did too am I the a-hole for giving that number not the a-hole three kids
kids all day for three straight days. Even real babysitters would charge more than 15 for three kids. Obviously, they wanted you to do it as a favor and got upset that you treated it as an actual job. Not the a-hole, because asking a kid who is also on vacation to watch your kids for three days is kind of crappy. An evening? Sure. But three whole days is crazy. Not the a-hole. You are the only one who can put a price on your time because it's coming from your own life. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, cut and dry. For real. I wouldn't babysit three kids for three days for $15 an hour. Hell no. I don't know if I could reasonably say 35 because I don't make that much in my own time, but like 25 probably is what I would start at. <laughs> you know, like, geez. Am I in the wrong for calling my sister's husband useless? My 17F sister, 34F, called me saying that her work had an emergency and she needs to get there ASAP and needed me to watch her kids because no one else can. I rushed over there just to find her husband locked in his game room playing video games. I asked her why she called me over, if he was home, and she said that he didn't want to babysit because it was his only day off. Sister left and I started hanging with the kids. I was changing the baby's diaper and the other kids wanted a snack. I told them to go ask their dad to make them a snack since the baby had a blowout and it was going to take a while to clean him up. Well, their dad sent them back upstairs and told them to ask me again. After cleaning the baby up, I made the kids a snack and their dad came out to eat and told me not to let the kids interrupt him on his day off. By the way, he works part-time from home six days a week. I kind of snapped at him and told him it was my day off too and that he's a useless effing father and a husband if his wife has to rely on her teenage sister rather than her own husband. He started telling me that I was disrespectful and didn't understand how hard parenting is. I told him clearly he doesn't understand how hard it is either since he considers parenting his own children babysitting. He ended up kicking me out and apparently my sister was forced to come home because he told her she needed to figure it out since I'm the, her sister. I feel like I may be the a-hole because my sister's mad at me. Her husband is mad at me and my mom is mad at me for causing drama. But my dad thinks it's funny and agrees with me. I definitely didn't need to call him names, but I just hate this guy so much. We have argued about things in the past as well, so we already don't have a great relationship. My sister's saying I need to apologize to him and he is threatening to never let me into the kids' lives if I keep disrespecting him. Not the a-hole. Your sister should be mad at her husband for literally not taking care of his own kids. He was already in the house, but she called you instead? Make it make sense. Not the a-hole. I knew everything I needed to know by the he doesn't want to babysit line. Not the a-hole. Her husband sounds like a deadbeat and you were right to call him out. I would have left the instant I saw him home. Am I the a-hole for firing an employee after his parents died, bro. Okay, let's see. You know what? Let's hear him out. Let's hear him out, fellas. Let's hear what he's got to say. I'm the VP of sales at a software company, and one of our sales development reps' parents passed away at the beginning of April. Sadly, they were involved in a car crash and both lost their lives. Now, the employee in question is a very young 22-year-old guy and has been with us for about 10 months now. He's a great employee, and we were thinking about promotions in the next six months for him. His job is a high-paying one for a new grad, about 90K, with commission and and base, so we expect a lot from this position. Because of the accident, we let him take one month paid leave of absence from work, and he's returned a few weeks ago, and his performance is severely lacking. He's super unmotivated, not cold calling, outreaching to prospects for the last two to three weeks enough since he's come back. Our whole management team has noticed this, and we decided to let him go because we feel like he'd need months and months to be able to produce again, and we can't just wait that long. We called him into a meeting on Friday afternoon and gave him the bad news, and he was very calm and rude about it. Told us to go F ourselves, and got up and went to his desk and grabbed his things and left. I thought this was very, very unprofessional and extremely rude. I told my boyfriend about all of this and he said, myself and my management team are a bunch of asses and pranks with no hearts. Am I the a-hole? You are the a-hole. Generally, people receive a warning about their performance before they get fired. You gave him bereavement leave and then fired him immediately after because he wasn't performing. You're the a-hole in the most complete sense of the phrase. Yeah, okay. I said hear him out. We shouldn't have heard, we shouldn't have heard him out because Jesus Christ, not a warning, not a, not a, like a, a coaching session or something straight from bereavement back to work to fired what the hell <laughs> what the hell that is not okay i hope that guy sues you seriously wrongful termination for sure am i the a-hole for speaking italian to my gf's rude italian american family and embarrassing them recently i started dating a girl she's great and i love her so much i met her family a few nights ago for dinner and she warned me that the male side of her family is very big into being macho and detesting the boys the women date and are very big on take pride in their italian ancestry i think besides the grandfather how However, they were almost all born in Bergen County, New Jersey. But whatever, it's nice to take pride in one's heritage. Long story short, at dinner, they kept making jokes at my expense. I honestly would not call it bullying, just things about my height, beard, shaved head, yada yada. They tried to make fun of my IT job too, but stopped once I told them my income. It was overall not a bad experience, but also not a pleasant one. Anyway, her brother kept pushing things, giving me exceptional amounts of crap for playing lacrosse in high school. Apparently, it's a sport for prissy rich kids, and not manly like football or baseball. He ended his rant by saying, 
saying, hey, we're just a big Italian family. We're loud and tell it how we see it. Ha 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 ha. And all the family except my girlfriend laughed. So I, for the next minute, responded to everything they said in Italian. My girlfriend buried her head in shame. The grandfather laughed and everyone else kept looking at each other confused before telling me they didn't speak Italian. I replied, then don't use your Italian heritage as an excuse to behave poorly when you can't even speak the language. They got mad, but the grandfather told them all I was right and to be quiet. My girlfriend isn't mad, just ashamed, and I think the grandfather likes me, but word for my GF sister is that all the men are furious, think I'm a smart ass, and that I disrespected them and their masculinity in an unforgivable way. So, am I the a-hole? Lamau! The pure savagery from what you said and did is so golden. You totally won the heart of your GF's grandfather, and I wish I had that kind of grandfather, but mine is an a-hole. You and your GF are lucky to have each other, not the a-hole, sending good vibes. Not the a-hole. It sounds like the boys were hoping to put you through a hazing ritual, and you weren't biting it. Them in their place. And Grandpa approved. Nah, bro, you're not the a-hole here. Put an Italian New Jersey folk in their place. I would pay to see that happen in real time. Am I the a-hole for making a scene of my adult son and sticking my nose in his marriage? Here's the important background. My daughter-in-law, 32, and son, 33, have three children aged three, two, and four months. He convinced her to be a stay-at-home mom and sell her business by telling her how good of a childhood he had and how happy my marriage was without telling her, which I found out today. That our arrangement was everything, everything before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m. was split 50-50. Sunday was my day off and I was brought out twice a week. On to the story. On my last visit, I noticed my daughter-in-law was struggling mentally, so I, my sister, 55F, and her girlfriend, 53, pulled our money together and paid for a spa weekend for them while we babysit the kids for her birthday last weekend. I was preparing on Thursday evening for the kids to arrive when my daughter-in-law rang me holding back tears saying that we won't be going because my son's friend came to town and he said he wanted to spend the weekend with his friends catching up. I pressed her a little, and I'm talking a little about her situation, and she came clean about him doing no chores, no date nights, and her basically doing all of the childcare because that's what stay-at-home moms do. I was honestly disgusted, and I convinced her to drop me off the kids and bring a friend to the spa. I even dipped into my savings to give her $500 to buy herself something nice. When she dropped me off the kids, I begged her to tell me where her son was. After five minutes, she told me the bar. She left for the spa while I left for the bar. She knew I was going there and knew my sister slash my sister-in-law were taking care of the kids. Here's where I might be the a-hole. When I go to the bar where he and his friends were, I sat down next to the group and asked my son, did I fail you as a mother or was it your father? Because we both thought your partner comes before your silly drunk friends. The post is getting long enough, but long story short, I humiliated him and got myself banned from a bar. My daughter-in-law said she will be taking the kids to her parents when she gets back tomorrow and my son is calling me an a-hole for humiliating him and sticking my nose in his marriage. Maybe I should have stayed out. I don't know. Not the a-hole, but your son sounds like an a-hole. He convinced her to become a stay-at-home mom so he could avoid being a dad. Not the a-hole. Good on you for sticking up for your daughter-in-law. Your son needs a serious reality check. Three babies and all the chores? He's nuts. Not the a-hole. Your son needed to hear this. Bad behavior from the son. <laughs> the son, it's, marriage is a commitment. Having kids together is a commitment. And if you don't want to be committed to having kids, don't have kids and don't put it all on your wife because you think that she can be a stay-at-home mom while you do nothing. It's messed up. Am I the a-hole for getting mad at my artist hid their initials in my tattoo? I went to a tattoo shop in my area with a photo of the tattoo I wanted. It was one of my dad had gotten to honor my past grandfather, whose father also had it. But the point is, it was important to me that the tattoo looked exactly as it did in the photo. I get to the shop and I explain everything and I pay, get the tattoo, and we're done. I think it looks awesome. Everything's great. Until a few weeks later when I show my great-grandmother the tattoo. She's static, grab my arm, to look at and compliment it and then ask, who's AJ? I asked her what she means and she points out on the tattoo where the initials A and J or maybe T were hidden into the tattoo. I'm instantly pissed as my artist name is Alice Trevor. She tries to assure me it's no big deal if I hadn't noticed it until now, but I still reached out to the artist, sort of irritated. They told me the style of art I got is called traditional and it's pretty trad for all artists who do that style to do it. I demand a partial refund and they refuse, so I complain to the owner who made the artist give me a full refund. Now the artist is running a full smear campaign talking about moving shops and is all kinds of crap. My sister says I'm an a-hole for pushing the issue, but I feel like at the end of the day, I told you exactly what I wanted and you didn't do that. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. This person straight up branded you. Not only that, this isn't even the artist's design. It's a copied design. Not the a-hole. Tattoo artists don't get to sign their work because their canvas is a human being. This is known. This is conventionally understood. Not the a-hole. I've been tattooing for almost 20 years and this is something you never do. WTF? Am I the a-hole for not saying anything about the underwear? Ominous. But okay. <laughs> My 20 year old daughter and her fiance are currently staying with us and I love my daughter but she is very difficult and I can't stand her fiance. I gave them a deadline to move out because I can't take it anymore. They got into massive fights the other day while my wife was out and I guess a pair of my wife's underwear got in with their laundry and she thought he was cheating. I think the fact she immediately jumped to cheating shows how bad their relationship is. She was waving the underwear around and I recognized them because they had a floral print but I just let this ridiculous fight go on. My wife came home after about 30 minutes and said they were hers. My wife asked if I didn't realize they were hers and I accidentally
suddenly laughed. My daughter burst into tears and won't talk to me. Her fiance said we're fricked and left the house, but my wife thought it was funny. Not the a-hole. If your first thought is cheating, not the other woman that lives in this house, you've got issues. You are the a-hole. I don't know why you thought it was a good idea to let her fiance get yelled at and accused of cheating for a simple mistake. There is literally no reason to not point out it was your wife's underwear. Everybody sucks here. Their relationship is bad, but it sounds like you were basically going, I guess this is my soap opera for today. Why would I say anything to stop it? That's pretty toxic too, mate. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think you're kind of being an a-hole. No matter how toxic their relationship is, you have no reason to purposely make it worse. It's messed up. Am I the a-hole for making fun of a white girl for being poor because she was being racist? I'm Asian. More specifically, one of the only Chinese people in my grade, which has been absolutely fun these days. So the girl in question has been racially harassing me since the beginning of lockdown. And when she DM me and said, did the bat taste good? Thanks a lot, you freaking freak. I reported her to my school and they literally just dropped it because they said tensions were high and she couldn't be blamed because her uncle had corona, some BS like that. Then I got repeated messages like that from fake slash newly created accounts that I suspect were from her. And I just keep blocking them until I guess she gave up because I wasn't reacting. My school district has chosen to do in-person, massively dumb IMO, but whatever. On the literal second day of school, she walks up to me while I'm in lunch line and says in a thick Asian accent, are you eating bat dumpering or dog noodle? Other people around me freaking laughed, and I'm sure I don't have to explain this, but I felt freaking humiliated. It finally felt like I got off her back for a little while, and she comes back as soon as school starts, and I already know my school administration isn't going to go to bat for me. I don't know a lot about this girl, since obviously I try to avoid her, but I did know that she had bad teeth, lived in a trailer, and was very poor. I'm ashamed to have stooped this, but I just wanted to show her how I felt for once. So I said, I'd be less concerned with what I'm eating if I were you, and more worried about your diet, since you're the one who needs to figure out how to brush her teeth in a trailer with no running water. Stop trying to get sent to the hospital when you can't afford health care. Other students nearby told me I went too far because it wasn't her fault she was poor, like it was my fault I was Asian. She literally cried, like I didn't cry every time she called me an effing C slur. She's left me alone since then, though, which doesn't matter since I plan on transferring anyways. Not the a-hole. Yeah, two wrongs don't make a right, but this was the only way to get her to STFU. Don't dish stuff out if you can't take stuff back. If racist you be, get no sympathy from me. I think that's poetry for not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. You went through the appropriate channels and were ignored. You did what you had to do to protect yourself. I agree. If someone's gonna make fun of you for being a, a, a race, a specific race, for being Chinese, you can go to bat and make fun of them for being poor. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Am I the a-hole for taking back the beer I bought for a party from which I was uninvited? This happened just a few hours ago. I'm 19 year old man and the people calling me an a-hole are 18 year old men and women. On Thursday, a person I had a major crush on in high school but who rejected me messaged me out of the blue. She had never contacted me without me contacting her first and at one point I realized she had me blocked on social media and so I found it odd that she was suddenly being friendly. After sending a couple of greetings and questions about how I've been, she said that she was going to have some people over and wanted to know if I would get the beer. The drinking age where we are is 19 and she and the people who were going to chill were all 18. The liquor stores in my area all card. I thought it was silly that me being a month older meant I could go buy liquor and they couldn't and so I said I would love to go. She said thanks, I'll pick you up at 7. 7 o'clock rolled around and she texted me to say she was in front of my house. I went out dressed and ready to chill with some people and she drove me to the liquor store and when we got there I asked what beer she wanted me to get and she told me to get Budweiser. I hid my disappointment as well as I could but it was her party so I went in and bought two cases of 24. I got back in the car and said let's party and she was eerily quiet. I noticed that she wasn't driving towards her neighborhood but rather back to mine. I thought she had moved or something, but didn't want to press the issue. When she turned down my street, I finally figured it out. She was being purposely vague about the invitation because she wanted me to get the beer, but she wanted a way out when she told me I wasn't actually invited in the first place. She stopped in front of my house, leaned over, kissed me on the cheek, and said thanks in her best voice. I deadpanned her and asked when she was going to tell me I wasn't invited. She feigned surprise and said that she never intended to invite me in the first place. I sat in silence for a long awkward minute, picked up the beer, and walked towards my front door. She got out of her car and frantically tried to reinvite me to the party, but I told her that what she did was the most humiliating thing that ever happened to me. I opened my front door, slammed it a bit too hard, and came back to my room. Now I'm sitting here drinking absolute unpalatable water and have a text message from all of her friends and her asking me why I'm being such a d I don't think I'm the a-hole for reacting the way I did, but if you haven't figured it out, I'm not amazing socially, so I'm not sure. Am I here? Not the a-hole. I would have loved to see her face when you took the beer with you. Good for you. FYI, if you have a decent skillet, you can cook some bratwurst in those beers, cook down the remaining liquid into a syrup, and add it to some mustard for a really tasty meal. The best possible fate for those beers. This, how is this a question? If they want you to buy alcohol for their party and not invite you to their party and you don't give them the beer, you're not the a-hole. <laughs>
<laughs> there they are the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for not letting my miracle baby niece be my flower girl at my wedding? My 27F older brother and sister-in-law, both mid-30s, just welcomed their first child a year and a half ago. After years of trying, after many failed attempts, sister-in-law was told that she wouldn't be able to conceive due to a medical condition she has. They finally got pregnant. Since having my niece, the baby has been the center of attention at every family, even we've had since she was born. Birthdays, weddings, family get-togethers, you name it. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my niece, but it can get to be a little too much. When my sister-in-law goes on and on about how long they've tried to conceive, complications they've had, miscarriages they've had, etc. Like a little too much info. Many family members have commented on how it's a little bit excessive, but no one has said anything because they don't want to sound like an a-hole. Anyway, I'm getting married in the spring, and my brother and sister-in-law approached me last weekend about having my niece be the flower girl. Now, my fiancé, 35M, has two children, 10M and 6F, from his previous marriage. His son is one of the groomsmen, while his daughter had asked to be our flower girl, and we told them the news that we are getting married a year ago. As it's something she always wanted to do, of course we said yes. So I explained this to my sister-in-law when she asked about my niece. She asked if my stepdaughter can just carry my niece with her. I said I don't think she'd be comfortable with that considering she's six. She then asked why I can't give the role to my niece and allow her to carry my niece down as the flower girl. I said no because I already promised my stepdaughter. She then started going off about how my lack of effort to incorporate my niece is disgusting to her and I should honor her in some way since I know how long and how hard they tried for my niece. Now I may sound like an a-hole for this but I kind of got fed up and snapped and said incorporate my niece how? By the time the wedding comes around she'll be two years old. The entire family already knows your story about how long and how hard you guys tried for her. What more do you expect me to do to honor her? She started crying and said that clearly I don't love my one and only niece and I'm letting her down. I said of course I love my niece and obviously she's getting to be involved in pictures and stuff but I'm not going to let my stepdaughter down by giving my niece a role she's too young to remember anyway. Well now my sister-in-law and my brother are pissed off with me for not letting my niece be flower girl and are running around telling the rest of the family I don't love my niece. My mom had been trying to stay neutral but thinks my stepdaughter would understand if I explained to her I need to give the role to my niece. I'm firm in my decision though, and my fiance is thankful that I didn't let his daughter down. Am I the a-hole for not allowing my niece to be the flower girl? Not the a-hole, she's their miracle baby, not yours. The fact that they want you to disappoint your soon-to-be stepdaughter in order to make their daughter the focus of your wedding is absurd. Not the a-hole, your wedding, your choice. Your sister-in-law is lucky you didn't say no children under X age because that is becoming super popular. That it will. When I get married, there's not gonna be kids allowed at the wedding. <laughs> I don't want kids at my wedding, what the hell? Not the a-hole, by the way. Am I in the wrong for calling out my kid's future stepmom for treating me like a surrogate? I, 29F, dated a guy, Joe, 30M, for three months before he left me to go back to his ex, Kim, 30F. Right after we broke up, I found out I was pregnant, and now I'm at 24 weeks, and I let him know he was ecstatic. Turns out his girlfriend had fertility issues and would likely never be able to get pregnant naturally, and he's always wanted to be a father. Getting back together was out of the question for both of us, so he's still with his girlfriend. Joe was only allowed at the initial appointment because of COVID-19, and we found out I was having twins. According to Joe, when he told Kim she had a mental breakdown about her infertility and she wanted to talk to me. I met them at their house and Kim stated that she wanted to be involved in my pregnancy because she would eventually be the children's stepmother. She started telling me that I needed to go to a home birth and I needed to formula feed so that they could have the babies half the week and that she wanted one boy and one girl and that she wanted the kid to call her mama since they would be calling me mommy. I shut her down and said I would make the best choices for my children and my body and left. Kim continued to be overbearing and texting me every day about my eating habits, exercise habits, and bitching about how her job wouldn't let her take maternity leave. At the virtual genetics counseling appointment she attended instead of Joe and took over the whole meeting trying to talk about her family history, which wasn't relevant. When it came time for my 20-week level 2 scan, they allowed me one guest and Joe suggested I take Kim instead of him, which I refused to do. Joe did end up coming and found out the gender because they wanted to keep it a surprise for me so we could throw a gender reveal party. I put up a pregnancy announcement on my social media and then she put up an announcement saying they were expecting twins, the non-traditional way, and how blessed she was. I was irritated, but I kept my mouth shut. Then she threw a gender reveal party and posted it on social media and I wasn't even invited. Wow. <laughs> she also announced that she's having a baby shower. I commented on her post and told her to stop treating me like a surrogate and that the kids weren't hers and that Joe didn't have any claim or custody of the kids until they're born. I then called Joe and reiterated all of this and stated that I would not be seeing either of them until we went to family court and that my mother would be my birthing partner. He and Kim and some of her friends and family are saying I'm an a-hole. And her mother even called and insisted I give her one of my babies like this is a parent trap. So am I the a-hole? Get a lawyer ASAP. This woman is crossing so many boundaries and she's not even Joe's wife. Not the a-hole. Lawyer up and keep all the records and messages you can. Am I the a-hole for wearing a wedding dress at a wedding? So, my friend, 20 female, and I, 19 male, have been friends for a few years and she recently got engaged. A week ago, I got a DM from her for a small costume party she was hosting as a celebration for her getting engaged. I asked if there was a theme and she said there wasn't. I'm a cosplayer, so I had a lot 
lot of choices. I didn't want to rock up in an anime cosplay, so I thought it would be funny to go in an engagement party as the corpse bride. I arrived at her house yesterday and everything seemed normal. A few people complimented my costume and I was having a lot of fun. After 10 minutes, my friend's fiance walked out in a black tuxedo and announced this was actually their wedding. Apparently, my friend saw a video of someone doing this and wanted to do the same. He asked us all to go to the backyard for the ceremony to begin. I went straight to him. I asked him if I should quickly go home and change my outfit and that I would get back before it started. He told me it was fine since I didn't know this was the wedding. I trusted him and followed everyone outside. They got married and everything seemed good. The reception was just in their house again, so everyone just walked back inside and picked up where they left off. I tried talking to my friend and celebrating with her, but she kept making excuses to not talk to me. I assumed it was just because she was tired from the big day and wanted some alone time. I didn't bother her after that and the party soon ended. I got home and half an hour passed when my phone started getting notifications. I checked and it was my friend texting me. She was cussing me out and telling me how I ruined her wedding. I was really confused and asked what I did. That only made her more angry. She told me it was basic knowledge not to wear a wedding dress to a wedding. I reminded her I had no idea it was a wedding and that I asked her now husband if I should change and he said it was fine. She didn't respond, but I got a text from her husband. He asked why I would tell her he said it was fine. I told him he said it was fine. Then he said how I should have changed anyways and it's my fault that the two are now fighting over this. I've tried texting her that I was sorry and if I had known I wouldn't have done it. I woke up today and saw her and her husband have blocked me on everything. So am I the a-hole for not changing out of the wedding dress when I found out it was actually a wedding? Absolutely not. No, you're totally fine. If anything, it sounds like a setup. If they wanted this to go smoothly, they would have told people, hey, this is going to be the actual wedding. So don't like do anything weird, please. And also screw that husband trying to gaslight you just so he's like getting brownie points with his now wife. That's insane behavior. You're fine. I love when I read a headline and instantly form my opinion, but the story completely changes it. Not the a-hole. And you're probably better off without people like them in your life. Good lord. This is what you end up with when 20-year-olds get married. Not the a-hole. Hell no you're not the a-hole. Ain't no one gonna confuse a corpse bride for a real bride. They need to lighten the hell up and recognize this is their own doing. For real, they like blindside the guests into making it, oh, it's the wedding, whoa, and, and then get mad at you when you didn't know it was supposed to be the wedding? Am I the a-hole for making fun of a woman for being in her 40s and single? This whole saga started because my husband took my last name. A couple weeks ago, he got his workplace to change it, and his co-workers found out. About half of them think this is the funniest thing ever, and about half are deeply offended. Brenda is in the offended half, and has made that clear. He and I are in a group chat with his co-workers where we organize carpooling during the pandemic. It is very helpful to us, so we can't leave the chat. Since he changed his name, my husband and I have been dealing with a lot of dumb jokes in the chat, which we have been mostly ignoring. Yesterday, Brenda, his co-worker, and I got into a bit of a spat. I messaged the group asking if someone could take my husband home since I wouldn't be back from work until late and needed the car. One of his other co-workers agreed, and I thought that was that. Brenda messages the group saying, Maybe if you spent less time at work and more time being a wife, your husband wouldn't come into work with dirty shirts. I took this as a bad joke initially. My husband is a rural mail carrier, so his shirts look like shirts worn by someone in 90 degree heat on dusty roads. I do wash them, but there's only so much to be done. Me? I could make cleaning those shirts my full-time job, and it wouldn't do much, lol. Brenda? You won't be married very long if you keep trying to be the man in the relationship. I'd be embarrassed as a wife if I did so little for my husband. Me? Well, I work more hours and pay the bills, so I think he can oxyclean his own shirts if it's so important. Brenda? Maybe you should learn to take proper care of your husband, or you'll find yourself divorced. Me? I'll let you know when I need relationship advice from someone who is 42 and single. Now apparently Brenda is going around and saying that I mocked her for being single in her 40s. I don't care if someone is single in their 40s, but I think it's absolute BS that she can call me a bad wife, but I can't point out she has no frame of reference. No, you are absolutely not the a-hole. If anything, you're the hero in this story because I have a feeling a lot of people in the workplace don't like Brenda. Not the a-hole. What the heck, Brenda? Mind your own single business. Not the a-hole. I love how you responded. I can't for the life of me understand how any 
any of his co-workers are offended over this, much less to the point they are attacking you. For real, like, why is it anybody's business? It's just a name. For gosh sakes, it's just a name. Not the a-hole. But be flattered. Brenda clearly has a crush on your husband. Also, his co-workers sound like they suck. They do bring up a good point. If anything, it sounds like Brenda's being a little pick-me here, like, Oh, please. Oh, I'd be such a good wife. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister-in-law out after she threw away most of my single-use baby products and even formula? I'm 19 female. I have a three-week-old baby girl. I do still live with my parents, but since I pay rent equally, they say I can have just as much of a say in who comes and goes from the house as they do. I've never actually taken advantage of this rule until recently enough. I have a brother who's 26 and his wife is 24. They are crunchy parents to an eight-month-old. Basically, what that is is effing stupid. They use reusable wipes slash nappies, think formula is the epitome of evil, baby wearing, the list just goes on. I'm the complete opposite. Pacifiers, supplementing with formula due to low supply, disposable wipes and nappies. They are completely against the products I use and often give me things like sister-in-law's breast milk in bags, disposable nappies their LO has grown out of, etc. I've used some, but it's not really my cup of tea. On Monday night, my brother and sister-in-law were minding my baby for me since it was my birthday, and my baby's father, not together, very close friends and co-parents, took me to get some dinner in one of my favorite fast food places. It was great and really relaxing. When I got home that evening, my sister-in-law said that she did some cleaning and threw out anything I don't need. This immediately gave me red flags, but they were in a hurry to get out the door and left almost immediately. When I went into the nursery, every disposable nappy and wipe pack was gone and replaced with some reusable cloth ones. Same with my formula. There was eight tubs and all of it was gone. I'm not able to replace them at the moment and solely breastfeeding isn't sustainable for us. I was extremely angry and I just turned my phone off to avoid being mean to my sister-in-law. She and my brother came over yesterday to collect something they forgot and that was when I confronted her. I told her she has to replace everything she dumped. When she said she can't afford to, I said fine, just get out and don't come back until I've been reimbursed or everything is replaced with the original items. My brother thinks I'm being a massive a-hole and he's on his wife's side. Our parents think I'm being completely reasonable here, but they think telling her essentially not to come back is taking it too far. Am I the a-hole? Look, I don't know anything about parenting, I'm not gonna lie and say I do, but in this case, the financial damage done because they threw away all of your stuff? Yeah, you're not the a-hole, they just wasted all of your money. <laughs> so she saved the environment by, checks notes, throwing away all of your supplies. Makes sense. Not the a-hole. And your sister-in-law has a screw loose. Not the a-hole. Sounds like theft to me. File a police report. She will replace. That does bring a good point. There could be potential of like small claims court depending on how much the financial like loss was by losing all the product. Not the a-hole. Babies are expensive. She trashed a lot of stuff that you can't get back that your baby needs. Am I the a-hole for telling my family that if they gift us money for our wedding, there will be no strings attached or we will politely decline it? I effing hate wedding culture. It's BS. My fiance and I thought we would escape that BS and money by having a small thing. Well, family started trying to throw money at us to make it bigger and more spectacular. We were surprised, but it was a good surprise. Then the demands started coming out. They wanted this, they wanted that, they wanted this person to come, these colors, dresses can't do this, this person has to be flower girl, this person has to be a groomsman, etc, etc. Suddenly, it didn't feel like our wedding, but an excuse for our families to have a family reunion. We put our foot down and said, thank you all for your kindness and generosity when it comes to our wedding. Unfortunately, it looks like we may not have been on the same page as the rest of you. When we were offered money for this wedding, we did not realize it came with strings attached. With so many requests and so many demands from people we didn't expect would think they had a say in our wedding, we have decided to give everyone their money back. Our understanding of what a gift is must be very different. If you would like to give us money without strings attached or requests or demands, we will gracefully accept it. But if you believe a gift should come with stipulations, we must regretfully and politely decline. This has caused an epic <laughs> storm, such to the point where I have people saying they will never come to our wedding. Honestly, not the worst thing in the world. That we were spoiled, 
world. We're a-holes, etc, etc, etc. My parents are rather upset about it, but hers, who never made any demands and gave us a small cash gift, said we did the right thing. We are halfway to canceling the whole party and just absconding into the wilderness to do the wedding the way we want. Am I the a-hole? Are we? Ooh, this one's it's a little tricky. I do think you could have been a little bit nicer in your response to everybody, but overall, it is your wedding. If people are giving you money to, like, essentially reserve your wedding to have a specific thing, that's their problem, not yours. Not the a-hole. That money was not a gift. Yeah, if anything, it sounds like these people were giving you money as, like, an investment to their entertainment. That's what we call a bribe, boys and girls. Here comes the bribe. Am I the a-hole for my response to my sister's boyfriend's brutal honesty? My, female, 35, sister, female, 27, started dating one of those brutally honest guys few months ago. He can be quite rude and make backhanded comments about me and the family sometimes, which is bothersome. But my sister says he's not malicious, but is just the brutally honest type, and we should get used to it. I visited my parents' house to celebrate my sister's birthday, and my husband couldn't come with me because he was busy. After the party, we all sat down for dinner, and my sister's boyfriend said it was weird that my husband and I don't have kids despite being married for six years now. I was shocked that he brought this up, but I gave a short answer stating that it's because of infertility issues. He asked on which side, and I didn't want to answer, but my sister said it's on my side. I got uncomfortable as he looked at me for a second and said that maybe not having kids now is a good thing, because he thought women over 30 might produce defective babies due to age. Jesus Christ. I told him it was none of his business, but he said that he was just giving his honest opinion and that's all. I, in return, told him while maintaining eye contact, trust me, if I wanted an a-hole's opinion, I would have farted. Oh, it's oh, it's kind of lame, but good, good for you. Literally everyone at the table bursted into laughter and my sister and her boyfriend were stunned. Few seconds later, her boyfriend excused himself out and my sister followed, then sent me a text after they left saying I was mean and disrespectful to towards her boyfriend and insulted him maliciously just cause he stated his honest opinion. She also said I ruined her birthday by being petty and making her boyfriend the joke of the night in front of the family. I didn't respond but she demanded an apology via mail as soon as possible. Mom agreed that I shouldn't have said what I said and should have just ignored him knowing how he is. I think AITA but I'm not sure. Okay, first off, that's not how that final sentence should be made at all, that you're using it wrong. Second of all, no, you are not not the a-hole. Some people just like to use the brutally honest excuse to cover up the fact that they are just the biggest POS on earth. Oh, and your sister's kind of dumb too. Not the a-hole, but sister is also the a-hole for volunteering OP's private medical information when BF so rudely asked the intrusive whose side question. Yeah, it's super uncalled for for the boyfriend to ask that and for the sister to just a willy-nilly say it out loud. Not the a-hole. You are being brutally honest honest as well. He needs to keep his opinions to himself. Am I the a-hole for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad's been canceling his job applications? My son, Aiden, 23, moved back in with us upon graduating college as my husband wanted. My husband's original plan was to have Aiden live with us for free, but stay home and help with his disabled younger brother, 16. Aiden started complaining about needing money and wanted to find a job. My husband was against this and even offered to double his his allowance, but Aiden was growing tired of staying at home. So he began looking for jobs here and there for over a year, but none of his job applications came through. He'd just apply and they never get back to him. We were confused by this till recently, I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being cancelled. He'd wait till Aiden applies, then he proceeds to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. I blew up at him for this, but his justification is that he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aiden and said that Aiden has been a big help and him getting a job will affect his care for his brother. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there till he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged and said that I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than family. He also said it was huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it with him.
him. He's been giving me hell about it and is calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish and self-centered. He said I needed to see and understand why he did what he did. No, not the a-hole. If anything, your husband is a freak, honestly. He's trying to just immediately push your other son into indentured servitude to take care of your younger one? No, you don't get a free babysitter, especially if you're doing it like that. Not the a-hole. Your husband is abusive to Aiden and honestly creepy in his manipulations and insistence on Aiden being Dobby the house elf. Not the a-hole. Hopefully Aiden has changed his password and maybe even set up a second secret email for job applications in case Daddy Dearest manages to access the old one in some way. Not the a-hole. What your husband did to Aiden is inexcusable. Just how does he expect Aiden to take care of his brother down the line if he has never had a career or any savings? Am I the a-hole for not giving my sister her wedding dress because she didn't invite my underage son? I, 40, male, have a sister, 30, female, who was getting married in a week. The groom proposed to her a year ago at a family dinner that left everyone speechless, but very happy for them as they are longtime companions. During this dinner, my sister asked my son, 17 male, to make her wedding dress. My son has always loved design and fashion. He took technical courses in these areas and sewing, and even his friends keep asking for his clothes because they are so beautiful. He agreed, but said that he needed time and that he would need her opinion constantly. At first, my sister was very annoying. My son drew about 50 dress designs in a month, and she only liked one, which he continued with. He sewed it with great quality fabric, which I paid for as I wanted to get involved in a certain way. For five months, he made several adjustments to suit her wishes, as she always complained about something. After a while, he arrived at the final model, and it was just amazing. My mother cried seeing my sister in the dress, and I confessed that I almost got emotional too. The problem was that last week my son came to talk to me about the wedding invitation that had not arrived for him but for other family members. I thought maybe he didn't need one but it still felt weird. I messaged my sister raising this issue and she replied that she didn't want any underage people at her wedding because there would be alcohol. I asked if she was going to make an exception for my son but she cut me off and said no. There are no children in our family. My son is the only minor so I didn't see any sense in this rule for for family members. And to make matters worse, my son was very sad and cried because he spent months on this dress and couldn't go to the wedding. I was very upset and told my sister that she should look for another dress as soon as possible, and she would no longer wear the one my son made. She called and yelled at me, saying I was being unreasonable and that I couldn't do this. My mother called me saying I should deliver the dress and follow the rules, but I didn't and hung up on her. Because of this, the family is divided. Many agree with me and condemn my sister's actions saying she could only make an exception, but another part says I'm unreasonable and I'm spoiling her big day. I don't think I'm being wrong, but just rational and paying her back in kind. So am I the a-hole? Yeah, no, open and shut case. Your sister asked him to make the dress. He is allowed to be at the wedding. You are not the a-hole. Your sister is crazy. Not the a-hole. He should go and wear the dress. Better yet, show up at the wedding and burn it. So your sister can't have children at her wedding, but you use your son as child labor to make her wedding dress? She's the a-hole. Well, if he's not invited, he doesn't need to give a gift. She should pay for the dress, and if she doesn't, you're not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for barring my husband from the bedroom tonight? So, here's the situation. Me, nurse, working 50-ish hours a week in pediatric ICU. Cry at least once a week because that shit is hard. My salary pays our bills. All of them. Husband, 25, male. Has a degree, but isn't looking for a job. Works two days a week at the grocery store. Spends most of his time playing League of Legends. By the way, all events here are in accordance with COVID legislation. Today was supposed to be a good day. I had been begging my husband to swap his Saturday shift to literally anything else so that we could have days off together. We haven't had a weekend together since our wedding 18 months ago. Today was supposed to be our first Saturday off together. We were going to go to an animal sanctuary. He starts the day by going to breakfast with his best mate, leaving before I even wake up. I wake up around 9 and realize he is not home. Call. He says he's helping his mate set up some lights and that the weather is too rainy for the animal sanctuary anyway. He gets home at one-ish, lies around, plays some video games, promising we would cook dinner together tonight, leaves again at five to help the same mate with something else. I go grocery shopping. I don't drive because of medical issues, but I walk there and back in the rain. I get home, realize I've left my keys inside, call husband, knowing he's five minutes away. He says he will leave in a minute. I sit in the rain and the cold. Southern Hemisphere. 45 minutes later, I call again. He hasn't left yet. 
that. He finally agrees to come and let me in the house, so he drives up, presses the clicker to let me in the garage, and leaves again. At 10, I, I called to see where he is. His friend answers, says he is driving out to do something an hour away. It's 10.30. I am going to bed. I have sent him a text that I am upset and don't want to speak to him tonight and would rather he left me alone. As far as I'm concerned, if he can't value me more than his best mate on the first day off he and I have shared in a year and a half, he can go sleep in his bed instead. By the way, his friend doesn't work, so they hang out all the time when I'm at work. He is going to be upset, and he is going to tell his mate, and his mate is going to tell him I'm being a b- Am I the a-hole? Once again, what can I say other than you're not the a-hole? Clearly, your husband is a massive loser. If he can't spare one day of his five-day weekend to spend with his wife, who is currently being a frontline hero, he can go live with his friend, in my opinion. You don't need Reddit. You need marriage counseling. I feel like that can apply to a lot of these. Not the a-hole. You deserve a better husband. Am I the a-hole for not waking up my girlfriend for her exam after I overheard her calling me a little bit. My girlfriend has online summer courses and she had an exam for one of them this morning. I usually wake her up for pretty much everything because she sleeps through her phone alarm no matter how long it buzzes or how many she sets. She has joked that I'm her butler before and within the context of a relationship, it's okay, so I don't mind. Obviously, I want to love my partner and try to make her life easy. However, last night she was chatting with her friends and she thought I couldn't hear. She was bragging that I'm her little bit and I do everything for her when she tells me to, etc. It really hurt my feelings because they were making comments like, good, put him in his place, and she was agreeing. She specifically said, yeah, I'm not worried about tomorrow because the b will make sure I'm up and he'll probably have breakfast ready for me too. I went to bed pretty hurt by it, and come morning, I didn't bother to wake her up when her alarm started to go. She usually only gets up when someone physically shakes her, but I let her turn off her alarm and she slipped back into sleep and I turned around and went back to sleep too. When she woke up, she was yelling at me, saying I'm an a-hole and I've cost her her exam and I'm a piece of crap for what I did. Not the a-hole. Your girlfriend sounds incredibly abusive. You shouldn't have put up with that. Don't wait for any more red flags. Get out of this now. You deserve better. Not the a-hole, but you should just leave without notice. <laughs> Not the a-hole. She didn't respect you. Why would you do anything helpful for her? Also, get out of that relationship. Am I the a-hole for literally showing Showing my dad how he behaves every day when he gets home from work. My, female 16, father, male 46, is the breadwinner while mom is a stay-at-home mom. She handles everything around the house like cooking, mopping, washing, laundry, etc. I'm the oldest and I try to help, but really there's only so much I can do while my dad just gets home at the end of the day and literally complains about everything. Like how the carpet isn't clean or how the food is cold. As a result, I'd have to listen to a huge argument daily between him and mom. It's exhausting, but honestly, I think that my dad is in the wrong here. I tried talking to him to get him to see how his behavior is, but to no avail. So, what I did was pick a day off for him and pretend to act like him. I put together an outfit that looked like a suit and put black tape over my lips to look like a mustache. At 6pm, I went inside the house, shouted, I'm home! Then sat next to him in the living room and started kicking my shoes while complaining about the state of the house at the top of my lungs. He glanced at me confused, asking what I was doing. I ignored him, then started yelling about the carpet being dirty, shower not ready, the kids needing to be quiet, and so on. He kept staring while mom and my siblings laughed. My youngest brother kept pointing towards me, saying, This is daddy! I then proceeded to yell about dinner, then berated my mom for not preparing it before time. My dad stopped me, and in a serious tone, asked what I was doing. I turned to him and said, What? Can't a man effing rest after working long? long hours in the most macho voice I could muster. My dad got the hint because this was the common phrase he uses daily. He went quiet and avoided looking at me. I stopped the act and told him I was trying to show him what he's like every day when he comes home from work. He said nothing, just went outside and refused to speak to me. Later, he went on about how I mocked and invalidated him. That he does work hard and me doing this was disrespectful and invalidating. Mom said it was funny, but also thought I hurt my dad's feelings and I could have gotten the message across some other way instead. Am I the a-hole? Ooh, this is, this, is, this is a bit of a thinker, huh? I will say, not the a-hole. I don't think how you went about it is the most tactful way, though it is hilarious. Not the a-hole. You held up a mirror to his behavior, and he didn't like what he saw. That's on him. I hope
hope he gets the message. This is absolutely hilarious and well-deserved, and sometimes people need to see how they're behaving reflected back at them to truly understand. Good job, not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Also, you're a delightful human. 10 out of 10. Am I the a-hole for getting upset with my husband after he told me nothing will change while I am pregnant? Throwaway account. So me, 26, female, and my husband, 28, male, who I'll call Jake for this story, have been together for five years and married for three. We've recently started trying for a baby as we both felt like that was the next step in our life together. And three weeks ago, I got a positive test back. We were really, really happy and told our families. And now my mom and mother-in-law want to throw a big baby shower for us. It was just super good news all around. Well, two nights ago, me and Jake were getting ready for bed when he reminds me to go through the house and make sure all the lights are off. Now, he can be a little lazy at times, and it has become a nightly routine for me to make sure all the lights are off that he leaves on before we go to bed. I wasn't feeling very well and asked if he could just do it since he wasn't doing anything and was literally standing by the door. He then tells me, No, this is what is expected of you every night. I was a little hurt, but I didn't want to fight with him, so I just did it. When I came back, Jake goes on this very long and unprovoked rant saying things like, Just because you are pregnant does not mean anything will change. And, You are still expected to cook, clean, and do all the chores every day because how can you be expected to be a mother if you can't handle a little work? He wasn't yelling or anything. He was talking to me quietly like I was two inches tall. I was shocked because I had never heard him say anything like this. The rant went on for about 30 minutes before I interjected and asked, well, what do you plan on doing to help me with all of this? He then got extremely defensive, saying he works his butt off at his job to provide for me and what is going to be our future children. For context, I don't work at the moment. My job was not paying enough to justify me going, so I am a full-time college student. He ended up saying that it doesn't matter how I feel physically or mentally, it is a mother's job to push through, and if he helped and babied me, I wouldn't be a good mother. I got extremely upset and started yelling, and I said that, I wish I would have known this is how you felt before I got pregnant with your baby. There was a moment of silence before he started crying, and he left for the night to stay at his mother's house. He hasn't been back yet, and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law have called me, berating me, and saying I broke Jake's heart with what I said, and I need to apologize immediately, and until I do, he isn't coming home. I don't know how to feel. So, am I the a-hole for yelling at my husband after he said he isn't helping me with anything during the pregnancy because it's a mother's job to deal with it? Once again, I must say, not the a-hole. Uh, marriage counseling? Good, maybe. Or divorce? That's always an option. Girl, get an abortion and a divorce ASAP. This man just told you who he really is, and things are about to get a whole lot worse. Run. Not the a-hole, but why TF did he start crying? Is he mentally stable? After this whole exchange, I'm gonna say probably not. Would I be the a-hole if I asked my pregnant wife to move out because she and her best friend decided to test my loyalty? Oh god, what does this even mean? My wife is pregnant with our daughter. Initially, we were really happy and excited about it, but then she started acting like a nut job. She gets angry and irritated for small things, insults me when she doesn't like the food I make, starts acting insecure and accuses me of losing attraction for her. For example, she wanted to eat chicken sandwiches for dinner last week. Well, I made chicken sandwiches. So she eats all the sandwiches, leaves me nothing, and told me that they tasted like crap. I wasn't pissed because she left me nothing, but if she didn't like them, why did she have to eat everything? When I asked her this, she told me that she was hungry. Okay, fine. She does this every time. Eats everything I make and calls it crap. I don't argue with her because I work for more than 80 hours a week and I really want to have some peace when I'm home. So, yesterday, a random girl starts at flirting with me after the gym and asked me if I wanted to meet up with her for some drinks. I rejected her and told her that I was married. And when I got home, my wife started to hug me and apologize. When I asked her what happened, she told me that her best friend suggested a test for my loyalty. So they asked a mutual friend to flirt with me and asked me out. And I passed. Yay! I'm really pissed. I'm done with her antics. Would I be the a-hole if I asked her to move out? Oh, geez. Okay, I don't really know 
about this one. Uh, yes, you would be the a-hole if you kick her out during the pregnancy. I think the best course of action is, you know, fully communicate with her, and if she can't handle it, then, you know, maybe the problem solves itself. She'll leave. Yikes. Might I suggest some couples therapy first? What she did was clearly an A move. Though, I don't think you'd be in the right to have her move out while pregnant. Not the a-hole. That is highly manipulative behavior. I hope this is just a side effect of pregnancy hormones, but if she does things like this all the time, your marriage will be in trouble. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife's friend she is too old and ugly after she repeatedly asked my 19-year-old son to take off his shirt? He was getting uncomfortable. My family had a small get-together at my house. One of my wife's friends was over. She is unmarried. I think she is 45 to 47. We aren't too close to her since she lives pretty far away. She was over our house and she started complimenting my son. My son is 19. It starts off innocent, but as time goes on, it gets more and more crossing the line. When we were out on my deck, she starts telling my son to take his shirt off. What's the point of going to the gym if no one will see it? My son is visibly uncomfortable and tries to shut her down. She repeatedly is asking and is getting more aggressive with it. I interject and I am like, hey, Kathy, I think you are a bit too old and ugly for my son. This got her upset really quickly and she excuses herself to the bathroom and starts crying. My wife goes to comfort her and then later she leaves. At the end of it, my wife is super angry with me for saying that. That I should have said, hey, Kathy, looks like you had too much to drink or something else. I told my wife that Kathy, by the way, this is not her real name, works a corporate job. She has had training on this and that she knows better. And our son was uncomfortable. He is 18 plus, but he doesn't know how to deal with an adult. Adult, let alone someone saying that in our house. I told my wife flat out that if I was to invite a guy friend and he was to ask to see our daughter in a bikini, my wife would have called the police. She says it's different. I tell her that I was way kinder to Kathy than I would have been had a guy said something like that to our daughter. And I told my wife that Kathy needs to apologize to my son before she can ever come into our house again. Overall, I think I was fair. If Kathy said it once and I said that, I think I would be the a-hole. But the fact she kept repeating it, that's why I said it. And I wanted her to get the message that yes, I am upset. That's why I included the ugly part. Alright boys, pack it up. We got another easy one. Not the a-hole. Kathy is a creep and I mean maybe you could have not called her ugly, but eh, whatever. Not the a-hole. Double standard no more. I wouldn't let her around my boy anymore. I would be livid if a husband's friend was telling my daughter the same type of things. Everyone sucks here except the son. Your friend for sexually harassing your son, you for bringing her age and appearance into the picture, and your wife for saying it's different because it's your son and not your daughter. Yeah, that is kind of a weird thing for the mom to say is, oh, it's different. Like, no, it isn't. It's still your child. Doesn't matter, male or female, they can be harassed. Not the a-hole. She should know better. You could have probably said you're acting ugly, RN, but eh, creeps feelings don't matter. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend her parents bought her house, not her? Backstory. I, female 28, have a friend, female 28, who purchased a house late last year. It's an awesome two-story house, and I've been over there plenty of times to help out with moving slash decorating and for hanging out. As mentioned in the title, her parents purchased the house for her and her partner. I truly have no issue with this, as the housing market is terrible for buyers, so more power to them for being homeowners. I recently, unfortunately, inherited my parents' house, which is three bedroom, out in the sticks. The issue, we went appliance shopping because most of that stuff in the house was 10 to 15 years old. We were standing with an employee who I had asked to recommend some smaller items, like toasters and kettles, when the employee asked if I was moving out as general chit-chat. I told him I was moving, and he asked whether I bought or rented. I told him bought because it was just easier and less awkward than telling him I inherited the house. He told me that was cool and began talking about the toasters again when my friend cut in that I had inherited my house, not purchased it. The employee went quiet and I gave her a what was that face. I was taken aback. She continued on saying, yeah, I purchased my house. I asked, does it really matter? I'm here to buy some kitchen appliances, not tell this guy my personal issues. She grinned and said, it's just for the record, which made me more confused and annoyed. You can probably see where this is going. I replied, oh, okay, then if it's just for the record, your parents purchased your house for you. The employee quickly retreated and she walked outside of the shop.
shop. I caught up with her and she said I was a massive a-hole for pointing out she couldn't afford to own without her parents' help. I returned with a very similar, my parents also helped me with getting a house too, just in a really terrible way. My partner agrees with me, saying that she's the one that opened that door. But our other friends are split almost 50-50. If you don't want the smoke, get, get, get out of the kitchen. I don't know if that's the phrase. Uh, what a, not the a-hole, your friend is crazy, because like, why, why? Why try and do that to a random employee? Not the a-hole. She doesn't get to be catty and look down on you for how you each got your homes. It seems like an odd disconnect that she feels superior about it all. Not the a-hole. Your friend started the let's tell the truth game. Not your fault if you've played along. That poor retail employee. LOL. Honestly, they're the true victim in all of this. Am I the a-hole for wearing a wedding dress at a wedding? So, my friend, 20 female, and I, 19 male, have been friends for a few years and she recently got engaged. A week ago, I got a DM from her for a small costume party she was hosting as a celebration for her getting engaged. I asked if there was a theme and she said there wasn't. I'm a cosplayer, so I had a lot of choices. I didn't want to rock up in an anime cosplay, so I thought it would be funny to go in an engagement party as the corpse bride. I arrived at her house yesterday and everything seemed normal. A few people complimented my costume and I was having a lot of fun. After 10 minutes, my friend's fiance walked out in a black tuxedo and announced this was actually their wedding. Apparently, my friend saw a video of someone doing this and wanted to do the same. He asked us all to go to the backyard for the ceremony to begin. I went straight to him. I asked him if I should quickly go home and change my outfit and that I would get back before it started. He told me it was fine since I didn't know this was the wedding. I trusted him and followed everyone outside. They got married and everything seemed good. The reception was just in their house again, so everyone just walked back inside and picked up where they left off. I tried talking to my friend and celebrating with her, but she kept making excuses to not talk to me. I assumed it was just because she was tired from the big day and wanted some alone time. I didn't bother her after that and the party soon ended. I got home and half an hour passed when my phone started getting notifications. I checked and it was my friend texting me. She was cussing me out and telling me how I ruined her wedding. I was really confused and asked what I did. That only made her more angry. She told me it was basic knowledge not to wear a wedding dress to a wedding. I reminded her I had no idea it was a wedding and that I asked her now husband if I should change and he said it was fine. She didn't respond, but I got a text from her husband. He asked why I would tell her he said it was fine. I told him he said it was fine. Then he said how I should have changed anyways and it's my fault that the two are now fighting over this. I've tried texting her that I was sorry and if I had known I wouldn't have done it. I woke up today and saw her and her husband have blocked me on everything. So, am I the a-hole for not changing out of the wedding dress when I found out it was actually a wedding? Absolutely not! No, you're totally fine. If anything, it sounds like a setup. If they wanted this to go smoothly, they would have told people, hey, this is gonna be the actual wedding, so don't, like, do anything weird, please. And also, screw that husband trying to gaslight you just so he's, like, getting brownie points with his now wife. That's insane behavior. You're fine. I love when I read a headline and instantly form my opinion, but the story completely changes it. Not the a-hole. And you're probably better off without people like them in your life. Good lord. This is what you end up with when 20-year-olds get married. Not the a-hole. Hell no you're not the a-hole. Ain't no one gonna confuse a corpse bride for a real bride. They need to lighten the hell up and recognize this is their own doing. For real, they like blindside the guests into making it, oh it's the wedding, whoa, and, and then get mad at you when you didn't know it was supposed to be the wedding? Am I the a-hole for making fun of a woman for being in her 40s and single? This whole saga started because my husband took my last name. A couple weeks ago, he got his workplace to change it, and his co-workers found out. About half of them think this is the funniest thing ever, and about half are deeply offended. Brenda is in the offended half, and has made that clear. He and I are in a group chat with his co-workers where we organize carpooling during the pandemic. It is very helpful to us, so we can't leave the chat. Since he changed his name, my husband and I have been dealing with a lot of dumb jokes in the chat, which we have been mostly ignoring. Yesterday, Brenda, his co-worker, and I got into a bit of a spat. I messaged the group asking if someone could take my husband home since I wouldn't be back from work until late and needed the car. One of his other co-workers agreed, and I thought that was that. Brenda messages the group saying, Maybe if you spent less time at work and more time being a wife, your husband wouldn't come into work with dirty shirts. I took this as a bad joke initially. My husband is a rural male carrier, so his shirts look 
look like shirts worn by someone in 90 degree heat on dusty roads. I do wash them, but there's only so much to be done. Me? I could make cleaning those shirts my full-time job, and it wouldn't do much, lol. Brenda? You won't be married very long if you keep trying to be the man in the relationship. I'd be embarrassed as a wife if I did so little for my husband. Me? Well, I work more hours and pay the bills, so I think he can oxyclean his own shirts if it's so important. Brenda? Maybe you should learn to take proper care of your husband, or you'll find yourself divorced. Me? I'll let you know when I need relationship advice from someone who is 42 and single. Now, apparently, Brenda is going around and saying that I mocked her for being single in her 40s. I don't care if someone is single in their 40s, but I think it's absolute BS that she can call me a bad wife, but I can't point out she has no frame of reference. No, you are absolutely not the a-hole. If anything, you're the hero in this story because I have a feeling a lot of people in the workplace don't like Brenda. Not the a-hole. What the heck, Brenda? Mind your own single business. Not the a-hole. I love how you responded. I can't for the life of me understand how any of his co-workers are offended over this, much less to the point they are attacking you. For real, like, why is it anybody's business? It's just a name. For gosh sakes, it's just a name. Not the a-hole. But be flattered. Brenda clearly has a crush on your husband. Also, his co-workers sound like they suck. They do bring up a good point. If anything, it sounds like Brenda's being a little pick-me here, like, oh, please, oh, I'd be such a good wife. <laughs> Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister-in-law out after she threw away most of my single-use baby products and even formula? I'm 19 female. I have a three-week-old baby girl. I do still live with my parents, but since I pay rent equally, they say I can have just as much of a say in who comes and goes from the house as they do. I've never actually taken advantage of this rule until recently enough. I have a brother who's 26 and his wife is 24. They are crunchy parents to an eight-month-old. Basically, what that is, is effing stupid. They use reusable wipes slash nappies, think formula is the epitome of evil, baby wearing, the list just goes on. I'm the complete opposite. Pacifiers, supplementing with formula due to low supply, disposable wipes and nappies. They are completely against the products I use and often give me things like sister-in-law's breast milk in bags, disposable nappies their LO has grown out of, etc. I've used some, but it's not really my cup of tea. On Monday night, my brother and sister-in-law were minding my baby for me since it was my birthday, and my baby's father, not together, very close friends and co-parents, took me to get some dinner in one of my favorite fast food places. It was great and really relaxing. When I got home that evening, my sister-in-law said that she did some cleaning and threw out anything I don't need. This immediately gave me red flags, but they were in a hurry to get out the door and left almost immediately. When I went into the nursery, every disposable nappy and wipe pack was gone and replaced with some reusable cloth ones. Same with my formula. There was eight tubs and all of it was gone. I'm not able to replace them at the moment and solely breastfeeding isn't sustainable for us. I was extremely angry and I just turned my phone off to avoid being mean to my sister-in-law. She and my brother came over yesterday to collect something they forgot and that was when I confronted her. I told her she has to replace everything she dumped. When she said she can't afford to, I said fine, just get out and don't come back until I've been reimbursed or everything is replaced with the original items. My brother thinks I'm being a massive a-hole and he's on his wife's side. Our parents think I'm being completely reasonable here, but they think telling her essentially not to come back is taking it too far. Am I the a-hole? Look, I don't know anything about parenting, I'm not gonna lie and say I do, but in this case, the financial damage done because they threw away all of your stuff? <gasps> yeah, you're not the a-hole. They just wasted all of your money. <laughs> so she saved the environment by, checks notes, throwing away all of your supplies. Makes sense. Not the a-hole. And your sister-in-law has a screw loose. Not the a-hole. Sounds like theft to me. File a police report. She will replace. That does bring a good point. There could be potential of like small claims court depending on how much the financial like loss was by losing all the product. Not the a-hole. Babies are expensive. She trashed a lot of stuff that you can't get back that your baby
baby needs. Am I the a-hole for telling my family that if they gift us money for our wedding, there will be no strings attached or we will politely decline it? I effing hate wedding culture. It's BS. My fiance and I thought we would escape that BS and money by having a small thing. Well, family started trying to throw money at us to make it bigger and more spectacular. We were surprised, but it was a good surprise. Then the demands started coming out. They wanted this, they wanted that, they wanted this person to come, these colors, dresses can't do this, this person has to be flower girl, this person has to be a groomsman, etc, etc. Suddenly, it didn't feel like our wedding, but an excuse for our families to have a family reunion. We put our foot down and said, thank you all for your kindness and generosity when it comes to our wedding. Unfortunately, it looks like we may not have been on the same page as the rest of you. When we were offered money for this wedding, we did not realize it came with strings attached. With so many requests and so many demands from people we didn't expect would think they had a say in our wedding, we have decided to give everyone their money back. Our understanding of what a gift is must be very different. If you would like to give us money without strings attached or requests or demands, we will gracefully accept it. But if you believe a gift should come with stipulations, we must regretfully and politely decline. This has caused an epic <laughs> storm, such to the point where I have people saying they will never come to our wedding. Honestly, not the worst thing in the world. That we were spoiled, we're a-holes, etc, etc, etc. My parents are rather upset about it, but hers, who never made any demands and gave us a small cash gift, said we did the right thing. We are halfway to canceling the whole party and just absconding into the wilderness to do the wedding the way we want. Am I the a-hole? Are we? Ooh, this one's, it's a little tricky. I do think you could have been a little bit nicer in your response to everybody, but overall, it is your wedding. If people are giving you money to, like, essentially reserve your wedding to have a specific thing, that's their problem, not yours. Not the a-hole. That money was not a gift. Yeah, if anything, it sounds like these people were giving you money as, like, an investment to their entertainment. That's what we call a bribe, boys and girls. Here comes the bribe. Am I the a-hole for my response to my sister's boyfriend's brutal honesty? My, female, 35, sister, female, 27, started dating one of those brutally honest guys few months ago. He can be quite rude and make backhanded comments about me and the family sometimes, which is bothersome. But my sister says he's not malicious, but is just the brutally honest type, and we should get used to it. I visited my parents' house to celebrate my sister's birthday, and my husband couldn't come with me because he was busy. After the party, we all sat down for dinner, and my sister's boyfriend said it was weird that my husband and I don't have kids despite being married for six years now. I was shocked that he brought this up, but I gave a short answer stating that it's because of infertility issues. He asked on which side, and I didn't want to answer, but my sister said it's on my side. I got uncomfortable as he looked at me for a second and said that maybe not having kids now is a good thing, because he thought women over 30 might produce defective babies due to age. Jesus Christ. I told him it was none of his business, but he said that he was just giving his honest opinion and that's all. I, in return, told him while maintaining eye contact, trust me, if I wanted an a-hole's opinion, I would have farted. Oh, it's oh, it's kind of lame, but good, good for you. Literally everyone at the table bursted into laughter and my sister and her boyfriend were stunned. Few seconds later, her boyfriend excused himself out and my sister followed, then sent me a text after they left saying I was mean and disrespectful towards her boyfriend and insulted him maliciously just because he stated his honest opinion. She also said I ruined her birthday by being petty and making her boyfriend the joke of the night in front of the family. I didn't respond, but she demanded an apology via mail as soon as possible. Mom agreed that I shouldn't have said what I said and should have just ignored him knowing how he is. I think AITA, but I'm not sure. Okay, first off, that's not how that final sentence should be made at all, that you're using it wrong. Second of all, no, you are not the a-hole. Some people just like to use the brutally honest excuse to cover up the fact that they are just the biggest POS on earth. Oh, and your sister's kind of dumb too. Not the a-hole, but sister is also the a-hole for volunteering OP's private medical information when BF so rudely asked the intrusive whose side question.
question. Yeah, it's super uncalled for for the boyfriend to ask that and for the sister to just a willy-nilly say it out loud. Not the a-hole. You were being brutally honest as well. He needs to keep his opinions to himself. Am I the a-hole for moving my son into a rental apartment after finding out that his dad's been canceling his job applications? My son, Aiden, 23, moved back in with us upon graduating college as my husband wanted. My husband's original plan was to have Aiden live with us for free, but stay home and help with his disabled younger brother, 16. Aiden started complaining about needing money and wanted to find a job. My husband was against this and even offered to double his allowance, but Aiden was growing tired of staying at home. So he began looking for jobs here and there for over a year, but none of his job applications came through. He'd just apply and they never get back to him. We were confused by this till recently. I found out that my husband was behind all the job applications being canceled. He'd wait till Aiden applies, then he proceeds to cancel the application by impersonating him and using his email. I blew up at him for this, but his justification is that he's just trying to make sure that our younger son is cared for by Aiden, and said that Aiden has been a big help and him getting a job will affect his care for his brother. I went ahead and rented an apartment for Aiden and told him to stay there till he finds a job and starts paying for it himself. Aiden was hurt upon knowing what his dad did. My husband was livid when he found out. He called me unhinged and said that I was separating the boys and teaching Aiden to become selfish and care more about a job than family. He also said it was huge decision for me to rent an apartment without even running it with him. He's been giving me hell about it and is calling me a terrible mother for encouraging Aiden to be selfish and self-centered. He said I needed to see and understand why he did what he did. No, not the a-hole. If anything, your husband is a freak, honestly. He's trying to just immediately push your other son into indentured servitude to take care of your younger one? No. You don't get a free babysitter, especially if you're doing it like that. Not the a-hole. Your husband is abusive to Aiden and honestly creepy in his manipulations and insistence on Aiden being Dobby the house elf. Not the a-hole. Hopefully Aiden has changed his password and maybe even set up a second secret email for job applications in case Daddy Dearest manages to access the old one in some way. Not the a-hole. What your husband did to Aiden is inexcusable. Just how does he expect Aiden to take care of his brother down the line if he has never had a career or any savings? Would I be the a-hole for refusing to stop cooking bacon in my kitchen due to my teenage daughter's vegan lifestyle? Dad here, old fart, loves his daughter to pieces, but I'm struggling to see eye to eye with my teenager and wife on this one. We've always been a meat-eating family. We live in the rural Midwest and bacon for breakfast is pretty much a given. This year, my 14-year-old daughter decided to go vegan and I jumped onto her support team with enthusiasm. We learned how to substitute ingredients, cook new things, try new things. I adjusted our budget to include more expensive vegan substitutes for her, etc. None of this has been a problem for me until recently. She saw me cook bacon in a pan and then I rinsed it out to load in the dishwasher. She exploded in anger. Teen years, I'm not too fussed about the anger explosion. I know she doesn't mean it and said that it was her pan for vegan food. I was completely floored and said, kiddo, this here is a family pan. Older than you. It's not your pan. She asked me to purchase her a pan that she could solely use for vegan food. I didn't want her to feel weird about food, so I said sure and ordered her a few colored ones that are only for her. The reason they're colored is so it helps me remember that I'm not to touch them unless I'm cooking vegan. That wasn't good enough. Now apparently the dishwasher is contaminated with animal product and the fridge has bacon grease fingers on it because I eat bacon and then touch the fridge. And she's asked me and her mom to completely stop eating meat at home. I don't mean I literally touch the fridge with greasy bacon hands because I wash my hands but it's clearly enough that it upsets my daughter. Frankly, I'm on team hell no. Her mom is much more amendable and strongly wants me to consider taking our daughter up on the request. My wife's reasoning is that both our parents live so close and we can eat meat products there and that she doesn't want our daughter to feel uncomfortable in the kitchen. My daughter says she is fine with cheese and butter in the fridge, but it's specifically meat products that make her feel sick. Now I'm sorry for her, but I feel like she just needs to adapt and live side by side because I'm not going to stop eating bacon in my own house. Not <laughs> Get her a special sponge she can use to wash her own dishes so she didn't have to use the tainted dishwasher. Not the asshole. She's 14. There is no middle ground at 14. My condolences as it's going to be a long winter. <laughs> Had a vegan roommate in the past. He used the fridge and dishwasher just fine. Time for a real world lesson for her. She's not always going to live with people who share her food lifestyle. She's got to learn to compromise. There is no reason to inconvenience yourselves and others because she's being a dramatic teen. Compromise. She has her own cookware in her own meat-free section of the fridge. Not the asshole. You're already being as supporting as you can. But at the end of the day, it's your house. You don't need to bend the knee to your daughter over this. Yeah, it definitely is, of course, teenagers being teenagers. Eventually, she will understand 
and get over it. Not the asshole. Am I the asshole for wearing the joke bikini my friend got me? So it was my birthday a couple months ago and I had a party. Got some gifts. My friend Mandy got me a super cute bikini. I liked it. Said thanks. She had ripped the tags off, but whatever. Anyway, went to the community pool with my roommate or bikini, got in the water. Roommate immediately is like, um, girl, I look and see that this bikini is now kind of see-through. Haha, <laughs> good joke, Mandy. Anyway, Mandy invited me over to her place to hang out with her and her BF and a few others. Most leave and we're still hanging out. I'm like, hey, what if we got in your hot tub? I go change after them and meet her BF in the hot tub. She's getting new drinks. I hop in. Immediately, he's looking at my chest. I pretend I don't notice and just make small talk. She comes out a few minutes after and just looks in shock. Eventually gets in. Uh, is that the one I bought? Yeah, I love it. I wear it everywhere. Make up some stuff about how I wore it to the beach and some party with a lot of guys and she's just like, oh, we're in the tub for 20 or 30 minutes. Eventually get out and change and she approached me after and was like, um, I'm sorry. Thought you'd notice, but it goes kind of see-through. I'm like, yeah, I know. Why'd you buy me a f***ing see-through bathing suit? She's like, it's a joke. Wait, you knew? So you just spent the last 30 minutes flashing my BF on purpose? I reply, I'm just wearing my birthday gift from her. Anyways, am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Plus, it's not your fault. He was blatantly staring at your right in front of her. Edit, because it still isn't clear to literally anyone, I'm saying Mandy has nobody to blame but herself for what happened. Not the asshole. She knew what kind of gift she was giving you. You were just getting her back in a harmless way. No one's gonna die from seeing b Now you can all have a laugh about it. Everyone sucks here. Her, for her buying you see-through clothing, and you, for basically getting naked in front of her and her boyfriend. Nah. Everyone sucks here if you squint. Her joke was just as harmless as yours. Not tasteful, IMO, but harmless and not holy. I don't see it as much as either of you being jerks, and more like a back-and-forth prank. Now you're on equal ground. Also, if her boyfriend was distracted, that's on him, not you. Obviously, it's embarrassing in the moment, but it's not going to have long-lasting effects, besides maybe on their friendship. That's all I mean by harmless. That and the fact that I don't see that what she did was any worse than what her friend did. Yeah, uh, I think it's this is an everyone sucks here moment for sure. Uh, I don't think anyone did anything that was well and good. I think it was all not malicious, but well, maybe it was malicious, but I don't know. Am I the asshole for telling my son he deserved his girlfriend breaking up with him? <clears throat> so my son had a long distance girlfriend recently for about two years. She was great. Really nice girl and we all loved her, welcomed her with open arms. She was flying here constantly to visit him like a weekend, a month, and he didn't lift a finger to go visit her. I tried talking to him about it several times and told him he should really start looking into flying over to her instead of expecting her to do all the traveling. He said no, and my wife probably had something to do with it as she constantly told him she was afraid of him flying. I spoke to them both and said this girl was great for him. She was willing to move over to our country too, but said there was one condition and that was he'd have to fly over to her country too, which is fair enough. He said no. He didn't want to fly or travel anywhere. My son was becoming lazier and lazier and eventually telling his GF and us that he was perfectly fine never traveling anywhere including holidays etc. Last week he told us she's dumped him. I went on her Facebook page as we're still friends. She wrote us an apology letter about how she's upset it didn't work out but things happen so we're on good terms. It looks like she's with a new guy already. Me and my wife have no doubt she was seeing him while still in a relationship with my son. I confess to them both that I actually agree with her decision and he should have expected it. He did not treat her properly and I hope he learns lessons for the next one because he needs to make more of an effort. I said he deserves it for his lack of effort in the relationship and for essentially just allowing this girl to spend all her money and time coming here all the time. Wife and son are very upset that I said this. Very, very upset. And my wife says I'm being horrible. Am I the asshole? I stand by what I said. Not the asshole. It's the truth he needs to hear. I'm more concerned about the reaction of your wife. Does she enable your son's laziness? Yes, lol. He's a proper mummy's boy and I just want him to grow up to be fair. He's 24 now. Not the asshole. He's been too lazy with the relationship anyway. The girl deserves someone better and your son needs to know that it takes effort to make a relationship work. Not the asshole. As Lizzo says, truth hurts, lol. Not the asshole. Your son needs to learn that relationships are about give and take. He can't do all the taking. And if you needed to be the one pointing it out, then so be it. Yeah, not the asshole here at all. Um, your wife coddling your 24-year-old son is kind of making her the asshole, if I'm being fair. Am I the asshole telling my parents to pay me back my college tuition if they want a relationship? I was raised by parents who believed religiously and just culturally in rigid gender roles. Dad should work. Mom should stay home with the kids. I'm the only girl and have three brothers. Because of their expectation I'd stay home with kids, they never valued my education, educational achievements, or emphasized things beyond domestic skills. I'm the second young and by the time I was in high school, my two older brothers had gone to the college of their choice with my parents fully covering tuition, books, an off-campus apartment, and other living expenses.
taxes. They eventually did the same for my younger brother. I was told I wasn't allowed to apply for college. I did so in secret and got accepted with the partial scholarship. I didn't tell them I was moving out until a week before I left, with essentially nothing but what a few friends gave to me that their parents bought them for college. I took engineering and had to work, take on debt, and struggle. My parents and I have barely spoken for years. I'm married now and expecting our first child, and they asked to meet up. We met at a park, and they said they were sorry if they caused me pain, but would like a relationship now. I asked them specifically what they were sorry for. They wouldn't elaborate and just said they wanted to move forward. I said that wasn't sufficient. In the end, I said they could prove they were sorry by forwarding me the $100,000 my degree and college expenses were, just like they did for my brothers. My mom burst into tears, and my dad said I wasn't being serious, and I just left. Since then, I've been getting calls from my brothers telling me I'm being immature and hurtful. I don't think so at all. Not the asshole. Hi from another engineer from a family filled with rage that she has all the talent the boys was never up to. As far as I can see, your answer to them was perfect. It was very fair, and if they have fixed their appalling bigotry issues, they would be falling all over themselves begging you to take the money. Since they clearly have not fixed their bigotry, you don't want them around your child. Never, ever poison children by allowing bigots in their presence. No exceptions. That includes your bigoted brothers. Edited to add, I have a bachelor's, master's, and doctorate all in engineering. You have no idea how angry this makes them. Hopefully, you will too, and we can all watch the bigots faint from sheer rage together. Blah ha ha Not the <laughs> oh, that's a generic, sorry you're upset, non-apology. They're just around now because they want to influence the baby. The 100k ask is fair if they have the means to pay it. Wow. I would typically say that you would be the asshole because expecting money from a family is never a good thing, but I am making an exception here. No, you're not the asshole. Being singled out like that because you are a woman is gross, and it's terribly unfair that your brother's got a free ride and you didn't for that one fact. Good on you, though, for making your own way in spite of them. Not the asshole. I'm proud of you, by the way. Despite your upbringing, you persevered. Keep staying strong and standing your ground. Not the asshole. Only showing up now to save their grandchild's soul. They just want to push their crap onto the next generation. I don't see a way how anyone could see that this person is the asshole, because this person is definitely not the asshole. Am I the asshole for sleeping naked on top of the covers to teach my flatmate's GF a lesson? This should be good. New to Reddit, please bear with. So I, 21 guy, live with my childhood best friend, 22 also guy, and have done so for two years now. Up until last week, things were perfect between us. However, he recently got a new girlfriend, 23 lady, and she honestly seems absolutely great except for one thing. She seemingly has a complete aversion to knocking. She and I have quite a lot in common and I actually like spending time with her. However, it bugs the hell out of me when she just barges into my room without knocking first. Now, she's never walked in on me doing anything untoward. I'm usually just chilling on my bed or studying at my desk. However, on at least seven separate occasions now, she's done it first thing in the morning to ask if I want coffee. I sleep naked. Every time prior to the last one, I've been under the covers and she hasn't seen anything. I always point out that she could have and she just giggles and says, but I didn't. When she stayed over last week in order to make my point, I intentionally slept on top of the covers. Sure enough, she barges in at 7 a.m., begins to ask if I want coffee, and sees my you-know-what. She immediately backed out of the room and didn't speak to me for the rest of the day. My mate later pulled me aside and said I was bang out of order, accused me of deliberately exposing myself, and pointed out that I'd threatened to do it before. I literally just said, okay, but what if I had no covers on and you saw everything before? They're now framing this to others that I'm some sick creep who intentionally got naked and lay in wait of her because that's how I get my rocks off. And I'm kind of seeing how it came off that way. Am I the asshole for doing this? Not the asshole. She knew it was a risk when she barged in. How is she not the pervert? Also, have you considered getting a lock? Everyone sucks here. She needs to respect privacy, but yeah, you knew full well what she would do, and rather than talk to your friend like an adult about how uncomfortable it makes you, you knowingly and deliberately expose yourself to her. Edit, a lot of people have replied asking how it's deliberate, and I've said it a few times, but he knew she'd see him naked. He was exposed where he had previously not been exposed, and knowing she entered his room without knocking, he knew she would see him naked. His intent was that she see him naked. Edit too. I think it may seem like I don't think she's as in the wrong, but I think she's more in the wrong. But why she sucks is obvious and requires little explanation. Spending more time explaining why I think he sucks too is necessary and may have given the false impression that I think he's more wrong. My apologies for not making that clear in the first place. I hadn't expected for this to get more than almost no attention. Everyone sucks here. Might be that I'm the minority here, but everyone in this is the asshole. Her for not being a decent person and knocking, the BF for not explaining the rules of the house and generally letting this stuff happen, and you for being so petty as to deliberately expose yourself to your friends to make a point. I get your thought process and all that, but there were several other things that you could have done first instead of that. I mean, you did this intentionally, so she would see you naked. That was your goal, even if the reason behind it was to punish her and not for sex reasons. So they're not entirely wrong. Everyone sucks here, but they suck a lot and you only suck a little. Yeah, definitely you you made the big jump there, buddy. I probably wouldn't have done that. I would have talked to my friend, my childhood best friend, but no, you expose yourself to somebody without their consent. So I think everybody does suck here. Am I the asshole for telling my girlfriend to shut the up after she insulted my sister's thighs? I'm 30 and my 12-year-old sister is living with me right now because mom and pops are vulnerable, so it made more sense for me to
to care for my sis for the time being. She is really a great kid, and TBH, I feel in a lot of ways she's like my own kid because my mom and dad don't speak English, so I kind of had to raise my sis in ways that they couldn't. Hard to explain, but I'm sure anyone with a secondary culture will get what I mean. My mom and dad are great parents, but having an English-speaking person to guide you through stuff when you live in an English-speaking country is invaluable, IMO. And my sister trusts me with stuff she won't necessarily trust my parents with. Anyway, my girlfriend was FaceTiming me, and my sister walked past in shorts and a t-shirt because it's hot. My GF waited till my sister had left the area, but not the room, and made a face and said, maybe feed her less OP, her thighs are kind of chunky. I saw Red and told her to shut the f*** up. This came out of my mouth, and immediately ended the call. My sister is a bit chubby, but for fuck's sake, who says stuff like that about a 12-year-old girl? Literally everybody I know has been texting me that I'm a POS boyfriend and that how can I disrespect my girlfriend like that? I'm expecting an apology from her, but to my shock, everybody is expecting me to apologize. So Reddit, am I the Not the 12-year-old girls are incredibly vulnerable to body image issues. You're absolutely right to shut down such comments immediately. Not the asshole. Throw the whole girlfriend away. Family first. Are you the asshole for telling your girlfriend to shut the up after she insulted your 12-year-old sister's thighs? Think about this. She insulted a 12-year-old. She is either a mean girl or she is jealous of your sister slash relationship with your sister. Neither optic looks good. So, not the asshole for telling your ex-girlfriend to shut the up for insulting your sister. Everybody sucks here. The amount of red flag, hope she's your ex, and so on are typical of Reddit black or white replies. What she said was likely directed at OP alone and not for the little sister's ears. It could have been a poor attempt at concern or equally a mean-spirited jab. We don't know because we have no tone of voice, facial expression, or any other communication tools to judge. OP definitely overreacted though, and she put her foot in her mouth. This last guy is dumb. <laughs> That's not, you don't, there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for, for insulting a 12 year old when you're in your 30s. Messed up. They're the <laughs> Am I the <laughs> for telling the girl who kissed my boyfriend for a play that she is desperate and pathetic? I, 19F, study drama at uni, and my boyfriend is on the same course. My boyfriend is a really good looking guy, but he doesn't seem to know it. He gets a lot of attention from girls, and for the most part, doesn't seem to get that they're flirting with him. I'm not generally annoyed by this and never really say anything. However, there's one girl in our class, let's call her Victoria, who is obsessed with my boyfriend. She goes out of her way to be paired with him in group activities. For example, if the professor picks groups by numbering us one, two, three, she will move herself to be in the same number as him. And she recently stepped down from a main role in a play we're doing so she could be in a more minor role simply because this character has a romance with my boyfriend. I know this is the case because I heard her say to her friends that she thinks he's hot and whatnot. I've never said anything to her about it because she seems pretty insecure, always complaining about how she thinks she's ugly. And I don't see it as a big deal because my boyfriend doesn't care. However, we recently performed the play and had a small after party where she got slightly drunk and was bragging about how she definitely felt something when they kissed in the play and she's going to ask him if he felt the same. I rolled my eyes and again ignored it until she actually went up to my boyfriend. She was a little bit drunk and when she went up to him, I was there too. Victoria started saying that she knows he must have felt a spark. He's a really good kisser, etc. I snapped and sort of shouted at her that you sound incredibly desperate going after somebody else's boyfriend. You're pathetic if you think a stage kiss means you should be together. She looked super embarrassed and walked away and I later heard she'd gone home crying. I feel like a dick because she's obviously insecure and whatnot and her friends haven't stopped calling me a dick since. Am I the asshole? Edit. She 100% knows that I'm his girlfriend. I have heard her talking about me being his girlfriend before. Not the asshole. She took it way too far. Approaching him about it was out of line. Not the asshole. She was delusional and you brought her back down to earth. Needed to happen. You tried to ignore it, but she kept pushing. Everyone sucks here. This entire thing is very teen. Hopefully you'll both grow out of it soon. Everybody sucks here. You're teenage drama students, so I guess I shouldn't be surprised that there's so much teenage drama here. But come on. You couldn't think of a more appropriate way to address this woman's relentless and obvious daily pursuit of your boyfriend over the course of weeks, if not months, than shouting at her at a party in order to humiliate her? You couldn't, I don't know, at any time just say, hey, I don't know if you realize, but boyfriend and I are in a committed relationship. You all need to grow up. Yeah, yeah, probably everybody does suck here. Definitely didn't have to take it that far. I know Victoria is, is definitely in the wrong, but so are you. Am I wrong for using flashcards to explain to my brother and his wife why they can't bring the rainbow baby to my wedding? Am I the a-hole for refusing to tell my husband the gender of our baby after he skipped going to the doctor's appointment with me? Am I the bad guy for walking out of the airport when I saw my husband's mom standing there with her luggage? I, F30, don't have the best relationship with my husband's mom. Since day one, she tried to make remarks and compare me to her. Huh? She then tried to get on my good side and started overly praising everything I do, and sometimes even copying me, like that one time when she literally dyed her hair purple, just like mine. And when everyone pointed out how ridiculous she looked, she actually blamed me and accused me of trying to make a joke out of her. So, anyways, my husband and I took two weeks off work to go visit some places out of the country. Tourism, in other words. Thing is, I was the one who saved up for and arranged for the trip. My husband was responsible for 
for booking the tickets. My husband's mom wanted to come along and threw temper tantrums when I said no. She called, texted, sent people to talk to me into letting her come, even threatened to call the police and make some complaint up to get us to stay if she can't come. My husband said we should just take her, but I told him he was wrong to tell her about the trip in the first place. He gave me an ultimatum, said he wouldn't go if she can't come, and I told him I'd gladly call his bluff, which made him take his words back and say, fine, I will tell her to stop it because we won't take her. Things got quieter, suspiciously quieter. The day of the trip came and we got to the airport at 2 p.m. My husband was walking ahead of me and was looking left and right like he was looking for someone. I asked him, but he didn't respond. He led me into the waiting area and first thing I saw was his mom standing there with her luggage. I froze in my spot. I felt a cold wave washing over me and I was fuming inside. She and my husband were hugging. That's when I quietly turned around and started walking towards the exit. My husband followed me while shouting at me to stop. He tried to stop me, but I told him off the harshest way possible. He tried to say that I was overreacting and that his mom was there anyway and I should let it go and not mess the trip up for us. I told him that he and his mom could still go and that I was going home. I went home and sobbed into my dog's fur for several minutes. Turned out he booked her a ticket without me knowing. An hour later, he came home yelling and raging about how pathetic and spiteful I was to walk out and go home and ruin the trip last minute. I told him he caused this to happen. He said that I was being so hard on his mom, it's ridiculous. I refused to fight anymore, but he kept on berating me and then called my family to tell them that the trip was canceled and that it was because of me. My family said that I shouldn't have ruined it for myself and should have sucked it up and done my best to enjoy. Did I really overreact? You're married to a man who was already married to his mother. You're the other woman. She was planning on sharing the hotel room and bed with y'all too? Not the bad guy. And run. Not the bad guy. You actually helped him and his mom to have the romantic getaway they really wanted. I mean, plain and simple. You gotta leave this guy. Because I wouldn't want, like, my spouse to have a weird relationship with their mother like that. I wouldn't want my spouse picking their mom over me in a situation like that. That's terrible. Not the bad guy. Am I in the wrong for storming off from my sister's wedding after she deadnamed my son? I'm a 45-year-old single father of three. Their mom died 10 years ago. I have three sons, 17-year-old Andrew, 15-year-old Connor, and 14-year-old Max. Connor was born female. He is trans. He came out as trans five years ago and has now socially transitioned, not yet physically. My sister, 38F, just got married. Me and my sons were also invited. My family has known that Connor is trans for two years now. Some have adjusted well and some not so much. My sister is pretty indifferent about it. Her wedding was super well organized to the last detail. She wanted all the men to wear a shirt and tie and then women sundresses. I texted her a picture of our outfits the day before the wedding and she said, where's Naya's dress? I was a bit surprised and I told her not to dead name my son and that he'll be wearing a shirt and tie like the rest of the men there or we aren't coming. She said fine and that was it. At the reception, my sister got mad that Connor was wearing a tie but didn't say much after that. When we sat down at our table, the card Naya, I went to my sister and she said she used their real name. I told her me and the boys are leaving and she told me, don't you dare cause a scene at my wedding. Naya can be a guy any other day. I called her a bigot and we left. My family says I ruined her wedding. With an attitude like that, I'm sure the sister will be a bride again before long, so ruining this wedding was no big issue. You stood up for your kid. That makes you a wonderful parent. Definitely not in the wrong. Yeah, I mean, how could you be in the wrong here for standing up for your for your trans son? Like, that's, ugh, gives me the freaking heebie-jeebies, man. Like, I am, I am physically disgusted by that woman, you know? It's just gross. Trans rights, by the way. Am I the jerk for silently getting up and walking out of the restaurant during New Year's Eve dinner after I was told to pay for everyone at the table? My in-laws? I, F32, recently inherited a good amount of money from my mom. I keep the money in a separate account as I still haven't decided what to do with it and I didn't want it to go to waste. I noticed my husband constantly bringing up the inheritance money and making countless suggestions as to how I should spend it. Another thing is that he expects me to pay for nearly everything the past couple weeks. For New Year's Eve, my husband and I met up with his family at a restaurant to celebrate. It was going fine until I found out that I was expected to pay for everyone at the table. My husband's mom joked about paying for dinner out of my inheritance pocket, which made me livid, but I showed no reaction. Just silently paid for my own food and drinks, then got up and made my way out of the restaurant. They were shouting after me like a crowd, and my husband tried to get me to come back, but I drove home. He got back at 3 a.m. yelling at me, saying I was pathetic to get up and walk out on him and his family after they relied on me to pay for their food, and thought I was gracious enough to do it, but they were wrong. He said I humiliated him and family, and that what I did was an attempt to get back at them for not being able to help mom when she was sick. Not true is all I'm gonna say. He is mad and is saying that I caused a huge rift between his family and me, when it wouldn't have hurt me to pay for the celebratory dinner. Am I the jerk? So let me get this straight. Your mother died after an illness, and the thing your in-laws take from this is great. Now she can pay for everything. Yeah, not the jerk. They act like you won the lottery and not buried your mother. I'm sorry for your loss. Oh, in-laws, in-laws, in-laws. So many horror stories about the in-laws. Why are adults, why are older adults so bad? Why are old people so wrong? Am I in the wrong for switching to regular milk to prove my lactose intolerant roommate keeps stealing from me? Me and two other guys share an apartment together and we split all the bills. The only thing we don't split costs on is groceries. Everyone is in charge 
of buying their own food, and we don't touch whatever doesn't belong to us in the fridge. We put our names on everything so no one gets mixed up. The issue has been going on almost a year, and I'm sick of it. One of my roommates, R, keeps stealing my food. I get home from work, and containers with my leftovers are sometimes missing. They have my name written on it. Or my stuff finishes too quick. A gallon of milk, for example. I buy almond milk because I like taste. But it seems to finish after a week, even though I've only drank once or twice. I confronted R about this lots of times, and that's caused a lot of arguments. He outright denies it and tells me I'm crazy, even though it's so obvious. My other roommate and I carpool together because we both work the same early morning shifts around the same area, so I know it's not him. It's always after we get back home, and R's already left for work, that I notice my food's gone. My roommate also had a similar problem, but not as often as I do. I'm guessing because R doesn't like what he buys. The funny thing is, R buys a lot for himself, and is even more stingy about his food. He will literally point out what's his when he comes back from grocery shopping and tell us not to touch it. Last week, my milk was nearly empty again, and I got fed up. I went to the liquor store and bought regular dairy milk. I drank what was left of my almond milk and refilled the gallon with the one I bought. This was to catch slash prove R is the one stealing since he's lactose intolerant. The next day, Saturday, we get back from work and R is pissed. He yelled at me that he was stuck in the bathroom for 40 minutes with diarrhea because of my milk. He was using it to make a shake. I only responded, so <laughs> then you're the one who's been stealing. He freaking exploded. Yeah, he admitted he sometimes was drinking my milk and eating my food, but he was more mad that I switched milks than the fact that he was caught. I told him I wouldn't have done that if he'd just stopped taking my stuff from the fridge or at least told the truth instead of trying to make it seem like I was making it up. My roommate backed me up and thought it was kind of funny he got payback for stealing from us. It's a little tense right now, and my roommate told me R is trying to convince him to agree to kick me out. Little does he know, we're both looking to move somewhere else because we're tired of his stuff. I told some buddies what happened, and a few think I was an a-hole for that. I feel like I'm not in the wrong here. He was taking my food and not even owning up to it, and I wanted to prove it. Does that make me the bad guy? Not the bad guy. As you said, if R wasn't stealing your food, he wouldn't have had a problem. Not the bad guy. There's a saying in Finnish that translates to greedy ones have a sh end. And I think that's what happened here. I agree. Like, how could you possibly be the bad guy in that situation? Your friends sound like bad friends. Am I in the wrong for giving my ex-wife a large amount of money I won despite the anger of my girlfriend? I recently won a F you amount of money. I won't say exactly how much, but it's in the millions. It makes me feel funny, even typing. It's enough to change the life of myself and my family. My ex-wife is the mother of my two kids. She is an amazing woman and good to the bone. We divorced six years ago because I had an affair with my current partner. I was in a low place in my life and I messed up. She was in incredible pain, but like a freaking saint, she allowed me to still see our kids, who mean the world to me. Allowed our divorce to be as pain-free as possible, despite the fact that I know she was hurting. She still is close friends with my parents. She is respectful to me, although she refuses to talk to my girlfriend. She was actually the first person I phoned after my mom and pops after I found out I won the lottery. She was pleased for me, joked that I could take kids on a world round trip, and that was that. Nothing else. As soon as I won, I knew I wanted to give her a significant amount. I still love her, she's the mother of my babies, and I feel like this is some small tiny way I can show her that I'm not a complete mess up. She deserves to know that I care despite my mistakes. She also works a bad job in the public library, which pays her peanuts. She would actually be able to pursue her hobbies this way. Give her kids a better life between us. I haven't discussed this with my ex yet, but I have with my parents who strongly agree and my lawyer who was very surprised, but on board. Long story short, when I told my girlfriend, she was livid, screaming that I'm disrespecting her, accused me of still being in love with my ex-wife. I'm not in love with her. We've both grown apart, but of course, I still love her for being an excellent co-parenting partner and mother to my kids. My GF is threatening to break up with me, and TBH, I'm feeling incredibly relieved over the threats. I don't plan on changing my plans, but am I in the wrong? Not in the wrong. Your money, your decision. I suspect the anger from your GF is probably just insecurity given the nature of how your relationship with her started. Or it could be because of the money. It could be both. <laughs> seems like, uh, seems like that GF of yours is, uh, either a gold digger or just a bad person. Or both. <laughs> am I bad for kicking out one of my bridesmaids for showing up in the wrong dress? My 23F wedding was back on Saturday, December 31st, and I'm still getting backlash from this. So I want to know if this was an a-hole move. In the country I live in, it's currently winter, and we get a fair amount of snow, so my wedding was a winter-themed wedding. The color theme was forest green and gold. My dress was obviously white, and I chose the color of my bridemaid's dress to be forest green as well. My maid of honor's dress was black, and everyone was to wear gold accessories. I have this friend, we'll call her Cat, that I asked to be one of my bridesmaids. When we went dress shopping, and I told them the color theme I was going for, Cat immediately expressed that she thought forest green was a bad choice. She said that she thinks it's not a flattering color, and I thought I should choose something different and more girly. I said no, because my wedding was winter-themed, and I thought the color would go perfect with a the theme. She suggested a blue, pink, or even red. I said no. But thanks for your opinion. She found out my maid of honor's dress was black and asked if she could wear black too. I said no. Only my maid of honor is wearing black. I paid for all the dresses. Fast forward to wedding day and everyone's getting their hair and makeup done and Kat shows up 30 minutes late, holding a bag that looked like it had a dress inside. I asked her what this was for. She told me it was for later on at the reception if she got uncomfortable and wanted to change after pictures. I was like, okay, cool. So fast forward, we're all dressed and walking down the stairs because the ceremony is beginning in 30 minutes and we were going to take some pictures before. Kat is the last person to come down and she's wearing 
wearing a black dress. At the time, I was preoccupied taking pictures with my parents, but my maid of honor came over to me and made me aware of the situation. I confronted Kat and asked her what was going on. She said she hates her bridesmaid dress, as the color is ugly and makes her look gross, so she's wearing black. I told her please go back and change. She refused and started walking away from me. I said, I'm going to ask her one more time, and if she doesn't oblige, I'm calling security and kicking her out. She began yelling at me to F off, so I called security and asked them to please escort her out. She started making a big scene, yelling about how I'm such a b that I can't force her to wear anything, and that I'm a horrible, inconsiderate friend. The wedding went on, and it was truly amazing. Ever since the wedding, Kat has been blowing up my phone with texts, saying some really nasty things, and asking for the money back she spent on the black dress, since it was a waste and she didn't get to wear it. I had to block her number. Some of my other bridesmaids have been giving me crap, saying that it was a little harsh kicking her out and embarrassing her like that, and that maybe I should give her the money back. Am I wrong for kicking her out? Not wrong. You paid for her dress. She decided to do her own thing. Is she gonna pay you back for the money you spent on her? Not in the wrong. You paid for the dress. She agreed to be your bridesmaid, knowing that the dress was forest green. She was a jerk here and so rude. Telling it as it is. I mean, for sure. For sure. She is so in the wrong. And that is abysmal. Abysmal behavior from a friend. Someone who is good enough of a friend to be a bridesmaid. Am I the a-hole for not letting my best friend have her wedding on my property after being uninvited? One of my 29M best friends, Carla, 31F, is getting married soon. It's only meant to be a small backyard type of wedding, but they've been planning it for a few months now. And originally it was supposed to be on my property. They wanted it because it's private has lots of open space for the reception, a nice view, and the house could be used for them to get ready and stuff. I said yes. She and her fiancé, Rick, were very happy. Thing is, Carla and I do have a history. We went out on and off in college, but decided to stay friends. Then I met my wife. We got married. Carla met Rick, and now here they are. Now, my wife knows I went out with Carla back in college, and she didn't care. Carla still went to our wedding and everything. I never knew if Rick was told or not. It's not my relationship, therefore not my business, to say anything, so I never did. Rick found out recently, and not in the best way. Not sure how, but from what I I heard from friends is that one mutual friend told him, no idea why, we used to date. Not only that, but apparently Carla said a couple years ago, she was still in love with me and when she was already dating Rick. Don't have actual confirmation if that's exactly what he was told. All Carla's told me is that Rick was told about our past and he's angry at her for never saying anything. It became quite a drama and didn't hear from her for over a month until now. She told me they're going to couples counseling and that the wedding is still on, but Rick requested that I not attend. It sucks, but I totally get why he wouldn't be comfortable. Then I asked the obvious question, where are they going to hold the wedding then. To my surprise, she said they still want it at our place. Rick said so too, and in my mind, I'm going. He doesn't want the guy who dated his fiance years ago at the wedding, but still wants the wedding at his house? My wife and I are expected to just not be at our home that weekend? And I told Carla no. They're gonna have to find some place else since we're not going to simply leave our home to them for the weekend. Not only for safety reasons, but it just doesn't make sense. Rick doesn't want me around because he's not comfortable, but is comfortable enough to have their wedding at my house? They really want their wedding here, though, and because of that, I've been bugged by not only her, but also Rick and some friends who think I'm being a petty a-hole for not letting them have the wedding here anymore. Honestly, don't think that I am. It just doesn't make sense at all to have to leave our own place for a wedding we're no longer welcome to and leaving our home totally vulnerable. Still, being accused of sabotaging their wedding and Rick believes it's the least I can do after everything. Am I the a-hole? How dare he ruin his wife by dating her years before they even knew he existed? Slash yes. <laughs> like, this is just so silly. Why, why are weddings always like this? Why are weddings so petty. When I get married, and that's, well, if I get married, <laughs> I gotta find someone who, who likes me. But if I have someone who's in my life who I think would pull something like this, they're not coming. <laughs> I'm not inviting them. I'm not doing any of it. Like, it's just, it's just so much stress and hassle, man, I tell you. Am I the a-hole for telling a social worker the real reason my sister wants a foster kid? So, this is a throwaway account. While my sister doesn't use Reddit, we have mutual friends who do. I'm a 28 female, and I have a sister, 36 female. For the sake of story, I'll just call Jane. Jane is married to Bob, and they have two kids, boy and girl. My niece and nephew are wonderful kids, and no trouble at all. They fight as siblings do, but nothing big. I love them. Now, for about two years, I did live with my sister. It was a miserable time that really affected our relationship. She saw me as free labor, money, and babysitting. Even when I managed to get a small part-time job, she demanded I hand over nearly half my pay or get out. It was hell as she took completely advantage of me. I moved out as soon as I could, and we have little contact outside of family gatherings. Now, after I moved out, she started complaining how she has no help with the kids and never gets a break. I babysat sometimes, but I have made it clear, just because I am off work doesn't mean I want an eight-hour day with my niece and nephew. Anyway, she started talking about how she wanted to foster a kid. Not a kid, but a teenager. I pressed her for more info on this. She wanted to adopt a teenager, so she has a live-in baby 
babysitter for her kids. This is her logic. I want a kid around 16 or 17. You know, someone who may have been in the system for a while. They can share a room with your nephew. She only has a three-bedroom house. Or sleep in the garage. They can help with the housework, chores, cook, and help me with my business. She bakes and sells cookies. Also, babysit the kids. So me and Bob can go out sometimes or have some alone time. They'll be so grateful for a home and won't complain. I won't have to pay them at all. And then when they turn 18, I can just sign up for another foster kid. A teenager will be so much easier than a little kid. They will be grateful just to have a roof, food, siblings if they have been separated from their real ones, and clothes. I was horrified. Told her it was a horrible idea. She didn't listen to me. She went on with it anyway. About a month ago, a social worker showed up at my apartment to ask me some questions about my sister. She had put me down as a character witness or something like that. I immediately told the social worker why my sister really wanted to foster a kid and how she treated me when I lived with her. The lady thanked me. My sister called crying, saying that she wouldn't be considered for any adoptions or fosters. The social worker told her that they felt her home and her weren't a good fit. She asked if I said anything and I told the truth. She went off on me, hung up, and we haven't spoken since. She has sent some angry texts. A couple family members are on her side. They think foster kids are effing dogs or something and would be so happy just to have a roof and would gladly do all the housework. So, am I the a-hole here? Absolutely not. You are not the a-hole. That, your sister is evil. Like, straight up. Thinking a foster kid is just some free labor shop? And I'm, I'm assuming once they turn 18, your sister's gonna want to just kick them to the curb and get them out of there. Not the a-hole. You told the truth and saved a teenager from a terrible life of being used and dumped for another, which is no way to treat anyone. It is a foster child, not a slave. That's just slavery with extra steps. For real, this sister thinks it's like, oh, go to the foster care house and just get an indentured servant. Am I the a-hole for canceling Mother's Day celebration that I arranged for my wife after hearing what she told my son? I, male, 37, have a 13-year-old son. I was a widower when I met my now wife. She has a 16-year-old daughter from another relationship. The family is often on pretty good terms. My son is the quiet one in the house. He keeps to himself a lot, but not to the point of being concerning. My wife and stepdaughter are the complete opposite. Opposite. They both encourage him to be outgoing and share activities and join gatherings with extended family. My son complained about having to be forced out of his comfort zone and having his need for space invalidated. I spoke to both my wife and stepdaughter and asked them to give him some space and freedom to spend his time however he wants. They apologized and promised to let him be. As Mother's Day was approaching, I wanted to throw my wife a surprise Mother's Day celebration. It was no longer a surprise because my stepdaughter gave her the heads up so she could prepare. Yesterday, I got off work earlier than usual to get final arrangements done. We planned to celebrate at the restaurant and invited her family there. I had the key and while I was entering the house through the front door, I overheard my wife and stepdaughter talking to my son. My wife was asking my son if he could convince me to let him stay home and not go with them to the restaurant to celebrate. I paused and decided to keep listening. My son said why and she told him that his introverted and socially inept attitude will make her family uncomfortable and will ruin the mood. He promised her that he'd be well behaved and would try to interact and socialize with everyone but she said that she wasn't buying it. He kept reassuring her but she snapped and told him that technically she's not his mom so she didn't get why he wanted to celebrate Mother's Day with her so badly. My stepdaughter threw some, I don't remember, backhanded comment and then both of them were shocked to see me standing there. Both were staring without saying anything. I told my son and his stepdaughter to go to their rooms, then told my wife that the celebration was off, cancelled. She tried to argue, asking why repeatedly, and I told her why. She tried to explain that she didn't mean it like that and that I only heard part of the conversation, but not all of it. I told her I was done arguing and the decision was already made. She yelled, asking what she was going to tell her family and said that I was making tremendous mistake towards her. I ignored her while she kept throwing tantrum after tantrum. Early this morning, she took my stepdaughter and went to stay with her folks. Not a single call or text from her so far. Situation is full of tension. I'm upset still, but more hurt, to be honest. I mean, yes, I did say I was going to have this celebration, but I thought what she said to my son was too harsh to ignore. You are definitely not the asshole here. You can't let people talk to your family that way, like, regardless of their relationship to you, wife or not. Like, you don't let somebody talk to your immediate family that way, let alone give them a gift after they do it, i.e. that celebration. Not the a-hole. She showed you who she was. Let her stay gone. Not the a-hole. Your wife and stepdaughter on the
the other hand. Yeah, those people are pieces of work from what I'm hearing. Am I the a-hole for getting my daughter a hotel room entirely for herself after her stepsisters made her sleep on the floor? My dad passed away two weeks ago. Me, my wife, Candace, and my daughter, 16, Shiloh, and her stepsisters, 19 and 17, flew to my hometown to attend the funeral. After that, we got two hotel rooms, one for me and Candace, one for the girls. While I was in the room, I got a call from Shiloh at 11 p.m. crying and sounded like she was arguing with her stepsisters. I asked what the matter was and she told me that her stepsisters insisted that she sleep on the floor. There were one large bed in the room and there was enough space for all three girls to sleep on. I asked why and she said she didn't know. I went to see what the issue was and talked with my stepdaughters about it. They kept talking but didn't really explain why they told her to sleep on the floor. They just shrugged and said, it's better this way. We're more comfortable this way. I told Shiloh to grab her things and when one of my stepdaughters asked where we were going, I told her I was booking her a hotel room. Both looked upset but didn't say anything. But they must have called their mom because she was awake when I got back and started arguing with me about giving Shiloh an entire hotel room for herself. I explained why I did it, but she said I wasted money and that Shiloh could have sucked it up for one night on the floor. I called her unreasonable for saying this, but she told me I showed the girls that I'm playing favorites and made my stepdaughter share a room while I gave my daughter an entire room for herself. We went home and Candace is still bringing it up, saying I mishandled this. She even pointed out how my stepdaughters are upset since they are not speaking to me. Ooh, this one's kind of tricky. I see what the mom is saying, that it's a little bit of a waste of money just to book a whole room for one person, but at the same time, the stepdaughters are clearly plotting something and they don't like your daughter, so I don't know. Not the a-hole. Why did the stepsisters think that this was acceptable? This ain't Cinderella. I'm glad you did what you did. Reward my daughter's bad behavior to your daughter because they are my daughters. Not the a-hole, and both your stepdaughters and wife are. Am I the a-hole for yelling at my girlfriend to stop effing eating? My, male 26, sister, female 23, runs a bakery business and she's been struggling lately to keep up with orders because she's been short-staffed. She does a lot of orders for wedding cakes that require custard or marmalade fillings, and I offered to help her out by making these fillings at home and bringing them to her so she has less work to do. Unfortunately, the past four times I've made these fillings, my girlfriend, female 24, has literally dipped her fingers into the filling jars and contaminated them because, in her words, she just wanted to try some. I've tried explaining to her that she can't dip her fingers in and contaminate the entire batch because then I have to remake it. I said she should use a spoon and take some out if she wants to try so bad, but she just pouts and says that she likes using her fingers because it takes her back to her childhood. Today, I was trying to finish some chocolate custard to send it over to my sister really fast because she was running late on a wedding cake order for an important client. I told my girlfriend beforehand to not eat the custard, and if she really wanted to, please use a spoon. I get out of the shower, and what do I see? She has her fingers in it again. I totally lost it, because this is the fifth time she blatantly disregarded what I said, and I yelled at her and told her to stop effing eating the food I'm making, because it's not for her, and she's contaminating it. She started crying and got mad at me for fat shaming her, even though I made no comment on her weight, and she has no history of weight issues or eating disorders. I I know I was harsh, but she kept pushing my limits. Am I the a-hole? I will agree, you might have been a little harsh by just snapping and yelling like that, but your girlfriend is kind of dumb, so I don't know if you're the a-hole. Your girlfriend is just not smart. Does she also wear a diaper and draw on the walls with crayons because it reminds her of her childhood? Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. She's exhausting and sounds like she's trying to sabotage you helping your sister. Am I the a-hole for giving my mother-in-law a fake copy of my house key? and exposing her on Christmas dinner? I want to preface this by saying that I, female 34, married my husband, male 37, a year ago. His mom is snoopy and annoying AF. She can't help it. That is just how she is, as my dear in-laws say. My husband and I purchased a new house recently. My mother-in-law kept pushing to get an emergency key. She promised that she only use it in an emergency, but given the fact that she had an emergency key to our old apartment and walked in on us being intimate twice, but my husband didn't think it was a big deal. I just couldn't trust her, so I just sent her a fake key after she kept pushing, and she had a smug on her face after I hand-delivered it to her. Days gone by, and on Christmas dinner, mother-in-law angrily called me out on the fact I gave her a fake copy of the house key. She shamed me for doing this in front of everyone, but in my defensive, I asked her 
her how she found out and she said days ago when she came over at four while my husband and I were out. I reminded her, didn't you promise you wouldn't use it unless there's an emergency? So you tried to get in when there was no emergency and you broke the promise you made to us. She looked red in the face and the other family started staring and some even laughed at her for the face she made. She suddenly got up from her seat and rushed into the kitchen where she had a huge meltdown, so loud the next door neighbors must have heard. Literally, I've never heard a 60 plus year old woman throw a tantrum like that. Needless to say, dinner went awkward and my husband and his sister were giving me looks. My husband went off on me in the car and said I lied and manipulated and humiliated and exposed his mom and said he wouldn't have let me get away with it had he known. We had an argument and he is demanding I apologize to his mom for my childish behavior and for ruining Christmas dinner for the whole family. Am I the a-hole? No, absolutely not. Your husband needs to wake up to the fact that your mother-in-law is a little bit of a psycho and you deserve your right to privacy where nobody's just gonna wander into your house unless you explicitly give them permission. Not the a-hole. You did expose his mom and rightfully so. She needed to be exposed. Your husband is out of his mind for enabling and encouraging his mom's demented behavior. Mother-in-law and husband are major a-holes. Not the a-hole, but you also have a husband problem. Am I the asshole for asking mom's boyfriend to stop trying to parent me? My dad died suddenly about a year ago, and my mom found this really nice guy that she started seeing. I'm 23, male, and going into my final year of college. My mom's boyfriend has two daughters, ages 15 and 13. My mom has stepped in to be a mother figure to them, and the boyfriend has stepped into my extended family, becoming everyone's favorite uncle. And while I'm glad everyone else is comfortable, I'm not. He isn't a bad guy, I'm just still grieving my father, and it feels like he's trying to replace him. He tries to set rules for me. Things like chores and curfew that my dad specifically didn't because he thought they were ridiculous for an adult. Boyfriend thinks it's only fair because I have siblings now. I think it's ridiculous to have the same rules apply because of our age differences. He's trying to get me to share my stuff with his kids. They aren't lacking for anything, but he thinks it's only fair because family. I live in the basement of my mom's house. I have since I was 15. When you come in the front door, there's a door to the basement and the stairs go into the house. So it's pretty separated. So last night I was D&Ding with some friends and got home at 2 a.m. I had nothing to do until 3 p.m. today since classes aren't until next week and my new job starts in two weeks. So this has never been a big deal with my parents. I shot my mom a text and went to bed. Tonight though, man, boyfriend flipped. I got a lecture and sent to my room and possible loss of car privileges. I snapped and laid it out for him. I told him I'm leaving the city after I graduate. I told him I'm glad my mom found a new partner, but that I am not and will not be looking for a new father figure, and he needs to respect that. I told him our relationship won't be father-son for some time, and that he needs to respect me as an adult, or that I won't want to have a relationship with him. He told my family, and they think I'm the a-hole. Am I the a-hole? Uh, no, you are not. Uh, you're 23-year-old adult, and this guy is trying to police you like you're a 16-year-old? No, no, you're not. This dude just sounds like a tool. Even if he was your real dad, you're 23 years old. Why does he give a F if you get back late? For real, you are a full-grown adult. You have your own house key, you have your own car. You you can just do whatever. Am I the a-hole for telling my brother he got exactly what he deserves when he pushed his girlfriend away for being a gold digger? My brother is a very hard-working man, and at 27, he is now very wealthy and doing well for himself. He's been with this girl for six months, and throughout the time, we have gotten close because we both like hair, makeup, and shopping. I never knew there was anything wrong with their relationship except when she texted me last week saying she would love to hang out but thinks it'll be inappropriate because her and my brother broke up. I asked her why and she said she was sick and tired of auditioning to prove she was with him for the right reasons. She went on to say that my brother is paranoid she's after his money so he would test her like one, leaving out his bank statements on their bed and getting upset when she picked it up, two, going out to a high-end restaurant he requested and leaving his wallet at home on purpose to make her pay the bill and prove she's not going out with him for money. Three, never buying her gifts and questioning her when she asked why he doesn't. I was shocked, so I had to hear my brother's perspective. We spoke and he told me everything she said was true and that there's nothing wrong with making sure his girlfriend is with him for the right reasons. He said he left his bank statements on the bed and was peeking through the door to see if she would be curious and when he saw her pick up the papers, he knew in his gut she was using him for his money. So he set up the restaurant I idea to see if she would get upset at paying
paying a $500 bill, which she was. I asked him if he thinks her being an elementary school teacher could have contributed to her being upset at a $500 bill at a restaurant he wanted to go to, and he said no. He said that the straw that broke was when she asked him why he hasn't bought her a single gift since they've started dating, when she bought him a gaming console and new rims for his car, and he knew she was just discreetly asking him to buy her an expensive gift. He confronted her and said he thinks she's with him for his money. So she said, let me do us both a favor, and dumped him and blocked him. He's upset about the gold digging b and when I laughed, he called me an a-hole. He said I would never understand what it's like being a rich man and being used, and I get that concern, but I told him if he thinks any woman will be okay with his tests and auditions, he's delusional as hell. If he doesn't want to be used for his money, he should start dating people as wealthy as him, or leave lower income people alone if he's not going to be genuine in his relationship until they pass his test. First off, you're not the a-hole. It's a reasonable reaction. If anything, it's Sounds like your brother's kind of just the mooch because he's forcing these people to buy him things. So is he really rich? I don't know. Not the a-hole. Sounds like you told your brother the truth. He sounds immature and testing a partner never turns out well. Sounds like he is the effing gold digger. Since he's racking up $500 dinners and expecting them to buy him gaming consoles and expensive rims and shit. Honestly, he's like delusional. Like who thinks that other people are the gold diggers when you're the one getting the expensive gifts? You're crazy. Am I the a-hole for not telling my dad he isn't getting the inheritance he's expecting? My mother died when I was 16. My dad married another woman two years later. My grandparents, my dad's parents, hate my stepmother. I really don't like her either. Even after my half-siblings were born, my grandparents never warmed up to her. My grandparents are quite wealthy. My father has been banking on this inheritance for a while. He has even been not paying into his retirement because he is so sure that he will inherit the millions. I just found out on Saturday that I'm getting the majority of my grandparents' estate. My father is getting a token amount of $50,000, so he can't dispute it. My grandparents made me promise not to give out any money after, and I intend to keep my word. But I do feel really guilty that my father just spends his money as it's coming in because he's relying on money he won't get. I also found out my dad is in a a lot of debt. Am I the a-hole for not telling him? Ooh, this one is a little, a little tricky. Um, I'm gonna say not the a-hole since it's really not your responsibility to tell anybody and it's more so your grandparents just kind of screwing your dad over. Not the a-hole. But your grandparents are kind of cruel for letting him keep digging a deeper and deeper hole all the while knowing what he expects. They should go ahead and tell him so he can plan accordingly. Mm, not the a-hole. I'd ask your grandpa to break the news to your dad since otherwise you'll be left with the fallout. Very unfortunate situation. Am I the a-hole for keeping my website up after being asked to remove it? Ooh, this could be juicy. Depends on what kind of website. Back in November 2018, I was arrested at work in front of my boss and co-workers. It was the most humiliating thing I've ever experienced. I later learned at the police station that I was being charged with multiple felonies. This came as a huge surprise. Luckily, I was able to keep my wits and lawyer up instead of speaking with the detective. For $13,000, which completely wiped my savings, I was able to retain a criminal defense attorney. However, it cost me everything, and I was unable to pay my bond. This resulted in me staying in jail for a total of 54 days. At a status hearing, my attorney presented video evidence of me gassing up my car three hours away from where the crimes took place, and I ended up having all my charges dismissed. When I finally got out, I learned that I had lost my job, was in the process of being evicted, and my son was in the state's care. His mother is a heroin addict, and I haven't spoken to my own parents in nearly 15 years. They wouldn't let him go to my girlfriend because they didn't consider her family. Since my release, I've learned that I can't sue the police and no one gives a shit that I was locked up for 54 days because the detective did poor investigation work. I've gone to the local press about this and was told that what happened to me happens quite a bit. They took down my info but never followed up. So what I did was create a website sharing my story. I also uploaded the police report and some other documents from the discovery. Literally the only reason reason why I was arrested was because an eyewitness said they saw me. If the detective had done his job, he could have verified that I wasn't even in town on the day the crimes took place. This is what pisses me off the most. My life was ruined because of a lazy employee. I'm writing this now because my website is now ranked number two on the first page of search results when you type in my town's name. I live in a touristy town and we attract a lot of visitors over the summer. My web traffic has more than 
quadrupled, and apparently it's gotten someone high up's attention. I received a cease and desist letter recently, which I showed to my attorney. He said sharing my experience online isn't illegal, and that everything I had stated was a fact or my own opinion, protecting me from a defamation lawsuit. Yesterday, I received a visit from two officers and the detective who had arrested me. He apologized, stating, mistakes can happen. They then talked to me about my website and asked if I could remove it. I said I would delete it on the condition that the detective leave his job and never do police work again. Suffice to say, that isn't happening. After the visit I received, I'm more pissed off than the only reason the detective apologized to me was to get me to take down my website. I don't plan to, and the only one supporting this is my girlfriend. My friends think I'm being spiteful and have suggested that I just delete it. Am I the a-hole for keeping my website up? No, you are not. You are keeping police accountable, as you should, because they get away with this all the time, according to the press that you talk to. So yeah, leave it up so people can, like, know that this is happening. Not the a-hole, but watch your back. It doesn't sound like they'd have much of a problem coming up with some BS to get you arrested again. This is very true. Definitely keep your wits about you, but it does sound like you have your attorney still, like, around, so you have good legal advice, I hope. Am I the a-hole for calling the police on my boyfriend's family? Last year, I moved in with my BF and his dad. My BF and I were in a long-distance relationship for a few years, and I moved across the country to be with him after I finished graduate school. Due to such a large distance, I opted to sell my car and buy a new one after moving. When I did this, my boyfriend helped me out by loaning me some money to help pay the down payment, but I have since paid him back. Last week, my BF's older sister, who lives in another state, came to visit and stayed in the house with us. This is my first time meeting her, and I thought she was very nice, but I didn't get to know her well. Two days ago, my BF and I were out running errands together, and his sister called him to ask when he would be back, so she could borrow his car to hang out with her friend in the town about an hour away. He told her it would be a while, and then asked if it was okay to borrow my car. My boyfriend asked me, and I told him I was not comfortable with that, and to tell her no. My boyfriend did tell her no, and I heard the entire conversation. Well, a few hours later, my boyfriend and I got home, and my car was gone. I was shocked, and my boyfriend was confused. We went into the house, and his dad informed us that he gave my BF sister the spare key to my car that was in the lockbox, because she said she needed to go somewhere. My boyfriend told him that she asked to drive my car, and that we had told her no, so he didn't understand why she was allowed to take it, and his dad said that since my BF helped pay for the car, that it therefore was partly his, which meant his sister had the right to drive it as well. I was absolutely livid, and I couldn't believe that anyone would do something like this. My name is the only one on the title, insurance, etc. I am the sole owner. My BF told his dad to call her and tell her to bring my car back immediately, and said she would be home soon. Well, after two hours, I called the police and reported my car stolen because I was worried that if it got damaged or something, then I would be forced to pay the repairs, even though it wasn't my fault. My BF's dad and sister were pissed about this, and they accused me of trying to get them arrested. They are now demanding that I apologize to them and tell the police that it was all a misunderstanding, but I really don't want to, because I feel like they've tried to take advantage of me. My boyfriend agrees with me, but he even said he thinks calling the police to report my car stolen may have been too far. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It wasn't a misunderstanding. She straight up stole your car. If she had gotten arrested, she'd have no one to blame but herself. Also, considering what an a-hole your BF's dad is, you probably should look into moving out as soon as you can. Not the a-hole. She asked to borrow your car, and you said, no. She took the car despite you saying no. She stole your car. You reported her for stealing your car because again, she stole your car. Don't back down or I predict this sort of thing will happen more in the future with your sister-in-law and father-in-law. Not the a-hole. The dad and sister are thieves and FAFO'd. If they get arrested, yay. Do not apologize. Do not retract the police report. I just want to be nosy. What's your plan? Because you know you're getting kicked out after this, right? Not the a-hole. If they don't want to be accused of stealing, then maybe they shouldn't take someone else's property without permission. Am I the a-hole for getting a pregnancy craving during a party? I, 29 female, am pregnant with my boyfriend Sam, 32. Sam and I went to a party for his family. No momentous occasion, just a normal family get-together. During my pregnancy, I have had intense craving. While we were at the party, I told Sam I was craving a slushie, about 30 minutes away. We had just arrived about 20 minutes prior, and he said to give it him a little while, and we'd go get one. After about 30 more minutes, I said it again to Sam. He said, fine, get in the car. On our way, we got into an argument, and he thinks the craving could have waited a couple hours. He's now mad at me. We have to leave the party early. We see his family two to three times a month, sometimes more, and I don't think it's a big deal to leave when I have a craving. Am I the a-hole? Thank you, everyone. I get it. I'm the a-hole. But I can't handle the death threats in my inbox, so I'll be deleting this account off my phone. Is there a word for pregnant women that's synonymous with bridezilla for brides? There should be. You're the a-hole for not being able to wait an hour longer. You're the a-hole. You don't have to have everything you crave during your pregnancy the second it pops into your head. You could have waited. Also, why couldn't you go and get it yourself if you wanted it so badly? Why did he need to go with? 
You're the a-hole. I've had two kids. I get cravings. But you don't get to demand that your BF leave a get-together 20 minutes after you've driven 30 minutes to get there. Yes, you put it off, and you were oh so not patient for another 30 minutes. SMDH. It's a big deal. And honestly, seems like a total power play. I would really consider how long he's going to stick around for this kind of disregard for him and his wants. You're the a-hole. Just because you get a craving doesn't mean everybody has to drop everything to accommodate you. If you don't get the slushy, you'll live. Even in such a short post, you come off as childish and entitled. I've got five offspring. There's nothing you can tell me about cravings I haven't experienced. You're the a-hole. Cravings are not an immediate, oh my god, must have it now or I'll perish need. Grow up. Would I be the a-hole for not attending my brother's birthday party because I can't bring my dog? I, 28F, have a three-year-old German shepherd, Lou, who is the sweetest dog I've ever met. She's very cuddly and loving once she's gotten used to you. However, she was abused as a puppy and has separation anxiety. We've been working with a professional trainer and she's been making improvements, but currently leaving her home alone for more than an hour simply isn't possible. My brother lives 45 minutes away. It's hard to gain her trust, so getting someone to watch her on short notice is nearly impossible. The last time I visited my brother, 39M, his wife, 42F, stepped on Lou's tail and quite obviously it hurt. She didn't bite or even try to do so, but she barked quite loudly before running to hide behind me. I asked my sister-in-law whether she was alright and she said she was, so I didn't think anything else of it. After all, she'd known Lou for almost two years before the incident. But my brother invited me to his birthday party next weekend and he told me to leave Lou at home and when I asked for the reason, he told me sister-in-law thought she was too aggressive to be around the guests. She isn't, but it's their house, their rules, and I want to respect her wishes, so I simply called my usual dog sitter, who told me that unfortunately, they weren't available. Anyone else who has watched Lou in the past will also be at my brother's party, so I don't have anyone to watch her. I told my brother I could either A, bring Lou and keep her on a leash at all times, or B, take Lou with me and take turns with my mom walking her around the neighbor so I could be able to stay a bit without his wife having to face my dog, or C, come over with Lou in the car to congratulate him and bring over his present, but leave shortly afterwards as I don't want her to be alone for the car for more than 15 minutes. He told me that he didn't like any of these options because his wife didn't want my aggressive dog on their property, in their driveway, or in their neighborhood in general. I apologized and told him if that was the case, I wouldn't be able to come at all. He has told me he's disappointed, but especially my sister-in-law has been bombarding me with texts about how he's selfish for putting my dog before my brother, and that I was an a-hole of a sister to do that to him on his 40th birthday. I think I've proposed reasonable enough compromises, edit, and because all of them were declined, I don't see what other options I have left except for staying home. But in the end, I'd still like to hear the opinions of unbiased internet strangers to be sure. Not the a-hole. Your dog is preventing you from attending some social event, and if that is how you want your life to be, then it's only up to you. Sucks for your friends and family, but that's your decision. You cannot be forced to abandon your pet, but you cannot force people to be around him. Not the a-hole. If they don't like any options you gave them, they shouldn't expect you to attend. Not wanting the dog in their neighborhood is a bit over the top. I know you love your dog, but you can't leave it alone for over an hour. That's a big problem. You are making your life revolve around the dog. That should add to your life, not take things and people away from it. Please get help from a trainer to help your dog overcome its separation anxiety. Not the a-hole. Next time your sitter is available, leave the dog with them and go out to do something for your brother's belated birthday and give him his present. There. Simple. Not the a-hole. You were invited to the party and you can politely decline to go to a party. I've not been on vacation for four years because I have a large house dog. She doesn't do well in hot weather and she has separation anxiety for me to be gone longer than 10 to 12 hours. She's okay with my in-laws but starts to hunt for us a few hours after. So we simply don't go if we can't take her. Dogs are a commitment that you sign up for. Am I the a-hole for sending our son away after he revealed to his sister's friends that she has dentures? My husband and I have a 14-year-old daughter and a 16-year-old son. When our daughter was eight, she developed a very rare mouth infection that just absolutely devastated her teeth and gums. She ended up losing all her teeth in both sets and had to have some corrective work done just so she could have regular dentures. Obviously, this was very traumatic for her, and she's still in therapy to help cope to this day. Our daughter is very understandably self-conscious about this, and none of her friends knew about them. In fact, nobody besides her doctor and dentist know outside the family, and she doesn't want people to know. She's very worried about people finding out, and won't even take her teeth out in front of the rest of us. She's worried someone will see. Her and her brother had a good relationship until he did what he did last week. He somehow recorded her taking out her teeth without her noticing, and then showed all her friends when they were over. Not only have they all turned on her, but half the school is teasing her non-stop, and she even had to change her phone number because dozens of kids were texting her the most vile things imaginable. I've never been more ashamed of one of my children until that moment. I don't know where we went wrong raising him, but apparently he thought it would be a funny. After I kicked out her friends, who were mocking her and helped her through a panic attack, I called my father to pick him up and told him to pack a bag and get out. He's been staying with my parents two towns over. They didn't know what happened until two days ago. That came up because driving him to school was becoming a hassle and they wanted to know what was up. When I explained, they were disgusted, but still wanted to know if they could bring him home. I asked them if they'd take care of registering him for school in their town and they agreed, but were shocked. My husband and I talked and we just cannot have him here. My sister hates him. We're so ashamed we can't even think of calling him. It sounds awful, but 
but I don't think our relationship can recover from this. And maybe this is what he needs. No friends, no family aside from his grandparents. Having to start over might just set him right. My parents are willing to keep him until he's 18, but think we're too emotionally charged to be making this decision now. What he did was vile, and he deserves a harsh punishment for what he did to his sister. However, I don't think the punishment issued fits the crime. You can't just throw your son away, and you can come back from this. It will take a lot of therapy for all of you, but it can happen. I honestly don't know how to judge this post, though. Everybody sucks here. I love that you have your daughter's back and apply serious consequences for your son. What I don't love is that you didn't mention how he reacted to the aftermath of what he has done and the consequences. I also think it is an overreaction to permanently disown your son and cut him from your life. He is still your son. Yes, terrible mistake, but still a minor and still your son. You should be working with him and not just be like this. So yes, let him live with his grandparents, but work on a way to rebuild your own, not your daughter's relationship with him. Call. Let him volunteer work. Something. You're the a-hole. You don't kick children out instead of parenting them. You're the a-hole. He's your son and he's a kid. Kids make mistakes. Adults make mistakes too. You've effectively disowned your kid instead of just teaching them a lesson. If you continue doing what you're doing, don't be surprised if your son keeps up no contact when he's older and wants nothing to do with you. Would I be the a-hole if I took my son and his friends out for his birthday instead of my wife and stepdaughters? I, M42, have three kids, a son, Isaac, 12, almost 13, with my ex, who's no longer in the picture, and twin stepdaughters from wife's previous relationship, Emma and Ava, seven. Isaac's 13th birthday is coming up next week, and he said that he wants to go to the movies and asked if he could bring two friends along. I agreed, and we planned out a day of fun, arcade, pizza, and a movie. They were all activities that I know my son and his friends, nerdy middle school boys, would enjoy. When I told my wife about our plans, she suggested that we should have a family outing instead and proposed a local kitty play place that my stepdaughters apparently love. I said that Isaac and his friends would be very disappointed and that he wouldn't have fun at a kitty play place. She tried to convince me that Isaac could still have fun because there was an arcade, two claw machines, a pinball table, and a small DDR machine. She also said that, since he sees his friends at school every day, family time should be prioritized over friends. I told her that it was unfair to force Isaac to spend his birthday at a kitty play place instead of with his friends. She accused me of favoritism and of not loving my stepdaughters as much as Isaac. This hit me pretty hard because I grew up with a stepfather who neglected me in favor of his own kids, and I've been trying my hardest to be the father figure I never had. I've been spiraling down a rabbit hole of doubt about my own choices, and for the sake of my own sanity, would I be the a-hole? Say, I would never ask the girls to spend their birthday doing something Isaac wanted to do, and you should show the same respect. Also, she's gaslighting the f out of you, and I'm betting it's not the first time. You would not be the a-hole. Ironically, if you did go along with your wife's idea, you would be showing favoritism to your stepdaughters over your son. Stand your ground. Your wife is emotionally manipulating you. Not the a-hole. Play place is not somewhere a 13-year-old lad wants to take his friends for his birthday. It's his birthday, not the daughter's. As much as I understand the wanting to do family things, you can do that on another day. Not the a-hole, but shouldn't you be concerned that your wife is neglecting your son in favor of her own kids? It seems like she's accusing you of doing what she is actually doing by trying to force Isaac into the kitty play place for his birthday. Is this a pattern for her? Not the a-hole? Your wife is showing favoritism to her daughters. This is Isaac's birthday celebration, not Emma and Ava's. And does she know about your issues with your step-parent? Because if she does, then she's a bigger a-hole for using it against you. Am I the a-hole for taking up two seats on a bus? I ride the bus because I can't afford a car, insurance, gas, etc. I'm 19F and I live in the US for context. A couple days ago, I was on a bus that wasn't that busy, not empty, but there were multiple unused seats and no one had to stand. I'd just gone shopping and had heavy bags that were hard to carry and hardly fit in front of my legs. So I sat in one seat and placed my bags on the seat next to me, essentially taking up two seats on my own since it wasn't crowded when I got on and didn't see an issue. And like I said, the bags were super heavy and hard to carry, so I wanted to set them down. The bus ride was kind of long, and as it went on, more and more people got on the bus. It eventually got pretty crowded to the point where some people had to stand up. I didn't ever move my bag or offer to seat to someone. In my experience, most people don't want to sit next to strangers anyway, and a lot of the time, people will end up standing instead of sitting in an empty seat next to someone they don't know. Also, no one said anything to me. At the last stop, ended at the bus station where pretty much everyone was getting off, someone passive-aggressively told me, you could have moved your bag and not been inconsiderate and rude. Everyone wants to sit, not just you. Or something along those lines. I didn't really respond because I didn't know what to say. The person who said that never asked me to move my stuff, and if they did, I probably would have. So I don't understand how I was being rude. They could have asked during the ride instead of insulting me after it was already done. Buses are also generally first come first serve, so I think my behavior was normal. Am I the a-hole? You're the a-hole. If there's no seat, move your freaking bag, lol. How can you ride it and think you aren't? You're the a-hole. You don't wait for someone to ask you to do the right thing. You're the a-hole. Once the bus was getting more crowded, to the point where people were standing, you should have moved your bags. You shouldn't need to be asked to do so, it's just a common courtesy. You're the a-hole. You saw the bus was full and didn't move your bags. That's exactly what rude a-holes do. Am I the a-hole for forcing my daughter to learn sign language? I-49F recently married my husband, 52M, who has a deaf seven-year-old daughter. She communicates solely via ASL. For some background, my daughter, 
17F is generally very non-problematic teenager. She does amazing in school and has never caused any problems other than regular teenage hormone stuff. However, she doesn't like my husband and stepdaughter. She's not outwardly rude, but basically ignores their existence. Skip stepdaughter's birthday party, doesn't engage in anything other than basic small talk with my husband. I did try to do family activities together to have the bond and all, but I stopped pushing it when it didn't happen, and as long as she's not being outwardly rude or harmful to them, I can't exactly punish her for not liking them. Now, since my relationship with my now husband started getting serious, I started taking ASL classes and am now basically as fluent as a hearing person can be. My daughter, however, never made an effort, which is okay since she technically has no responsibility towards her. However, recently my daughter has started watching stepdaughter paid when we aren't around, which changes things. In my opinion, since she is now spending time in which she is responsible for a young child, she needs to learn at least basic communication. When I brought it up to her, she outright refused to make any effort at all. I tried recommending YouTube videos, but she refused to try learning even a couple words. She's saying that she's not responsible for my choice to be in the life of a disabled child. This issue has also been causing a lot of problems in my marriage. My husband confided in me that he's starting to feel uncomfortable with his young daughter living in with someone who is so cold. She refuses to even make the most basic effort or engage with her at all. He is brought up that he is considering divorce due to his concerns about how stepdaughter will be affected by this. So given all that, I had to finally put my foot down. I told my daughter that we have a disabled person living in our household for the foreseeable future, and if she wants to live here for college, graduating next month, she has to at least learn basic ASL. She doesn't have to like her stepfather and stepsister, nor does she have to hang out with them, but she has to have the ability to communicate with her for the sake of safety and basic decency. I made it clear that if she chooses not to, she is welcome to live in a dorm that I will pay for. It's just that living in our house, that is also my stepdaughter's house, my husband and I paid for the house equally. It comes with basic rules. Well, my daughter hasn't spoken to me for seven days, so it's about time I ask. Am I the a-hole? Everybody sucks here except the youngling. Your daughter is the a-hole because she misplaces her frustration and emotional discomfort of your new marriage on her stepsister, the last person on earth who it should be put on. Maybe she even resents that you made her watch, paid or not. Your husband is the a-hole because he threatens you with divorce over this instead of talking and asking your daughter how she feels. Or consider a different babysitter, he pulls out the nuclear option to your relationship. You are the a-hole because you throw your daughter under the bus for marriage's sake and then threaten to kick her out instead of being a mother and trying to understand her and offer her a bailout, aka a different babysitter. Edit, disagreeing with my POV is fine, but you don't need to DM me insults. Info, when does she turn 18? He has brought up that he is considering divorce due to his concerns about how stepdaughter will be affected by this. I'm going to divorce you unless you kick out your 17-year-old daughter or make her learn sign language is an ugly ultimatum. Daughter no longer watches stepdaughter. Problem solved. I don't think trying to force this is going to end well. I think it's no big deal to learn a few basics in another language, but that's just me. Maybe he should have thought about this slash checked before marriage. Gonna go with you're the a-hole. This isn't her marriage, her stepdaughter, or her responsibility. Obvious, you're the a-hole. You get it right in the first part of this post when you point out that your daughter doesn't like not does she have any responsibility towards your husband and stepdaughter. It's only when your husband threatened you with consequences as you start f***ing up. Yeah, your daughter definitely shouldn't be babysitting her without knowing ASL, so find a different babysitter. You threatening to kick her out of her own home because you are actively choosing your stepdaughter over her is disgusting. You're the a-hole for having presumably years to see your daughter doesn't consider your new family to be her family. She's allowed to be indifferent to what are essentially some random roommates you've decided to move in. Not everyone has the skill or time to learn a second language, and you've decided that in her senior year when she's so busy with all that entails, she needs to learn an entirely new skill to satisfy these random roommates of yours. Otherwise, you're permanently kicking her out of her home and your life. Get a whiteboard for them to communicate with each other in emergencies, and then deal with the fact that you've done a terrible job blending these two families. Am I the a-hole for not giving my coworker my day off because I want to play a video game? Okay, so anyone in the video game world knows that next week the new Legend of Zelda game comes out after like five plus years of waiting. I'm a massive fan. When the release date was revealed, I immediately requested PTO for that date as I plan on staying home that day and enjoying the new game. What I didn't realize was that the day I asked off of is Friday before Mother's Day. My company has had to limit the request off for that date now as many people have been asking off for it. I had previously told some of my coworkers I was planning on staying home to play the game and I guess word got around because one of my coworkers asked me after work to give her my PTO so she can travel for Mother's Day. I explained to her that I requested this day off months ago for a specific reason and I wasn't really willing to change it. She got pretty upset with me, claiming I care more about video games than family and whatnot. I honestly don't really care about her not being able to travel because I feel like if this was an important date then you would have requested off early, like I did. Anyways, I firmly told her no, but she told some of my other coworkers and they are pissed at me and calling me an a-hole for not giving up the date. Am I the a-hole? Edited typos. Ugh, this one's gonna be ugly. I would have told her I care more about my family than video games, your family not so much. Her family is not your responsibility and she should have planned better. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Same goes for any other holiday. I'm child free by choice and people always seem to think that means I should be the one working holidays. It doesn't matter if the reason you have the day off is for a video
video game, it's your day off, enjoy it. Birthday week, Mother's Day week. People need to calm down, not the a-hole. Mother's Day has been on the calendar all year. Hell, they could have figured out when Mother's Day 2023 was last year. Enjoy the game, not the a-hole. You're allowed to care more about your own happiness than about her happiness. Oh, I guess it wasn't that ugly after all. Silly me. Am I the a-hole for not telling my girlfriend that my parents are gay? Hmm, hard to tell off the title. Let's get some details. I'm 25 male. I have two parents. My birth dad, John, who's 48, male, and my other dad, Dwayne, who's 45, male. I call my birth dad, John, dad, and I call my other dad, Dwayne, pops. My birth dad, John, was married to my mom for a few years. Then she left my dad, and yeah, they ended up divorcing, and now she's somewhere in California. IDK where or what she's doing. Haven't talked to her in ages. So dad and pops I'm super close with. They are the best parents any child could ask for. I love both of them and they've always been with me. My dad introduced me to pops when I was a little boy and they had told me they were in a relationship. And I was all for it because I had saw my dad become lonely slash sad when he was single. So seeing the fact that my dad loves someone and has a life partner made me super happy. Pops and dad got married and we've been living an amazing life. I'm probably more close to pops than my own dad. <laughs> Due to the fact that pops is really cool and he's laid back. I love both of them equally and they love me as well and I'm blessed to have them as parents. For a few months I've been dating this girl Bella who's my age. I thought she's pretty cute and I liked her. So we kicked it and recently she told me my parents want to meet your parents and want to come over for dinner. I said sure I'll tell my family. So yesterday Friday night Bella comes in pops greets her and says come on in sweetheart dinner is ready. She says you must be blank dad so good to meet you and she shakes his hand and she sees dad come out of the kitchen. He's holding the mac and cheese tray with the mittens and is putting it on the table. Then Bella says, who's he? I said, oh, that's my dad. She said, I thought he's your dad. She's referring to Pops. I say, yeah, that's my Pops and that's my dad. She pulls me to the side and says, I didn't know your parents are gay. Oh my God, why didn't you tell me? I genuinely didn't know why that'd be an issue or so because you're dating me, not my parents and all. So it shouldn't matter, but I guess it's a concern for her. Her parents come at the door after they parked the car and Bella tells her parents, let's leave. And they left. I told my parents I'm sorry and they said, son, don't worry, this is nothing new. <laughs> and then we all sat down and enjoyed dinner and went to sleep. So am I the a-hole for not telling? Oh yeah, this is a, a sticky situation. I don't think you're inherently the a-hole here because it, you're right. Like why would it matter if your parents are gay? Who cares? But I think you probably should have told her earlier on just to figure out if she has a problem with it, it would save some time for everyone. You're the a-hole. You put your parents in an uncomfortable position. You're an adult, so no naive slash innocent excuses stand. Screw her and her parents' reaction. Didn't you give a nanosecond thought of how to make this first meeting easy for your parents? Like telling her their names, etc. to enable conversations? I don't know. I, I kind of disagree that they are, they're not the a-hole here. Like, uh, who could have foreseen this? Sure, it's bad and poor planning, but it's not really intentional. Not the a-hole, but perhaps naive. Unfortunately, it's probably better to let a girlfriend know you have two dads so you can weed out the homophobes before you accidentally bring them home for dinner. I 100% agree with you here. It's definitely naive to not like mention that earlier on, but it's also weird to want to meet the parents but also have never talked about them. It's weird. Am I the a-hole for kicking my son's girlfriend out of our house? My husband, 58 male, and I, 56 female, recently met my son's, 25 male, girlfriend for the first time. He's been crazy about her. Apparently, they've been dating for a year before he decided to have her meet us officially. What he's told us about her all seems great. She just got her degree, was enjoying her job, family-oriented, etc. I'm honestly just glad he's happy with her. My husband and I don't think he's ever been this into someone before, so I feel pretty bad about what I did. Last weekend, he brought her over for dinner. By now, we'd been anticipating meeting her with how much our son has been gushing about her. How perfect she is, that she's the one, in his words. They ring the doorbell. We open the door. She looks exactly like her pictures, which is a great start. My son is grinning ear to ear. Another great start. We invite them in. She accepts my hug and a firm handshake from my husband, and then she opens her mouth. I'm the one your son puts his pants in. To be frank, I was appalled. I expected my husband to laugh. Both he and my son are jokesters 
and as annoying as it can be, I love it. But this was just too much for me. Maybe I'm reserved, but of all the things she could have shared about my son, she told us that? One look at my face and my husband knew how much I disapproved. Maybe I let my expectations get too high and it's unfair to have them, but I reiterate, of all things to say to her boyfriend's parents, whom she'd never met, she chose that? My son was amused at first, but when he noticed my reaction, his face dropped. I felt like he'd sold me the full package, everything he'd always been looking for in a girlfriend. I was too disturbed by the visual it put in my head, and it translated into anger. I told her to get out, and I wanted to say more about how gross it made me feel, but fortunately left it at that. My son didn't want to go, insisting I give her another chance, but I was too fed up and uncomfortable by this point. Even my husband, who's enjoyed his fair share of raunchy jokes, wouldn't let up. They left and I immediately felt guilty. This was something my son had really looked forward to and I feel like I took that away over a dumb joke. I tried calling to apologize, but he hasn't responded. My husband thinks she's the one who should apologize. I'm considering giving her another chance, but before I do, was I the a-hole? You see, that's where these situations get really difficult, because you seemingly understand that you went a little overboard, so I don't think you're really the a-hole, but in that moment, yes, you were. Why would anyone ever say that to their boyfriend's parents, LMAO? I mean, it's, it's still a funny joke, but definitely not the first thing to say to the parents. That's maybe like months down the line when you have some kind of relationship with them. Hilarious joke, but the timing was off. Not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife the lock on my daughter's door does not get removed till my brother-in-law and his daughters are out of our house? My brother-in-law, Sammy, lost his home shortly after his divorce 10 months ago. He moved in with us and brought his twin daughters, Olivia and Sloan, 18, with him a couple of months ago. His sister, my wife, and I have one daughter, Zoe, 16, and she and her cousins aren't close but get along fine. Olivia and Sloan have no respect for Zoe's privacy. None. They used to walk into her room and take everything they get their hands on. Makeup, phone accessories, clothes, school laptop, etc. Zoe complained a lot, and I've already asked the girls to respect Zoe's privacy and stop taking things. My wife and Sammy saw no issue with this. After all, they're girls, and this is typical teenage girl behavior. I completely disagreed. Last straw was when Zoe bought a $60 MAC makeup kit that looks like a paint set that she saved up for over a month, and one of the girls, Sloan, took it without permission and ruined it by mixing shades together while using it. Don't know much about makeup, but that's what Zoe said when she found the kit on her bed and was crying. I told my wife, and she said she'd ask Sloan to apologize, but I got Zoe a lock after I found she was moving valuable belongings out the house because of this incident. Sammy and his daughters saw the lock and weren't happy. The girls were extremely upset. Sammy asked about it, and I straight up told him. He said, My daughters aren't thieves. It's normal that girls of the same age borrow each other's stuff. He said Zoe could easily get another makeup kit for 15 bucks from Walmart and shouldn't even be buying expensive adult makeup in the first place, and suggested my wife take care of this defect in Zoe's personality, trying to appear older than she is. He accused me of being overprotective and babying Zoe with this level of enablement. I told him this is between me and my wife, but she shamed me for putting a lock on Zoe's door for her cousins to see, and preventing them from spending time with her, saying I was supposed to treat them like daughters, then demanded I remove it, but I said this lock does not get removed till her brother and his daughters are out of our house. She got mad I was implying we kick them out and said her family will hate me for this. So I reminded her that I let Sammy and his family move in, which is something her own family refused to do. So she should start with shaming slash blaming them for not taking their own son and nieces slash granddaughters in. If it wasn't for her family's unwillingness to help, we wouldn't be dealing with this much disturbance at home. Everyone's been giving me and Zoe silent treatment and my wife is very much upset over this. You know, right off the bat, it's feeling like you're not really the biggest a-hole here because your wife should be on your side to protect your child. WTF, dang, these people are entitled AF. I'd kick them all out for creating a hostile and uncomfortable situation in my own home. Not the a-hole, but you married into trash and now it's all over your house. Well, they do kind of have a point there if the wife is that willing to defend their brother's bad actions. Am I the a-hole for suing? 
suing my girlfriend after she had my 1967 Impala project taken to the scrapyard? I'll try to keep this short. I had a 1967 Impala four-door that I bought in February 2019. A couple months ago, I bought my first house that had a 2.5 car garage. I moved the car in and started tearing it down for a complete restoration. I had the body in one bay and the chassis in another, plus the whole garage filled with parts. About two months ago, my girlfriend came to live with me during this whole crisis, and the whole time has hated that car. She wanted to park in the garage, but I have two acres of land with a lot of nice places to park under shady trees, or hell, even in the barn if it has to be inside. I tell her, tough luck. It's my house, and it's not like I can just throw it back together real quick. Anyways, I was out of town for a couple of days on a business trip for the small local company I work for. When I got back, my girlfriend was all smiles, making me food all the time, doing all the chores, all that. I thought maybe she was just happy to have me home, but then I realized that I didn't see her car in its usual spot. I asked her where she parked so I could make sure I mow that area and keep it clean, and she said not to worry because she parked in the garage. I asked her how, and she told me to go check it out. Turns out that while I was gone, she hired some people to come over and move everything related to that car, including the drivetrain, body, and chassis, and all parts, and take it to the local dump slash scrapyard. I was absolutely dumbfounded. I had spent over 11000 on that car, including new parts, services, and the car itself. I told her that I was going to be taking her to court for that, and she brushed me off like I was being dramatic. I told her that it's done between us, and to pack her things and leave. I admit, I was really angry, but I did end up getting a lawyer, and as I have all the receipts for all that money spent, and I have her on my house's security cam footage letting the guys in and watching them take it all, I think I can win. Her family and friends are absolutely blowing me up, saying it's just a stupid old piece of junk that she cannot pay back all that money I spent, and that I should just let it go. But I've been putting all my time, effort, and money into that car for a year and a half now, and god damn it if I am not going to get justice for what she did. Am I the a-hole? I don't really think you're the a-hole, honestly. I, 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 I think it's very understandable to be quite angry if somebody threw away something that you put so much time and effort into. Yeah, you're not that bad. I would file a police report and see if there's any way that you could get her prosecuted. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. My husband would literally murder me if I did that. Seriously. Like, with a wrench. That's a little concerning. You should be careful. Am I the a-hole for bringing my sister-in-law's wallet to the restaurant when she conveniently always forgets it? My, female 28, sister-in-law, Amy, female 26, always comes to visit from out of town. She stays with us instead of a hotel and always wants to go to expensive restaurants. She always conveniently forgets her wallet or domes up with some excuses as to why she can't pay her share. She has implied that since I make much more money than her, I should be the one to pay. No, not my husband should pay, but me specifically. I do make a fair amount of money, but not so much that I can treat someone every time they come into town. Nonetheless, in the past, I have just paid the bill and asked her to pay me back. She never has. She had made a reservation at an extremely expensive restaurant last night, and before we left, I made it clear that I wouldn't be paying her bill. This is where I might be the a-hole, and I'll admit I got this move straight from an episode of Two and a Half Men. As we were leaving, her and my husband went to the car. I pretended I forgot something and went back inside. I found her wallet sitting right on top of her suitcase. I put it in my purse and we went to the restaurant. When we were done eating, I asked for separate bills. She said no, we need one bill, because she forgot her wallet again. I reached in my purse and said, this wallet? She was extremely furious. She said that I should not have touched or grabbed her wallet. So, am I the a-hole for taking her wallet and bringing it to the restaurant? No! Absolutely not, you are not the a-hole. Well, like, she's purposefully scheming, especially to have purposefully left her wallet at home? Like, what? NTA, but you totally should have flipped the switch. Left your wallet at home. Only brought your license, so she had to cover the whole bill, then never taken her out to a restaurant again. As much as I like this strategy, it wouldn't work, because the sister-in-law never brings their wallet anyways, so you'd just end up dining and dashing. She made the reservation and in invited you. Etiquette says that she would be responsible for 100% of that bill, not the a-hole. Am I the a-hole for bringing up my brother's premature birth at Christmas dinner to get my parents to shut up? I am a nurse practitioner and I am the primary care provider for a lot of the low-risk maternity cases at the practice where I work. I also work hand-in-hand -hand with the doctors and midwives to 
create a healthy maternity, birth, and postpartum situation. My fiance is completing her residency. We live together and have for a few years now. We aren't in any hurry to get married. We originally had plans to do so a couple years ago, but then we got really busy for two years. It is driving my very religious parents crazy that their youngest son is living in sin. I don't really care. I'm an adult, and I do what I want. We are getting married in June. So we are visiting my parents for Christmas. The way it came together this year, everyone is at my parents' house. So that's my folks, my three siblings, myself and fiancé, and seven grandchildren. So 17 people. At dinner, my mom starts going on about how she is so glad that we are finally getting married and she won't be embarrassed at church anymore. And my dad says how proud he is of his three older kids who all either waited to get married before moving in together or got married right away after moving in together. My fiancé was getting embarrassed and I was getting mad over this stupid argument we've had too many times. And a family dinner was the last straw. I have asked them repeatedly to just accept that they cannot control how I live my life. I refuse to stay with them when I visit, even if I come alone. Hotels are just easier. So I started talking about a premature baby I had been reading about. It was almost three months premature and weighed about 1.6 pounds. It was super strong and healthy for being born so little, and the NICU had high hopes for the baby doing well. My mom and dad both got deer in the headlights looks on their faces. Too bad. Should not have f***ed around with my fiance's feelings. So I asked about my oldest brother. He was born almost four months premature. Is there a chance that we could check out the family album where we keep all the records of family births and stuff? I already know my brother was over nine pounds and almost 23 inches long when he was born. My grandmother told me all about it the first time my parents tried to shame me. The subject changed very fast. After supper, my parents told me that I should not try to embarrass them with private things that are not my concern. I told them that if I heard anything about my living arrangements ever again for the rest of my life, I would make sure to keep bringing up the fact that my mom was in her second trimester when they got married. My parents are mad at me for telling them how to behave in their own home, but my fiance is happy that they seem to be off the subject for good. Am I the a-hole? To me, it sounds like there's some heavy hypocrisy going on, so yeah, you're not the a-hole. You told them what you needed to tell them, and they got upset about it. Grandma is the best. Hopefully OP got her a wonderful Christmas gift. Not the a-hole. They deserve that for their hypocristianity. Not the a-hole. They played stupid games and won stupid prizes. Am I the a-hole for punishing my son after he said something racist? About a week ago, my 39 female family ordered Chinese food for delivery. When the delivery driver came to the door, my daughter, 16 female, was taking the cat upstairs to put in her room because he always tries to eat the food. My son son, 13 male, loudly says, make sure to hide the cat from the Chinese guy, as I am at the door getting the food from the Chinese delivery driver. He very obviously heard what my son said and was upset by it. I quickly apologized and took the food. I told my son that racist jokes were completely unacceptable and very wrong, and he refused to admit that he was in the wrong. So, later that night, I forced my son to write a sincere apology to the delivery driver. His name was on the receipt, as well as write and one-page paper on Chinese culture, and a one-page paper on why racism is perpetuated by racist jokes and stereotypes. Then, the next day, I took him to the restaurant and had him read his apology aloud to the delivery driver as well as give him the papers he wrote. The driver was very appreciative of the apology and thanked me for making my son do it. He then told my son about multiple instances where he had faced racist comments and attacks from people while he was a delivery driver. That night, my husband, 43, male, and I got into an argument about making our son do this. He told me that it was embarrassing for our son to have to do the apology and that the punishment didn't fit the crime. I told him that it was much more embarrassing for the driver to have to face that kind of racism and racist stereotypes and that our son would get over the embarrassment. I do not condone any kind of hateful thinking in my house, and the fact that my son said that embarrassed me as well. My husband told me that it was just a joke, and it wasn't that big of a deal. I feel like I might have over reacted some, but I think it's important to help my son understand how what he had said was wrong and hurtful. Uh, no, I don't think you're the asshole. I think it might have been a little much to make your child write like the one-page essays or whatever, but it's still effective. They hopefully learned their lesson. And yeah, it's you're not an asshole for combating racism. Not the a-hole. Sounds like your husband could use the lesson too. Yeah, kind of getting some red flags from how your husband reacted to the situation. Am I the a-hole for dropping our dinner on the ground and walking out when my boy
boyfriend asked me, What's for dinner tonight? I was over my boyfriend's apartment this weekend and I was cooking dinner because he was studying for exams. I made pasta and a chunky sauce with meatballs and veggies. I told him dinner was ready and he goes, What's for dinner? With like a lot of emphasis on the last word. I was fed up. I'd had a pretty rough day with work and I have some awfully bad associations with that word being used by other people in my life who were pretty abusive. So I was so irritated that I dropped the pot of pasta sauce I'd been carrying right on the ground and was like, well, nothing's for dinner tonight now, and I'd better not hear you using that word again. It's for the girls. He was freaking out about how sauce had landed on his rug, and he even said, You're seriously acting like a b right now. I don't know what else to call it. I just walked out and got takeout for myself and went to my friend's house. She thought it was funny, but my boyfriend was furious. He kept texting and calling and sending me voice memos trying to explain that saying, What's for dinner tonight, b was a TikTok trend, and that he was just quoting something as a joke to put on TikTok. I thought that was the crappiest excuse ever. It doesn't matter if he saw it as a joke or stole the joke, it was still disrespectful. But it didn't change the fact he thought that was funny, to demean me when I was trying to do him a favor. Like hell, I came over when he was studying to make a home-cooked dinner, and he decides it's time for jokes? So I put my phone on Do Not Disturb for the night and split a bottle of wine with my friend and her roommate. The next morning, he was sending me angry text demanding I clean his rug because he was too busy with exams to do it. I was shocked he left it overnight. That's disgusting. I texted him back saying, Yeah, so that's the b tax, honey. Leave me alone till you're ready to handle your own cooking and cleaning because this b isn't anymore. Also, it's vile you left that soaking in all night. He called me and told me that he was okay with doing his own household work, but I did throw a full pot of sauce at the ground, so that's on me to clean up. I told him yeah, no, I'm not comfortable doing chores for you if you see me like you're b He told me he didn't and it was a trend and I got pissed off he was playing that TikTok trend BS excuse again and I told him, well, I'm starting a trend called saucing where as a little joke, people throw pasta sauce around. You can't be mad because it's just a little trend, a little jokey joke, just a little prank, bro. He got really pissed off and hung up on me and now I'm seriously wondering if this dumb effing TikTok joke is going to be the end of things between us. Am I the a-hole for how I reacted when my boyfriend asked me, what's for dinner tonight, B? This, this is another tricky one, I think. It's You're very valid in not wanting to be called that word because of your past traumas. I think some of your reaction closer to the end after this happened is a little ridiculous, but considering he's refusing to take accountability, uh, yeah, you're not the biggest a-hole. Not the a-hole. That sauce on the rug? It's Marinara, GTFO of this relationship. Mate, this dude is 30? I thought he was 19. Dump this a-hole now. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. Dump that man like a pot of sauce. Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my sister's husband's surgery with my inheritance slash college money? Context. My sister, female, 27, and I, 18, female, lost our dad a year ago. He was my only parent. Mom was never in mine or my sister's life. Dad left her money inheritance for me and sister and she used her inheritance to get new cars and renovate her house. I live with my aunt right now because my brother-in-law didn't let me stay with my sister. I planned on using my inheritance money to pay for college tuition. I've always wanted to be a doctor but haven't decided which branch yet. My sister and I haven't been close. It started after she got married to her chronically ill husband who was allowed to make backhanded compliments about dad and mock his illness and make a scene at his funeral. Only because he's ill and shouldn't be held accountable for his behavior. I've distanced myself, but my sister kept visiting a lot lately, venting about my brother-in-law's condition. He's been in and out of the hospital for heart problems and in need for a surgery. She brought up my inheritance money several times, but I end up cutting the conversation. She then straight up asked if I could help pay for her husband's surgery and she'd pay back in less than a year. I felt uneasy, because if I give her money from my inheritance, which is a large amount, then there's no guarantee she'll pay back before it's time to apply for college. I'm taking a year gap, but I know my sister can't pay
way back that much, and I felt I was risking my future. I refused to help, and she had a meltdown at my aunt's house, calling me heartless, cruel, with no empathy. She said that her husband's health should be a priority, and I needed to help because education is nothing compared to someone's health, and asked if I'd be happy to see her as a widow and my nephew with no father. My aunt suggested others pay, but most of them cut my sister and her husband off. I argued that her husband's poor health isn't my fault after she kept blaming and guilt tripping me. She kept crying, and although my aunt decided to stay out of it, she said that I should be prepared for permanent damage in my relationship with my sister if I don't help her now. She's been sending texts and pictures of her family, telling me this is what I was saying no to. A happy, healthy family with a healthy husband and father. I cried and felt like I was being selfish, not good aunt and sister. I asked my friend and he said let them sell the cars and all the luxurious stuff they bought to afford the surgery and warned me if I give them money, I'll never get it back and may not be able to go to medical school. Hands down, you are not the a-hole here. Like, there might be some minor family obligation, but not to this extent, especially after the husband made it so you couldn't move in with them. What do you owe them? It's not like they've done anything for you recently. Not the a-hole. Education is nothing compared to someone's health. She just admitted that she has no intention to pay you back. Not the a-hole. He wouldn't even let you stay in the house with them, but expects you to put your whole future on hold for his surgery? Dang. Yeah, in a relationship, it's supposed to be a give and take. In this case, it just sounds like they just want to take, and then you're ruined forever. Am I the a-hole? I didn't attend my son's wedding. I instead spent the evening with his ex-wife. Quick backstory. After graduating high school, my son moved three states away for college. At 19, he married a girl he met. I tried convincing him to wait because I personally felt he was too immature. They dropped out and moved back here to his hometown. At 20, they had their first child, a beautiful little girl. 16 months later, my dad-in-law gave birth to their second child, a little boy. After the first baby, my wife and I noticed our dad-in-law wasn't happy. We both thought it was PPD related. Just after the second arrived, my son and his wife separated. She would bring the kids over for a visit. It was then she began unloading on us. I know there's two sides to every story, but considering I know my son, I believed her. I sat my son down numerous times to speak with him regarding his marriage. He refused to take responsibility, blamed her for everything, even when I directly pointed out where he was the sole problem. They got into counseling. For a year, things were okay on the surface. Our dad-in-law filed for divorce. My son, three days later, was on Facebook announcing his new girlfriend. A month later, they were engaged. My son had forced his then-wife to become a permanent stay-at-home mom at the birth of their first child. She, of course, had no other family or friends here. She knew no one aside from us. She had nowhere to go with two small children. Unbeknownst to our son, my wife and I helped her financially and got her an apartment. Before the divorce was even finalized, we received a wedding invitation. I made it clear to my son I would not be attending and they would not have my blessing. His mother told him she would see to it that I would attend. I stayed consistent in my decision. I also asked him not to bring his fiance around our house out of respect for the mother of his children. The wedding happened on February 11th. The night before, my wife gave me the final push. I did not attend. Our daughter also did not attend for the same reasons. My wife picked up our grandkids, got them dressed, and attended the wedding. My daughter and I decided to spend the evening with his ex. I couldn't imagine her sitting alone while her kids attended their father's wedding. She was taken aback that I didn't end up attending his wedding. We took her out to distract her mind. I just wanted her to know she'll always be considered family to us. My daughter also made a joke they can drop the in-law status and just be sisters now. She was very tearfully grateful. I realized just how badly she needed our support and specifically on that night. The next morning, my son called to tell me how much of a horrible father I am for not attending his wedding. A few days later, he caught wind that I spent the wedding evening with his ex. He said that was the ultimate form of betrayal and further myself and his sister would have to earn a relationship with him on his terms only. I don't know, weddings are a weird spot. I'm gonna say not the a-hole because your son just seems like a tool. Not the a-hole. This is funny. You have to earn a relationship on his terms? I think he needs to check his offering. He's way overvaluing what he brings to the table. <laughs> Not the a-hole. It sounds like you're a reasonable parent who acknowledges when your kid is being an idiot. I don't see anything wrong with you choosing to support the mother of your grandchildren who he seems to have left in a bad spot. Honestly, mad respect to this dad. Like, just insane work.